Oh, that's one of the ones we need. Come here, girl. Please come here. I need you bad. Oh, come here. Oh, my gosh. Yes. God, what a small mouth. Dude, I'm talking about an absolute freaking stud. Look at that thing. You got a small mouth like that. That's it. Biggest one all week. Six, two, six. Freaking giant. Boom. Oh, giant. Oh, that big a tweet in the blow. <laughs> the hook bassmaster elite at st lawrence river presented by black velvet being brought to you live by bully dog best smallmouth tournament of all time you can make a case for that you can make a strong strong case for that and we have come down to the final day, final event of the regular season for the Bassmaster Elite Series 2018. That's where we are, up there on the St. Lawrence River, upstate New York, 100 miles of it, open for fishing, and fishing has been wide open all week. The smallmouth catching has been, in a word, phenomenal. The Hook Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence, presented by Black Velvet. This is Bassmaster Live, and this is six hours of the final day if the first three days are any indication, we are just going to go to town yet one more day. I can't wait. No one can wait. It's been the talk of the fishing world all week long since practice began. This is a phenomenal time to be here. The, the river could not be any better than it has been this week. Davey, what do you think? Is it the greatest smallmouth tournament of all time? It's historic. It really is. This is the, the great, in my opinion, the greatest smallmouth tournament of all time. I mean, it's, it's incredible. The whole practice, the first three days, and then how, how better could you start a Sunday morning championship Sunday with Brandon Lesser catching a six pound smallmouth right out of the gate? In the driving rain, first incredible. at bat and he hits a, hits a grand slam. I think we may be in for some good, good times today, Davey. I, I tell you what, looking at the, the standings, it, it looked like that Brandon Lesser was going to have a tough time. Being two and a half pounds back, on the final day, because you know these guys are going to catch David Walker, Josh Bertrand, Justin Lucas. They're going to have 20, 21 or 22 oh. pounds. You can count on it. But when he caught that six-pounder, he's right in the thick of things. That's the size that he needed to make up that deficit. Uh, Brandon, just one of the great stories we have working here. We've got guys that have progressed through the tournament. Brandon took over on second day, fell down some. David Walker's never been lower than second place. It's uh, just, within the, just within this tournament, we've got great stories. And we have all the other implications that are going on as well. Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year qualification oh, for yeah. that tournament. The winner of Angler of the Year. We, we've got classic qualification on the line. We've got guys with the next year year on the line. It's uh, I don't know if we got time in six yeah. hours to get to all that stuff because we're going to concentrate on the fish catching today. You brought up, brought up a great point, the AOI. How, how much better could it get than Justin Lucas and Josh Bertrand being one and two and being right there in the, in the top three in, in this event? It's incredible. This uh, is a great day. We're mighty lucky to be here today. We're lucky that you could join us. I think you're pretty lucky to be here. I think we're going we're gonna to make you feel good with all the smallmouth catching we're going to have. We're going to make you feel good by reassuring everyone that Ronnie and Such are also in the house today. And Ronnie, better feel I, good. I, yeah. We're going to have a debate on this a little bit later, whether it really is the greatest smallmouth tournament of all time, aren't we? I think you put it best. There are arguments for it, arguments against it, but for a full field Elite Series event, you got to asterisk it because of how good Mille Lacs was in the past with only 50 guys. With the full field, though, and the conditions the way they've set up, I think that this is definitely a top two or three. And... and hey, we'll have plenty of years to make it the first if they want it to be. Yeah, and for today, we got some great fish catching to look forward to as well. That's, that's, that's one of the sidebars we're working on. What are you working on, Sue? 107 bags over 20 pounds. We have 10 guys with the capability of having 20, more than 20 pounds on all four days of the event. David Walker's now, now leading. He topped uh, $1 million in bass earnings and on Kentucky Lake. He's trying to go for another hundred grand chunk right, right today.
All right. Well, let's take a look at our Rapala 5 Live. Welcome to the Toyota Bassmaster Studios, by the way. I'm Tommy Sanders, and this, of course, is Davey Height. We got that out of the way, and now we're ready to look at the stars of the show right now. Our show today, Bassmaster Live. The cameras will be on these five as we go through Rick Morris. Now, here's a guy who's been with the Bassmasters for a long time. He's taken a leave from the Elite Series, requalified, and he's back, Davey. He's back in a big way. He, he told me last night, I'm just excited to be able to make the top 12. It's been a long time, and we're excited to be able to see Rick Morris today on the Rapala five lot. Brandon Lester, of course, a great day. Uh, uh, day number two, you can see 25 pounds and 13 ounces. Took over the lead, then fell off just a little bit, but uh, we have updated his story, I think, sufficiently for what's happened today with him. We have. Catching that six-pounder this morning certainly puts him in the driver's seat to win his first elite tournament. He's looking for his first elite tournament. That is right. And looking for his third elite win. Here's Justin Lucas. He's one of these guys who has steadily risen through uh, the ranks through the three days of fishing. Game. He has, and he's he's been steady like these other fishermen throughout the week. He laid off of his fish yesterday. We saw him in about an hour's time catch five fish, about five pound class. He's got a little bit of a lead in Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year, Angler of the Year over this guy. They are one and two in the points race. Josh Bertrand of Arizona, totally steady throughout the season and he's been steadily catching them here. Great days each of the three days for Josh Bertrand. Ronnie Moore brought to our attention. He's been consistent here every time he's been to St. Lawrence River. And here's our leader. He's never been lower than second place through the three days of fishing. David Walker looking for his second Bassmaster Elite Series win. It's been 2011. Wheeler Lake on the Tennessee River. The last time he won, and he would like nothing better than to put number two in the box this he time. He would. I'm looking forward to hearing him laugh again today. It's been a, a joy watching him on, on Bass Live, and he just laughs every time he hooks one of these big smallmouth. It's, it's fun to watch. I've, I've said a hundred times I love these tournaments where it's very hard to catch a fish, but there's a different vibe at this one. There's a joy vibe going on right here, and we are certainly and enjoy all these guys out here have had these moments of pure elation because it's just such good smallmouth fishing. And as they get ready to go on the final day, we had a moment to sit down with tournament leader David Walker. There's no safe. There's no safe because, I mean, you've seen what the weights have been. 20s, 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 like this, this, it's all 20s. And uh, the first day, you know, Matt Lee caught that 28 pounds, and I, I had 20, 26 and a half. So, I mean, it, anything, that, you know, there is a 30-pound bag of smallmouth swimming around out there. Whether or not somebody will catch them today, I don't know, but, you know, realistically, mid-20s is very doable. That's kind of what I'm thinking. 25 is the number in my mind. I feel like if I catch 25, I've got a legitimate chance because they've got to catch at least 23, you know, so we'll see how it goes. We're going to go out and basically do what we've been doing over the last three days. We're going to we're going to hit a lot of spots and hope to time it right. Timing is the most important thing right now. You've got to you know pull up on a shoal when that fish is set up in position to bite, and um, you know we're going to hit a lot of spots in order to do that. You know. If, if we get bit on a place, we'll make another drift, but we're not going to stick around super long because uh, we're going for the active ones. That's what we're, we're after. I, I'm excited as today as I was the first day to go back out there again. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more on the line than it was the first day, but, you know, that's how it, that's how it goes when it comes to tournament fishing. The highs and lows really seem to be exaggerated by it being a tournament. So today... I know I'm going to catch some fish, but I also know everybody else is going to catch some fish. So hopefully those bigger ones are, are uh, on the end of my line and not everybody else's. But uh, we're, we're going to catch a bunch of fish, and I think that's what makes this a good, really a good event. Well, those are going to be some of the stars of the movie today for sure. Uh, members of our Rapala 5 Live, let's take a look at how things uh, sorted out after yesterday's weigh-in there. As we got it down to 12 anglers, started with 107 fish for two days and got it down to 12. Uh, it's three days, I should say. Excuse me. David Walker holding his lead on top, barely a lead over Josh Bertrand. So steady. Justin Lucas, again, he's the one who's been rising up the leaderboard. Brandon Lester, we saw him sort of, sort of looking around at different things yesterday, maybe seeming a little bit at loose ends, maybe just sort of, you know, inquisitive about what he might be able to turn up, but... Uh, what he turned up was uh, what got him here in the first place today. Tommy, last year when we were here, Kevin Van Dam, day two, he had to scramble a little bit and had his, you know, less weight on that day than any other day. I think in a four-day event so often, there's a day that you just got to survive. You just got to catch enough to stay in the hunt. I think Brandon Lester did a good job at that yesterday, just staying there where his primary air was not active, and he left there and had some other things going on, and he's right there. 
I, I really like uh, latching onto what David Walker said. There's a 30 pound bag out there yeah. somewhere and I, I have no reason to believe it couldn't be done today. And Justin Lucas, we heard him several times yesterday, I want to catch a seven pounder. There's a seven pounder where I'm fishing. When I talked to him last night, he's still talking about, I think there's a seven pounder around where I'm fishing to be caught. Our play and field today is one of the most extraordinary fisheries on the face of the earth. We're talking about the St. Lawrence River, which drains all the water from the Great Lakes. 20% of the fresh water in the world passes through here on a yearly basis and uh, on the way out to the Atlantic Ocean. We're, it's about 700 miles worth, but we're only dealing with 100 miles worth from basically Messina, New York, down to Cape Vincent and the uh, mouth of Lake Ontario. And uh, this is the way our anglers are laying out. You can see how, uh, how well distributed they are across the lake. This is not a... Not a place with three or four key spots. This is a this is a huge, just overpowering fishery, David. That's a great point, Tommy. There's a lot of great fisheries that we go to that anglers seem to bottleneck into certain areas. I can name a dozen places like that, but this is not one of them. This hundred mile stretch that these anglers are allowed to fish, you can uh, catch fish throughout that whole hundred miles. And we see anglers. I heard yesterday at weigh-in some anglers talking about running all the way down to the mouth of Lake Ontario. That that western southwestern border, so to speak. And then we saw Brandon Lester, along with a few others, fishing northeast of Waddington, New York, towards the other border. So it's a great fishery throughout. And it's the last event of the regular season for the Bassmaster Elite Series. And of course, at the end of the season, everyone turns their thoughts to one of the two, one of the two top awards in the sport, and that's Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. And uh, you better believe we've got the leader in that race fishing out there today, second place as well. But let's go out to our leader in points. For now, it's not official till the tournament's over. And that is Justin Lucas. We're live. Morning's about the same as yesterday. Actually, probably a little better because we got a, about a four something and a three and a half. Um, and we're getting several bites. We've had a lot of, lot of little fish today, but that's all right. I'm feeling good about it, man. I, I think we're gonna run up here in a little bit, try and hit that spot we hit yesterday afternoon where I lost a couple nice ones, caught a good one. I think we're gonna try and hit that earlier too. That way we can hit it again later in the day and uh, have an opportunity, a couple waves of fish that might move up there. So I'm liking the way things are going so far. I, I didn't expect it to be lights out by now, and it certainly wasn't lights out yesterday at 8, 12 in the morning either. And the whole day just might be a little different. You know, they might set up and feed at a, at a different time today just with the weather being drastically different than yesterday. And just keep hopping around and hope we stumble on the right spot that they're set up and feeding like they were yesterday. I mean, that was, that was ideal fish all over the graph, getting fit every drop it seemed like, and they were big ones. Justin Lucas put on quite a show yesterday. He had a run that uh, uh, we'll, we'll never forget. It was five drifts and five giant smallmouth that put him where he is today, and he's not been without fish this morning. We're going to show you what he's been uh, working on earlier before today. They've been fishing out there for a little while. I'll put some nice fish here. Not the five pound class that he'll be looking for, but great start. That is a good fish there. Solid. He's fat. Going with black this morning because of the dark skies, but not bad. Most of these anglers are fishing a drop shot. Mixing up a little bit with a few other baits, but Justin Lucas, I don't think we've seen yeah. him fish anything but the drop shot with the know. Berkeley yeah. flat minnow. Something sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. That's a fatty. Bam! So maybe a little bit ahead of schedule for yesterday. He was having trouble. He said they weren't, weren't biting it just right to start the day yesterday. Blind in one eye. So that's two keepers in the boat for Justin Lucas. He's uh, listed okay, on Bass Track as having here. seven pounds yeah. even, so. Two and a half. Plenty of room to move up, and here's our leader to start the day. Maybe something good. David Walker. 
That's maybe something great. There's a fish right there. 32. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at a fish right now on my screen. Um, so, so far this morning, it's, I, I feel like I got one fish in there that's a, it's, it's really what I want to catch. And maybe the second one is it. So I really feel like I got two in there that are the, the fish I want to weigh in. Um, I've caught a lot of little ones today, like like little one pounders. Let's see what that is. That ain't a one pounder. Coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. Oh, he come off. God, that ain't good. These fish are so crazy. That fish is one I've seen on the screen right there, about 32. He looked like three pound size fish, which would have been nice to have, but not gonna win you anything. But let's, uh, let's make another drift right here real quick. That tip end right there is just real short. It takes you literally two minutes to drift it. I think you'll see most of these anglers make shorter drifts today. That's today's money day, and they're not going to waste time looking away from these key little spots, the tips of points and breaks and that sort of thing. Well, David talked about what he's caught so far, and we know that he has four fish in the live well. This is earlier today with David Walker, fishy. That one's bigger. Put sure. it himself. They're not going to win you anything, but it's nice to get started. Yes. Oh, it's oh, some that. jumpers. That's a nice one. <laughs> yeah! That's the one that he said in the yeah. live well that he felt like he could. That's bigger than four pounder. Way in. Yeah! Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! How about that? Give me some. Give me some. Look at this. See, it's not that big. Just fighting that hard. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Barely hooked. Yeah. He's okay. Have we gotten small, Tommy? He's uh, yeah. okay. Oh, wow. uh, I think we're, we may be ruined forever. We may be irreversible. <laughs> First look ever on Bassmaster Live at Rick Morris. Rick, huh? back this year for I few years away. <laughs> it's from the distance, it's cool, but... Super steady, 22-4, 22-4, 23-3. Move into the top five. All the fish catches that we've seen, we've, some of the guys are catching 30, 40, maybe even as many as 50 fish, but solid. A lot of the fishermen catch sure. 30 fish a day. And Rick Morris had a good catch yesterday, 22 pounds. 20, yeah, 23-7. Oh, excuse, excuse me, 23-3. Said he had five bites, landed those five <laughs> fish. Now he's fishing for the right ones, obviously, so. It's not four, but it's good. Is there anything in that back? Uh, bring her up. Oh, don't do that. Uh. So. Fish number one looks like it's about Eh, three and a quarter. This is the small side with no water. All 12 are on the board now. Rick not uh, showing up yet, as yet, on Bass Track, but he's got that one in the, in the boat. And 
interesting to know what you said, David, what you found out. Five fish all day yesterday. That's he's ahead of schedule having one he's, this morning. He's this a early. fifth of the way home. So <laughs> that's right. That's one way to look at it. I think he'd like to be farther along at this point. But so would everyone out here, the top 12 on this final day. We got a little taste of this to start the day. It was the, by far the hottest start of the morning and belonged to this man, Brandon Lester. There we go. Oh. Oh. Mm, that's one of the ones we need. Come here, girl. Please come here. I need you bad. Oh, come here. Oh, my gosh. Yes. God, what a small mouth. Dude, I'm talking about an absolute freaking stud. Look at that thing. God. Dude, I, I got to know what that thing weighs. You got a small mouth like that. That's it. Biggest one all week. Six to six. Freaking giant. Boom. I'm getting chills sitting here, Tommy. That's the way to start Championship Sunday, man. man. Oh, man. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Timely as that. Yes. Another one. I think it's safe. I mean, a beast. Just for kicks and giggles, let's see what that weighs. Not a big one, but he's live well worthy for now. Whole lot of brown in there for just three little old fish. Morning, why you bite that in? Well, first bite was a little bitty one, second bite was a six and a quarter. Um, got another 555 in there. Right now, I'm wrestling in a big old giant walleye. I'm going to tell you right now, if there wasn't a hundred grand on the line, he'd probably be in a skillet somewhere tonight. Put him in that black bag. Right there. <laughs> nice one. No, it's. I mean, it's a good start, you know. But we got to keep it going. I got one two pounder in the box. I just put him in there because it's bad juju to throw too many keepers back. I don't want that little voice creeping around in my head saying, "You big dummy, you just threw a two pounder back." What was your target weight to, you know, give you a legitimate shot in your mind this morning? 25. Felt like if I could get to to 25, it would give me a chance. Anyway, I'm two and a half pounds back. Um, so 25 is the, the number that keeps rolling around in my head. And with a six and a quarter and a five and a half, it's definitely doable. Just, uh, we got two of the right bites. We got to get three more of the right bites. We got plenty of time left to do it. That's the start he needed. I mean, it's tough to catch 25 pounds. I mean, we sort of taken for granted these big small mouth this week, but a 25 pound stringer is tough to do unless you've got a six and a five. Now he can catch four and a halves and, and be there, but he is definitely on well on his way and he's got the start that, that he needed to, to be able to get that. And I agree with him. I, if I was him, I would say to have a legitimate chance, 25, potentially 24, but, but I think he certainly have a great shot to win today if he catches 25 pounds. And the two hardest fish to catch are those fives and sixes, and he's already got those in the box. He's got that out of the way, so I know he needs to just catch good ones and catch them at a regular rate, and the, 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 the math might just add up for Brandon Lester, angler from Tennessee looking for his first Bassmaster Elite Series victory.
that number right there, three. Only three fish in the live well so far. Our leader, David Walker, four fish in the live well. Josh Bertrand, Justin Lucas, they've each only got two. So Look at this. A raffle of five live or, or got some headroom, right, as they say right now. They got some room for improvement. They do, they do. A rapid but, improvement. But I think, I think we'll see. These guys have been solid. We've seen what they're doing and, and mixing it up in different areas. We saw Brandon Lester yesterday totally start fishing man-made structures and, and catching fish. I, I think they've all got a plan B and maybe even a plan C. Uh, but gosh, that, that six and a quarter and that five and a half of Brandon Lester is certainly, certainly what he needed this morning. Good limit in the boat already for Keith Combs, moving all the way up into second place. and One of the few doing something other than drop shotting that, that we know of. Today he may be drop shotting. We'll just have to check in with him. We'll try to get some bonus coverage of Keith for you later on today. I, I bet he's still throwing that jerk bait. He's, mm -hmm. he's a power fisherman. He'd rather be winding or jerking, doing something like that. He, and we saw him yesterday. Uh, and the first day he had that, that, that great string of the uh, day two was his his toughest day, but he caught him good yesterday. I bet he's doing the same thing today. Did you see the scribble marks of his drifts? Yes. When when uh, I believe it's Eric Kafka's with Brent Lester zoomed in on that. One thing that's, that's really incredible to me, the way the current changes with this wind, and, and I get that as you get closer to the lake, if that wind's blowing Lake Ontario mm -hmm. into the St. Lawrence, it's gonna pick up water and speed, momentum, and all that sort of thing. But even for these fishermen, yesterday that uh, the current was not as strong as it, as it had been. Mm -hmm. I bet it's stronger today. You see that direction of that wind coming from yep. off the lake. But these guys are, 40, 50, 60 miles from Lake Ontario. Yeah. And it's still that wind direction, even with a slight, you know, five mile an hour difference, you know, eight mile an hour wind slow down to three miles an hour and being this far away from the lake, it still affects that that current and, and the speed of that current and it certainly affects the way these smallmouth bite. The river connects to the Atlantic Ocean. We're too far away for this to be a, a tidal stream, but uh, boy, the, the, all the current considerations kind of uh, yeah. fill in all, all, the, all those uh, variables that you got to deal they, with. They do, and being this far from the Atlantic, where these fishermen are allowed to, to fish, and, um, and you can understand it where you, I know Brandon Polinick last year, and he probably was down that way this year, closer to the lake, but being that far from the lake, it, it has that much effect on that current, and being that far from the ocean mm -hmm. the other way, it, there's, the current changes from day to day. Just watching this shot from the boat, you can sometimes be fooled into thinking there's not much going on at all, but just check out how small the buoy gets. Yeah. <laughs> how fast yeah. how fast that happens, yes. you can see really how. And they're bumping with a trolling motor to slow sure, them yeah, down. Yeah, they're not, they're not a, it's not a total dead drift. It's, yep. it's controlled in a way. Boy, it's hard to, hard to hide your spots when you're beside a buoy with a number on it, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Only 12 out there today. That's right. And we know that some of the guys, uh, even with 50 out there, and as expansive as this fish, fishery is, we're fishing alongside other anglers. So you got to think maybe that's a plus, for, uh, at least for some of, these, yep. some of these guys in our 12. Yep. That great six plus that was caught earlier today by Brandon Lester, and that was in a driving rain. We had some rain to, to start today. There's our radar. We got some showers in the area. We've been generally uh, in a northwesterly, northeasterly direction, I should say. It's supposed to clear up maybe a little bit later today, Such, uh, mid morning. Mid morning, and something may like all that. pass by then. Had some rains be before the takeoff this morning. This is a all part of our TH Marine Weather Watch for you today. Expect a little bit warmer temperatures today, maybe a little bit more wind. Not a whole lot more. Okay. Can you catch a big one in the rain here, St. Lawrence? Yes, obviously. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> We've got that question out of the way. We don't have to worry about that anymore. I think well, you know, we all agreed that 
The clouds don't seem to affect these fish as much for several reasons. One certainly being that as deep as these guys are fishing 30 to 40, 45 feet deep. God, what a small mouth. You got a small mouth like that? That's it. Biggest one all week. Six to six. Freaking giant. Boom! There's your wake up call for this final day <laughs> of, the, of the season, the regular season for the Bassmaster Elite Series. Here, according to Bass Track, is our leaderboard as it shapes up right now. Keith Combs going. Going a, a good ways up that leaderboard this morning. An early limit for him, 17 pounds plus, almost almost 18 pounds for Keith Combs. That is early to have 18 pounds on the board. Bobby Lane moving up as well. We'll be moving all day long, just getting started on the St. Lawrence. We'll take a break and be back. The Hook Bassmaster Elite at St. Lawrence River, presented by Black Velvet, is brought to you by Toyota, Triton Boats. Mercury, Minn Kota, Berkeley, and by Hook. is just such a phenomenal fishery. It's one of the greatest places we get to go. What an awesome fishery. I just can't, you know, say enough about this place, guys. It's, it's really, really good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> New York could easily be a second home to me. Come on, let me get you. Yeah, you're ready. There's a reason. I escape to the water for over 200 days a year. It's not only my passion and my job, it's my life. The work and the miles that I put in traveling across this country have prepared me for this sport. Because after thousands of casts, eventually I will find the water. Toyota, let's go places. to take fishing to a bold new place. Berkeley Powerbait Max Set. These baits feature a revolutionary new material that releases a supercharged scent field. They attract more fish and trigger more strikes than even original Powerbait. And all remain soft and flexible out of the package, so they're ready to fish. Ten forage-inspired natural matte colors come alive in the water. Berkeley Powerbait Max Set. Fish bite and won't let go. What's your biggest strength? You got jig skipping skills? Can you tie a double uni? Product planning. Oh my goodness. I ain't got a resume, but I do have this. You're hired. See more office antics at teamgtfishing.com. Fishing just got easier, and it didn't cost you a thing. Free feature upgrades from Lowrance. Fish Reveal delivers the best of chirp sonar and downscan imaging, all on one screen, and it's going to help you find more fish. High visibility color sonar take high contrast imaging to a whole new level. It delivers the absolute best views of structure. Fish like to hide there, but their hiding days are over. These features are ready to roll when you are. Just upgrade your HDS Carbon software.
tournament day of eight hours that's 1912 hours of fishing averaging 60 miles per hour you cover 12,300 miles that's 102,420 minutes with a rod in your hand averaging four casts per minute that's just shy of 410,000 chances at a bite but numbers are the foundation the results are up to you Bass Live is being brought to you by Bully Dog. Good Sunday morning to you. We're Bassmaster Live, and we are coming to you for the next two hours and 30 minutes or thereabouts with the morning session and its final day of regular season fishing for the Bassmaster Elite Series, the book Bassmaster Elite. The St. Lawrence River presented by Black Velvet. Waddington, New York is our host city, a legendary place for weigh-ins and, and just all-around support for the sport of bass fishing. And how can you not support what we've seen this morning? Brandon Lester with a six-pound plus to kick off his day. Davey Height, you can't. That's a home run. It's a home run. If you're just joining us, Tommy, you nailed it this morning. This is a historic tournament. I mean, it's, well, in my opinion, the greatest smallmouth tournament we have ever seen. Fishing where I caught that 6-7. And I caught a lot of fish here the first day of the tournament. And... They have since vanished. I don't know why, because this is like the biggest stretch I had down through here. And it was really good the first day. Um, me and Tharp were fishing this same stretch, and we would be drifting along talking and catching fish. And after that first day, it was like, it was like they were never there. It's really weird. I've caught a the last two days I've hit it again, I've caught a three and a four, and that's it off of the whole thing. And, but I had to give it another try today because it was so good. And I have seen a couple fish here since we started drifting, but they have not bit. And, you know, you see fish down there, they're probably bass, but they're not absolutely. Like there's, there's a fish on the bottom right there. But they can be walleye, they can be carp. There's just there's a lot of options there. But usually, if it's a bass, you're gonna know it. He'll let you know. They're not too bashful. But um, we, uh, I came up here this morning because with the weather forecast being windy, I felt like this area would be tough to fish if it got windy. Like I, I don't feel like I'd be able to make a, a good drift or keep my bait in contact. I think it would be uh, more hassle than, so I wanted to come here first. Came here, I, I reversed the order yesterday and it worked out for me, but it didn't, it didn't because there's other boats up here. Uh, Tharp had caught it, he'd already caught the big one off that other spot. So I wanted to go to it this morning and uh, I managed to get a good one there. I got one, it's not, it's, I'm calling it a five, so it's 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 a good fish, but um, that we got four in there. We got well, we got two in there is what we got. Them other two are just they look like bass. That's about it. But um, I'm just going to give this one more try, just because I caught that big fish here. You know the potential's here, obviously, and, and since we're right here, I'll just try it. But I'm not putting a lot of faith in this. If I, if I don't catch one here, it wouldn't surprise me. And if I do catch some here, it wouldn't surprise me either because it is a good spot. But we're, well, I'm not camping around here today. I, I'm not camping anywhere today. Unless something happens on a spot, I pull up on it and it's like, you, you know you better stay there. But other than that, what, I'm going to keep doing what got me here, which is moving around and just go into the places where I know I can get some bites. I mean, if I catch one four pounder everywhere I go, it'd be nice to catch them all in one spot, but if I just catch one in each spot, hey, either way, it works out at the weigh-in, so. 
but I, I'm still optimistic. I know they're going to bite. They're biting right now. I caught a bunch of little fish this morning, those little one-pounders, and um, haven't really been catching many of those. And it feels like they should be biting. It just, it's that kind of day. That's our tournament leader, David Walker. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm not too, I'm not too bummed out that I don't have a bunch in the in the box right now because I really didn't expect coming here. That's what would happen. I was hoping that was happen, but it wasn't what uh, it wasn't what I was going to expect. I, I wanted to come up here and give my shot at catching a big one because I wanted to have that not in my head the whole time I was fishing for in those other places, thinking. God, I should have went up there. I should have done this. I should have done that. Because when I leave here today, I, d I don't want to leave here saying, I should have done this or I should have done that. I, I just want to catch as many fish as I can and have a good time. Because this is a, I mean, this is the best smallmouth fishery in the world, right? Why stay in one spot? There goes Lucas right now. He's probably at 30. I don't know one thing. I am a goby snatching dude this morning now. Look at this. I got me another one. It's been lots of that. That's a nice one right there. I got him hooked well, too. You can see the color of that bait that I'm using. Looks just like that goby. I mean, seriously, it's got the dark green back and that white belly. I mean, it's it's right there. I was thinking it was more of a shad color, but after catching those gobies, you can see that it's, I slung my bait off. You can see after catching those gobies, this thing looks just like them. It's the right color and it's got lots of action. Keep it down on the bottom and next thing you know, you got drag screaming. And that's what we're looking for today, some more drag scorching. to that mark where there's some more rocks down there. There's rocks everywhere in this place, but then there's like bigger features of it where it, I think that where it disturbs the current there, it allows them fish to kind of hang around them places better. They stay pinned to the bottom mostly because of all that current. Yeah, I see it on the Graph, we're getting close. But there was like three features down this break where there was more of that cover. And it's probably a combination of the, the current and and those places that seem to be holding a lot more gobies around them too. I'm sure them fish know where them gobies like to be. David Walker still with the lead, just ounces ahead of Josh Bertrand, who's uh, upgraded here uh, not too long ago. We got some bonus coverage right now, though, for you. We talked about uh, Keith Combs and his uh, steady rise up through the ranks through the course of this tournament. And there's Keith out there today, and Keith having a good day so far. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We, we, I got my I got my names mixed up. It's Bobby Lane, yes, sir, another guy who has risen steadily up through the ranks. Bobby, good day for you today so far. I know you, you, you figure you got a good ways to go, but uh, tell us what's been going on with you. 
Oh, it's just a good starting spot every morning. I pull up on this uh, this rock shoal and, uh, you know, try to catch a few. I got two four-pounders and, a, you know, some big, a couple heavy three-pounders. And I realize that it's not good, and I got a long way to go, and I got a, uh, two more areas that are just like this. But uh, what you this week what we're facing is we got a lot of current. You want to be... Uh, on the front side of these shoals, you don't want to be on the back side where the current is. You want to get your boat faced up on the front side and bring the bait to them. And then what happens is it, them rocks and they fall off like that. And you want your bait. It's it's kind of hard. To, it's easy to picture, but it's kind of hard to do at the same time. And you want your bait to fall right off of that current. So you want to stay on the front side, drag through it, and then uh, you know you get a bite every once in a while, like I do right here. And you, you pull up, and you never know what size it's going to be. You hope it's a big one. But uh, all you can do is you, you're trying to catch five-pounders, and we threw the, the three and the fours. But I'm telling you, the place is phenomenal. It's, it's loaded with fish, and this Berkeley Powerbait Max scent is it's like crap. I mean, they can't resist this stuff. So... We'll uh, fight this one for a while and see if he helps at all. And if not, I'm going to probably make a move and hit another show here in a, in a little while. How many such places do you have out there that you're counting on today, Bobby? Uh, I have four main spots, and it's really turned down to three. Uh, the problem is they're 20, 30 miles. Of, well, one's about 25 miles from here, so... Uh, you know, you just run around and, and hit everything you can in the time you got. I mean, it's 30 minutes to get here. That's just an old two-and-a-half-pounder here. But uh, I say two-and-a-half-pounder. What we'd give these to have at Sabine River. But <laughs> I, I got a few. But they are far apart. It, it takes a while to drift. Uh, you know, and then you get caught up in catching them, so it's hard to leave sometimes. But you, you know you need the bigger ones for sure. But this place is unbelievable, unbelievable fishing. It's, it really is uh, a unique place, and I'm very honored to be out here today. I was just praying that I had enough to get in. and uh, So I, I, it's hard to get excited about getting up at 4 in the morning, but when you're at the St. Lawrence River, it makes it exciting. So, Bobby, you mentioned that your places are so scattered out, you know, 20, 30 miles apart. What do you look for when you when you come to the St. Lawrence River and practice and, and your, you know, places being that spread out, you got to be looking for something in particular? Well, that's a good question, Davey, and realistically, you're not. What you're looking for is where did you catch the biggest fish in practice? They call this the 10,000 Islands, and honestly, it's just like Chuck Olusky at home to me down in the Everglades. It's... You know, we got 10,000 islands down there. You, you, you hit it all in two and a half days of practice. So you really got to focus on, okay, when you do catch a big one, look in that little area that you found that one and hit F. There's shoals and islands everywhere, little nooks and crannies. Uh, really just kind of want to pick one little part of an area out. And I did that in practice, but unfortunately, most of the other spots had anglers on them. So those fish, they got beat on and, and whatnot. So uh, it's, it's just such a huge area that you could never cover it all. So you really want to, you know, milk the fish that you got and, and try to make the best decisions. And hope you hope that you catch some four and a half, five pounders as opposed to, you know, the fish like I just caught. But, uh, you know, key is electronics and, uh, you know, having a having a good boat and a motor to get you around on these places. The, the fish are easy to find. You just got to look for the right size. And uh, what I did in practice was turn my, uh, it was kind of like the tournament in Florida that I won this year. I can cruise all around the, these bodies of waters. And when my graph would jump straight up and down, that meant that that was a good hard spot. And if I idled back over and it had a lot of big rock on it and it was facing upstream, then, then I would fish it. And it eliminated a lot, but there's still a lot of area to cover out here. So, you know, I, I'm, I hope I'm making a little bit of sense. It's it's a lot to soak in for, for what I just said, but uh, it's made it easier for me to practice that way.
No, that's good stuff. The good stuff. We appreciate you sharing that with us because uh, a lot of folks that haven't been up there to St. Lawrence River, I'm sure after watching you guys this week, they're going to be visiting up there. <laughs> yeah, but well, you know, it's just, it's it's a truly special place. It's kind of like Mille Lacs. When when we left Mille Lacs after the first year, the amount of boats that were there, the the second year and after, and 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 I hope it happens. You could never hurt this body of fishery. I mean, we got a there's a, a giant lake feeding this whole entire river, and with all this current, you could never ever catch all the fish in this place and the beautiful thing about it is you catch everything from 12 inches to two pounds to three pounds up to five and we've actually seen a lot of six pounders weighed in so with with a huge amount of fish like that you're you're not bothering the fishery at all and with a lake feeding this beautiful river and the amount of gobies that are down here uh you know this place is just thriving and you could you couldn't hit all the spots if you tried in 10 years it's there's that many see there's spots probably right here within a mile of me that are holding 25 pounds but trying to find it and and look for it and you know i'm not going to do it today because it's got to kind of grind on what you got but yeah i hope they come up here and have the time of their life get that power bait max scent it it really has made a true difference this week how many other pros actually asked me for for baits uh because they couldn't get bit and they yeah. they took the max scent out there and killed them on it phenomenal well, Bobby, bait really tremendous stuff great job of laying out exactly what you're yep. doing there the all the, the puzzle you've got to solve today and we wish you the best of luck we've certainly enjoyed all the time we've been able to spend with you on Bassmaster live this year it's, it's always a joy thanks bobby Appreciate thanks it. guys <clears throat> good stuff yeah bobby lane laying it out there just lake travis he was great we, oh we, it's we, fun, fun live being at lake travis he did a good job laying out what he was doing and what he was trying to trying to accomplish he can always, you know, hit the essentials really hard. He can, he can make it even a, a dummy like me understand it sometimes. <laughs> Honestly, I should probably be throwing a 3 8 ounce drop shot right now. Instead of a half. Spots a little bit shallow. That's a four box there. There we go. Rick Morris will remind you, he does have one, mistake, one keeper. Being lazy. Bottom right there. He's not reflected on Bass Track, but <clears throat> we've seen it. Free tide. Might be a good spot I think that's where we heard the story about his brother, Pinto. <laughs> Chris, yeah. right. Chris right. Lane has climbed from 58. He's 45th. He's going to be at the AOA Championship. Good for him. Finishing yeah, 14th man. this week. A lot of people pulling for Chris. He needed a good tournament, and he accomplished that. Good for him. Now, Dave, I want to ask you the mindset of Brandon Lester. Yeah, he fell out of the top 54 the AOI Championship at Chattooga. He's 51st. Now, Keith Combs supplanted him. I guess he goes into the day thinking, well, I'd better win this one then. Yep, yep. And even that won't do it because he's seven points behind 50. He's in 51st, Lester is. Great spot to be in. I mean, it's not like he could be in far worse. But he's fourth coming into the day, seven points behind 50th. There's a four-way four tie, tie for 50th, like 47th, 47th, 48th, 49th, and 50th, all of the same points. Uh, Jordan Lee, Shinfakai, Adrian Avina, and Dustin Cannell. So he can't, even if he moved up to first from fourth, can't make it in I say that was points. his consolation win in this tournament, right? Yes, yeah. Because they can't drop. Yeah, but he can't really drop no, that. Oh, they can't yeah. drop, yeah. It's, 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 it's exactly. the other tie. For sure. Tied guys can't drop. But one good thing going for him is that that classic bracket deal, 16 anglers, it should extend into yes. the first few inside the 50, like 51, 52, 53 maybe. And then also he's second in the Eastern Open. So at the Eastern or at the Open Championship, he can definitely make the classic from there as well. He's got two different chances. Window's not shut on him yeah. yet. He's got two different chances and a shot at 100,000. So let's not feel too bad for Brendan. That's right. <laughs> I mean, he's got some good things going for him today because oh, yeah. of that bracket competition yes. and adding a few spots like they did because of the canceled tournament. That's great for him. Um, he's 
got a chance to win a hundred thousand, and he's got a six and a quarter and a five and a half yeah. in his live well. Yeah. So let's not forget about that. Might be the two greatest things he's got in Good his favor today. And as far as Lane pointed out, he's away. getting to fish the St. Lawrence today, right. yes. which in itself is something yes. that I think any of us would trade places. I called uh, David Walker last night and interrupted his supper. He was eating a ham sandwich, and I was like, "Oh man!" But I can't feel too so sorry for him. He's been catching twenty plus pounds of smallmouth every day. I mean, I'd eat a ham sandwich for supper and go out and. <laughs> Catch those big smallmouth like they've been able to do for a few nights anyway. Yeah, I might have yeah. If he wins a hundred grand a night, I I hope he doesn't eat a ham sandwich again for supper. Little towns any anywhere in New York State, you can always find some good Italian. Food yes, somewhere. yes. That's that's the that's your go-to restaurant, no matter what size the town is. You can always find some decent Italian food. Most always. Another Gilby. And a heads up online for viewers looking at Josh Bertrand's weight. He has five fish on Bash Track, but it's only four. We're trying okay. to figure out which one. There's a small one in there, less than two pounds added. That might be the one that uh, he ended up catching and throwing back and was accidentally put in, or he put it in the live well for just a second and was like, no, I'm not going to keep this one. Yeah. So just a heads up. He's got four, still one more for his limit. Okay. That little section there. Speaking of food in New York, love the corn up there this time of year. It's the oh greatest sweet corn in the world. We used to do, event, do an event at the New Jersey State Fair, and that part of New Jersey is solid corn and little stands by the side oh, yeah. of the road. It's so good. And they're not as good as you would hope. We've got, we're live. yeah, we've only got about, we've got one good one. That's it right there. It's like a four. And then we've got uh, three little guys, like two and a half, two and three quarter pounders. We've got a lot of work to do. I mean, we can live without one, but we need four big bites. Super doable, but uh, we need to get to work. One thing that I feel like is in Josh Bertrand's favor, he, he seems to have a lot of places and he, he rotates them. Uh, he talked about it a little bit this morning before takeoff, being at the right one at the right time. It's all about timing when those fish want to, want to feed. I think he has more areas that he's caught fish on than, than these other guys that, that we've got here, uh, just, even Justin Lucas. But you don't need a lot of spots. Brandon Lester proved that this no, morning. You, that's right. You have just a couple spots you can catch a six and a five and a half off of. That's, that gets it done. And something worth noting, we've talked about fish care a lot yesterday, and a lot of these guys have improved over the week on, on not having fish uh, pass away on them. Josh Bertrand has zero dead fish for the week. So his 70 pounds, two ounce, or 72 two, you know, he's three ounces off the pace. That is his full weight, no penalty. So um, obviously some of these guys have caught more than him, but take away the penalties, and he's still in second place. Wouldn't it be so, interesting if, if that's the deciding factor? Exactly. There's going to be a lot of ounces. Four days without losing a fish. Like Justin Lucas, like six of his 15, I think. Walker. Walker had, had more than a pound three, I think, yeah. you know, and uh, for sure. We got Brandon Lester on the move right now, and Brandon Lester is the man who is going to be the focus of our Power Pole replay of the day. It's only the biggest smallmouth we've seen all week. He catches it right out of the box. Final day of the tournament. That's timing for you right there. And Brandon Lester right back in the thick of it with uh, basically one drop out there this morning. I hope his family back home watching this morning and we're able to see him put this six and a quarter pound large uh, smallmouth excuse me look at that that, oh. <laughs> that looks bigger than a football you can't say that's a football under some tuck under his arm that's a bigger than a football yeah he's fully inflated too were you going to say a large smallmouth large that smallmouth. You, yeah. that's it, thank you thank you <laughs> a magnum a magnum for sure 
that never gets old. So Brandon Lester, still only three keepers in the box for him right now. So he's got plenty of room to add to that without even having to go to, go to the culling. So certainly Lester certainly has a leg up on the competition, though he sits in fifth place right now. Bobby Lane, whom we just saw, Keith Combs, both moved up into our top four. David Walker still on top of so much fishing left to go on this final day. Live coverage of the Hook Bassmaster Elite at St. Lawrence River, presented by Black Velvet, will return after this short break. 239 days on the water. With an average tournament day of eight hours, that's 1,912 hours of fishing. Averaging 60 miles per hour, you cover 12,300 miles. That's 102,420 minutes with a rod in your hand. Averaging four casts per minute, that's just shy of 410,000 chances at a bite. But numbers are the foundation. The results are up to you. Bassmaster Sweepstakes equals your shot at terrific prizes. Why miss out when entering is so easy? Enter now for a chance to win a Toyota Tundra SR5 Double Cab. Grand prize also includes a genuine Toyota accessories package. Plus additional accessories from Bully Dog, b and Trailer Hitches, Covercraft, Volant, and Yakima. Go to Bassmaster.com and enter right now. It's fast. It's easy. And think of the possibilities. Don't miss your chance. 239 days on the water. With an average tournament day of eight hours, that's 1,912 hours of fishing. Averaging 60 miles per hour, you cover 12,300 miles. That's 102,420 minutes with a rod in your hand. Averaging four casts per minute, that's just shy of 410,000 chances at a bite. But numbers are the foundation. The results are up to you. The competition yes. is fierce, and the prizes are huge. The only thing missing is you. Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. Sign up for free and face fans from across the nation. Grand prize winner wins a Triton Yamaha package, including a Triton 189 TRX, MSRP of $37,293. The classic and each individual elite event winner will win $2,500 Bass Pro Shops gift cards, plus a $500 bonus card for winners who are BASS members. Sign up and pick your team today at BassmasterFantasy.com. <laughs> I got worthless over there cheering now. Every cast around here, it's just everything I'm casting on looks good. I keep expecting to get get a solid bite. Not getting the bites, not getting the size. But is it gonna be a timing thing today? Are these big ones ever gonna turn on? That's a big one. I've been waiting to catch a fish off that tree for three days.
I missed a fish on that tree twice the first day of the tournament. We're stripping down now. I feel like I'm one step closer. I don't feel like I got enough, but I feel like I'm getting a step closer. At least I'm doing my part. I mean, I'm catching fish and getting some upgrades. Who is gonna pull it out? This is about as heavy as it. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. California, that's for you, baby. Whoa! <laughs> How do you like me now? This year, redemption is sweet, and Steve Reese is the 2009 Bassmaster Classic Champion. Oh, yeah! Another big one. Might be the biggest one I've seen yet. Giant, dude. That's a freaking giant. Ooh, we need this one. Oh, come on. Don't do this. That is way, look at the size of that one. That's a six plus. That's a slaunch, Z train. <laughs> Gigantor. That just happened. <laughs> wow. I feel pretty good about it right now. Somebody's gonna have to have just a, uh, a really, really special day to beat me, and if they do, they deserve to win. Big one. Oh God, he's only got one little bitty hook in him now. Oh, it's a big one. Lights out! Boom! Five pounder. Are you ready for me to bring him through Waddington, New York? 66 pounds, seven ounces. We're looking for 15, 13, 23 pounds, 12 ounces. KBD slams the door on number 24. Bass Live is being brought to you by Bully Dog. Morning, Bass Master Live. We've been through eight regular season events this year, and this is the last one, the last opportunity to pick up that blue trophy right there for one of our top 12 who will survive for this fourth and final day of fishing. And, and oh man, saving the best for last. As far as the fish catching, as far as smallmouth goes, eh, we're saying it again, it may be the best ever. Make a great argument for that. I, I certainly think we can, Tommy. It's, it's been incredible. 
started hearing it from the first day of practice. I was getting a few texts from some friends. And we all know these guys love the sandbag of, oh, we're not catching anything. None of them did that this week. Everybody was saying this, this tournament is going to be absolutely incredible. And it has been. So it has been. David Walker has been uh, no, no lower than second place throughout this tournament. He spent plenty of time on top of the leaderboard this week. This has Brandon Lester. He's fallen down into sixth place, but Brandon Lester started us off today with a six and a quarter pound small mouth. It was just phenomenal catching it in the rain to get his day going. So Brandon Lester with only three keepers. Uh, some good potential for him today. Justin Lucas is moving steadily up the leaderboard, and Justin Lucas is our leader. Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year points, a lead we will likely take into the tournament to decide that very, very important award at the end of the season. David Walker, though, the man on top. 2011, his last win on Wheeler Lake in Alabama, doing a little ledge fishing in the dead of summer on the Tennessee River. St. Lawrence has been mighty good to him this week. All right. Sun's trying to poke through a little bit. One thing a little different about David Walker, he's been fishing shallow, shallower than a lot of these guys part of the time, but he's also fishing out deep. He's, he's varied the depth range that he's targeting more so than any of these other top anglers. Seen him up as shallow as 10 feet and all the way out to 35, 30, 36, 37 feet deep. Tommy, I just looked it up. The only way Justin Lucas doesn't go to the AOI championship without the AOI lead is if he falls to 12th and Josh Bertrand wins. Wins, wins the tournament. Okay. Make sure we don't run into a buoy. See things brightening up there. The clouds starting to thin just a bit for these guys. They may get some periods of sunshine today. Not it's not going to be blue skies all day by any by any means. Had some good rains before the takeoff, and as fishing was getting started out there today, they've been blessed with good weather this they week. They really you have to have say that. Just absolute chamber of commerce weather. With yeah. Highs just bumping under the 80 degree mark and lows about 60 degrees at night. Even though we are on a river, this place can get a little dicey with the <laughs> 20, 25 mile an hour winds with all this current. It can get bumpy. They've not had to deal with that mm -hmm. this week. They've been kind of been able to move around at will for sure. Try to get my sinker again. We saw David Walker with that goby. He said he's the he's the goby winner already this week. He's been catching a bunch of them. If you're just picking up with us today, the goby is the uh, is the main meal. That's the number one forage fish in this river right here, and it has it's responsible for a lot of what we're seeing here it in is. terms of these giant smallmouth. It certainly is. You know, we. You're right. He is catching more gobies than anyone we've we've seen, and you know, we've been with with uh, Brandon Lester a lot. We've been in Josh Bertrand a lot. Justin Lucas. It's not like we've only been. That was another goby there. Uh, it's a good good thing when you're around these gobies. That's yeah. where those smallmouth want to be when they're feeding. If he wins the tournament now. In subsequent years, people are going to say, "Well, I'm not catching any goby. I'm <laughs> I'm messed up here."
drop shot is the predominant technique here. The fish are being caught much deeper than I suppose we've ever seen them caught here in the yeah, three years we've right. been before. I think you're right. And we're here later, which all kind of goes together as they feed up, move out deeper. Getting ready for winter, which right around the corner. Yeah, that, it happens up here. In that neck of the quick. woods. <laughs> See Brandon Lester there caught a three and a quarter. He's now taking the lead with 17 on the day, but he's still only got four fish. He's temporarily okay. out of range, out of service. So we got to get... motivate. We're going to run back down, uh, down the river. Ain't working, it ain't working, you know what I mean? We got more places to go. But you know what's really the bad news? My line right there is all fuzzed up, right? See that right in front of the... That means I gotta retie again. Bertrand's hooked up. Josh Bertrand that was updated just a few moments ago on Bass Track. They had an, uh, an entry that was not correct there. Had him up in second place, but now he's listed as four fish. Let Maybe he'll actually out. catch this and keep this one. Yeah, yeah. He's been throwing back a lot. This looks like a nicer one, I think. Keep this one if he gets it in. It feels solid. I mean, it's not like a giant, but it's a it's over three, I think. Hey, and Josh wrong. Josh Bertrand, second place in Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year standings. Nine points back of Justin Lucas. That's so incredible how close they are. And unofficially, before he lands this fish, he's one point ahead of Justin Lucas. If he lands this one, it could, right, uh, he could gain five points. That's a three and a half. That'll give him the lead, won't it? Real close. Three and a half. I mean, that's a chunk. Yes, it will. <laughs> Trying to watch our little guys here. They look okay. Time to get rid of them. That's number five. You guys have me stressing out about how many fish I got now. <laughs> I'm gonna count them again before I make another cast. I've done that here before. It wasn't pretty. That's all, no, it's not. It's all good, dude. Hey, man, you're just trying to do your job. So Josh Bertrand getting this one settled out. He's got a, late, a limit uh, right now as he gets uh, ready to go. He'll be starting to cull and. He mentioned the penalty in 2013 when Polinick had that famous sixth fish, two-pound penalty for not calling before making a cast. He realized it that same day that Polinick did it, Charlie Hartley and Josh Bertram both had a two-pound penalty in their bags, but they didn't have over 20, so it severely hurt them compared. Yeah, he just mentioned he got me freaking out because it's happened yeah. there. A lot going on, a lot, in, a lot on your mind, a lot at stake here. Yeah. L.Y. for him and, the, and this event. I mean, you want to... <laughs> yeah. Be sure you've only got five in there when you make your next oh, cast. Absolutely, you can't. There can't be a misstep on this this final day of all days, the last day of the season as well. And uh, we've had uh, through our first two days of Bassmaster Live, we've had the great benefit of having Dave Mercer out there on the water in his boat, uh, moving at will and finding the real stories out there. Dave, where are you now, and who are you watching? Uh, I'm with uh, tournament leader or day three leader David Walker, and guys. Uh, Watching him fish um, is, you know, we talk about techniques and we talk about all that sort of stuff, but but watching him fish, you know, there's two different still camera boats on him, myself and Carrie out here, and we all kind of turned to each other when he went to move to his last spot and said, how cool is this guy? Like, it, just the way he is having so much fun 
fun out here. You know, we get so stuck in the pressure of, of Elite Series competition, but deep down inside, all these guys are the exact same as every one of you watching. I mean, they get giddy when they hook a big fish, and uh, Walker is laughing and having a good time. He's got one of the right ones when we left him, but it looks like he's been catching a few since we kind of pulled off. He's just right over our shoulder here, but he had, he had a five-pounder in the box, and he had two other small ones. He did catch one that was like two pounds. He put it in the live well uh, quickly, I believe. Uh, I wasn't there at that time, but then decided I'm just going to let it go because that's not what it's going to take to to win it. But uh, he's definitely got one of the right ones and well on pace because if we've learned anything in the last few days, guys, it can happen quick out here. And uh, if I'm David Walker, I'd rather be sitting here at 9 o'clock with one five-pounder in my box than a limit of three-pounders. Absolutely. Yep. You know, uh, David, you saw this too yesterday. Dave was, uh, David Walker was sort of splitting or, or fishing real close to Randall Tharp. Uh, of course, we've got the 12 cut today. We've got a lot fewer guys on the water. Is that a benefit at all to these guys to, to be left a little bit alone or are there just, is, is just such a vast fishery, it really doesn't matter? Oh, no, I think any time you get less boats out in here, it's a benefit. I mean, these guys also, by this point in the tournament, Tommy, they know who's fishing what areas. And a lot of them are sharing, you know, some of these shoals and stuff like that. So they also know who's been eliminated and who won't be there. So just even having that mental, I think even mentally it helps them a lot. You know, you know what I mean? When you're fishing and you're thinking about that other spot you want to run to, you're not thinking, what if so-and-so has already been on it or is on it right now and I make the run and, and I'll get there and it was a wasted time. So I think just the freedom and uh, of mentally knowing that they know that the, you know they, they're not splitting their fish with 50 different guys out there. It's got to help. Uh, the conditions for the first time different today. You know, a lot more clouds out here. and um, But, I mean, it, it's still... You know, relatively sunny out here. It's not. Uh, I think it'll be a good day. They'll catch them today. What's your What's your general philosophy on smallmouth? You, you think you just have an overall much better chance if it's bright sunshine and they can see everything that's going on and they on their horizon. Bright sunshine is always my favorite for smallmouth. Uh, you know, it's it's funny at home we have a lake. That is so dialed in, like you literally know. If you show up and it's cloudy, it's got both great largemouth and smallmouth. If it's cloudy, I go largemouth fishing. If it's sunny, I go smallmouth fishing. And uh, it, it really, you know, smallmouth and sun go together. You know, it, it just gets so much better. And I mean, I think Zona said it best. You know, between the zebra mussels and the sun, you give these predators eyes, and the more they can see, the more lethal they become. So uh, sun definitely helps. But I, I don't think, you know, these guys are going to catch them today. I mean, and, and that's the cool thing about this championship Sunday. If you think about last time, you know, Kevin had finished the tournament by this time. But I asked Walker on the on the dock this morning, I said, what do you need? Like, well, is there a weight that keeps you safe? I mean, on Sunday, we're used to, if I get 18 pounds, 15 pounds, I'll feel pretty confident. If I get 20, it's over. Walker knows there's no number where this one's over. He's got to catch Giants um, to close the deal. I don't think we're going to see somebody win this tournament that 19 pounds it to the victory. Uh, you know, one of those top guys is going to catch him today and uh, catch one of those monster sacks over probably 22, 23 pounds. Well, we got uh, Josh Bertrand hooked up right now. Dave, stay with us. We're, we're going to lay out and uh, listen to this whole process right here. <laughs> yeah, I think I just needed to tighten that deal up a little bit. I mean, it's a nice fish, but this is excessive. All right, another same size. That one's pushing four. We'll give it four. cool customer right there. Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> with this tournament online, he's just taken the, the the lead there probably with that fish. Right there in the runnings uh, for Angler of the Year. 
And the dra that fish is pulling so much drag, he said that's sure that other excessive. Guy's <laughs> yeah, that's right. While he's fighting a fish of his life, I'm he thinks my drag he's bigger than he bit. is. That's excessive. <laughs> that is a cool cat right there. Right. He, he is a professor of bass fishing, isn't he? <laughs> And the cameraman thinks he was a little low because he has his smallest fish as a two-pounder, and what he just threw back was not a two-pounder. It was definitely bigger than a two-pounder. So Bertrand's uh, obviously called it, so it doesn't matter that it was a two-pounder in, you know, in Bass Strike. So upgrading. Josh Bertrand may well have taken over the lead there. We'll wait for bass track to catch up, which they will sooner or later. We'll have to wait to see how excessive the lead he, Yeah, yeah, he, it may be an excessive lead. Yeah, you, a, you, you just never be. know. <laughs> that is so awesome. Dave Mercer, thank you so much for, for, for being out there today. We're going to be leaning on you uh, again today. Give us one quick fact that, that we need to know about Josh Bertrand. I mean, what a season he's had. He, he, he's, de he's deserving some love, right? What a career he's had, guys. Honestly, I'd say he's the right now, you know, the most underrated pro on the Elite Series, you know, uh, and it just simply because how he is, you know, he's he's one of those quiet guys that kind of does his talking at the scales. And uh, Josh Bertrand, nobody's shocked to see this. Nobody that knows him, nobody that follows the sport is shocked to see this. You knew this season was coming for him. And, and it's amazing to watch these young anglers evolve. You know, you get certain guys who come out of the gates so hot like Justin Lucas did. Um, but it, Bertrand was a guy who had to get his feet under him. But uh, I'm telling you, we are going to have a war at Chattoog. It, it's it, those the, both those guys at the top of the leaderboard. Not only good buddies, but uh, incredible anglers. Oh, thanks, Dave. Great way to sum it up right there. Dave out there, him and Kerry Barrett, cameraman, out there running around on the St. Lawrence all day today. We'll be leaning on him, as we say, throughout the day. And it's been a great pleasure to have, uh, have that sort of ability to cover on-the-water stuff with Dave Mercer. I think he made a great point there. I'm, Josh Bertrand, it's no surprise the anglers that have been fishing around him for years, but he's evolved. He's, he's, he was... When he came onto the scene, he's a great deep water fisherman, mm -hmm. but he is he has evolved, and now he can survive those shallow water, the the tournament, the, you know, the Sabine where Greg Hackney is going to be your biggest sure. player. Yeah. He still has he's gotten where he has good solid tournaments at those places. He's he's well rounded. Need a couple more good ones. It will be a shootout. It should can't two. do that from the get go because you're not going to get five good ones. I mean, you'll catch like a. A one and a half, a one and a half, a one and a half, a two, and then a five. But you don't get enough fours and fives to have a limit of them. You got to get them up here. changes already today and Dave's point was good something we should keep in, keep in mind it doesn't take long for it to happen out here we saw it with David Walker the first day of Bassmaster Live yesterday with Justin Lucas it's just man you could hit a stretch and yep. change the world basically. and we're still ahead of those time frames of both of those anglers so everything in these guys live wells we expect to see things change up at least for one of them because this happened the last two days do Walker and Lucas do uh, you think they're aware of hey I hit this stretch at this time oh, yesterday yeah. and did that. I'm going to do it again today. Absolutely. They're, they're, Absolutely. They've got that baked into the plan. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You bring up a good point, but I would I would feel 100% in the fact that they know mm. when that key time was and that place, and they'll be right back there that same key time today. Figure. Here's a – you were talking about lead changes today on Bass Trek alone. How about this for lead changes? We've had four anglers – lead the St. Lawrence River the past three events. The th past three times we were there, we've had four different people lead because two guys went wire to wire, and then the year Edwin Evers won, Shaw Grigsby led day one. So we had two leaders in that one and then two for the other two. This week we could have four different leaders. It'll be the first time ever, obviously, that we didn't go like wire to wire or have a substantial leader. We've had to change every single day. There's been some good opportunities uh, for a lot of guys out there, that's for sure. That's an understatement. Absolutely. It's an understatement that the best may well be yet to come today, the final day.
this Bassmaster Elite Series regular season ending event on the St. Lawrence River. Bertrand, for all we know, he has taken over the lead. If they get another leader today right now, and many, many changes on the way. Ounces may decide the winner. We're a long way from that point. We'll be back. Live coverage of the Hook Bassmaster Elite at St. Lawrence River, presented by Black Velvet, will return after this short break. Hi. Hi. Weekend. Hi. Mine was unbelievable. Really? It's gotta be ski. It barely fit on two pages and it was so big. <laughs> hey, ski, I think you left this on the copy, man. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> ski. See more office antics at teamgtfishing.com. You know, this place is just such a phenomenal fishery. It's one of the greatest places we get to go. What an awesome fishery. I just can't, you know, say enough about this place, guys. It's, it's really, really good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> New York could easily be a second home to me. Come on, let me get you. There's a reason. I escaped to the water for over 200 days a year. It's not only my passion and my job, it's my life. The work and the miles that I put in traveling across this country have prepared me for this sport. Because after thousands of casts, eventually I will find the water. Toyota, let's go places. We need that support of that we can everywhere. Yeah? Stop working right now! Look outside. Is this spreadsheet weather? No, it's not. This is fishing weather. So stop clicking, get out there, and catch a bass. Stop what you're doing and start fishing Rapala Ripstop. Fishing just got easier, and it didn't cost you a thing. Free feature upgrades from Lowrance. Fish Reveal delivers the best of chirp sonar and downscan imaging, all on one screen, and it's going to help you find more fish. High visibility color sonar take high contrast imaging to a whole new level. It delivers the absolute best views of structure. Fish like to hide there, but their hiding days are over. These features are ready to roll when you are. Just upgrade your HDS Carbon software. Berkeley Fireline Ultra 8. It's rounder, smoother, and four times more abrasion resistant than original Fireline. That means you catch more fish. Ultra 8 features eight braided strings heated to molecularly bind individual fibers. It lays well on the spool and is prior to going through your guide. Expect 10% longer casts and superb knot strength. New Fireline Ultra 8, and you thought Fireline couldn't get any better. tournament day of eight hours that's 1912 hours of fishing averaging 60 miles per hour you covered 12,300 miles that's 102,420 minutes with a rod in your hand averaging four casts per minute that's just shy of 410,000 chances at a bite but numbers are the foundation the results are up to you
Bass Live is being brought to you by Bully Dog. Bassmaster Live, if this was a football game, we'd be entering the second quarter of our competition here, the final day for the Bassmaster Elite Series of 2018, the Hook Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River, presented by Black Velvet and Bobby Lane, one of our top 12, who's left here on Championship Day, put it best. Uh, you know, you get to the end of the season, maybe you, it doesn't feel good to get out of bed at 4 o'clock. I think this week everybody's, like, waiting for the alarm clock to go off. They can't. They want to be ready to strike because, well, as Dave Mercer put it, you never can tell what can happen very, very fast here on the St. Lawrence River, and you're going to be entertained all day long. Take a look at Rick Morris, one of our raffle of five live, starting the day in fifth place. This was while we were away. Rick Morris, one of the few doing something a little different. He's hooked up. Rick Morris is throwing a Carolina rig. We not have that. not seen that yeah, this week. It's kind of big. Swing around a little circle. Swing her right over in here if she don't you jump. Ah. Oh, how about that one? There's one. He's almost five. Yeah, I'd say she's five. Josh Bertrand would probably call that a three and a half, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> was that a good move? That was a good move. So let's get on back up. Is that a Carolina rig lizard? What was that? Holy cow. <laughs> on a spinning rod? That's what I was going to ask when you said that. He did. He thrown a Carolina rig on a spinning rod. He is. It's a like seven foot, eight inch spinning rod. Make a long cast. Good is it hook a lizard? Set. Is it a lizard? It looked like it. Let's see if we can get a. He's hiding that thing a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. We, we, Is we this might... Steve Kennedy we were watching here right now? <laughs> <laughs> Grew up in the same era, maybe. <laughs> yeah, those old guys. Yeah. You better watch. Uh, keep an eye on them. They're going to fish here uh, four more years. He... Yeah, I Lucas think I started like... the same year that Rick Morris did. So, the old guys, you better watch him. Lucas is hooked up. Woo! Come on. Did he say six pounder? I don't think he did. Again. Oh, my gosh. That's a tank. Maybe not quite six, but dang good one. It looked like it to me. <laughs> wow. Oh. Come here. Come here. Got her, baby! Yeah! I'll show her to you. Yeah! Don't start getting me this fired up. We still got all day. Woo! She's not the fattest one. She's long and she's big. Oh, dude, when she jumped, oh my gosh. Holy crap. Justin Lucas, one of the anglers fishing deep, 40, 40 plus feet. So he fizz, he's fizzing these fish before he puts them in a live well. To be our first angler over 20 pounds today, and that should catapult him into the lead. Here, let her. They get excited when they catch those big fish on uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, but Sunday, they know it's payday. Oh, it's, man. Someone's going to lift that blue trophy over their head today. Feel a different excitement in the air. Dude, that is a thick tail. Again, we remind you, Justin Lucas is the leader Unofficially, Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. That's such an important award. 
and the consistency over an entire season. Justin Lucas with the nine-point edge over Josh Bertrand starting today. Nothing's, nothing's set, nothing's final until we uh, wrap up the weigh-in today. And uh, you can check Bassmaster.com shortly after that for the uh, final point standings as we head into the Bassmaster Angler of the Year tournament to, to wrap up our season up on Chattoog Lake, the border between North Carolina and Georgia. It'll be a different setup than the St. Lawrence, that's for sure. And it's going to be a battle royal right at the top of that leaderboard it's, between those two guys for sure. It's going to be, Tommy. And it's really amazing to me the way a AOI shapes itself up. Last year with Brandon Polnick and Jason Christie, you can see it just coming together in the last two events. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, Justin Lucas and Josh Bertrand, they were fishing the same spots together at Oahe. Yeah. Uh, and, and we see them just, you, you, you can just tell it's going to be these two, it's going to be a a throwdown at, at Chatoog in the AOI Championship. Um, certainly somebody else could jump in there, but it just it looks like it's all headed towards these two accomplished anglers. They're both great anglers. Neither one has ever won an AOI. Life-changing uh, for oh, sure. a professional angler. If this is what you do for a living, they're both young men. Uh, if this is what you do, plan on doing for a living, getting that AOI title will change their lives. Will mean the, we mean the world to both of those guys. We talked about consistency over a season. You see how it's shaken out. Now, uh, the highest finish, of course, belongs to Justin Lucas, but look at all those tens, all those top tens and top fifteens and sixth place at Lake Martin, which uh, makes up the difference between him and Bertrand and actually puts him ahead by a shade at this point right now. But both of these guys have just had monster season. Uh, Why, well, like I said, they were fishing a lot of the same water, an eighth and a ninth place finish here at St. Lawrence, they're second and third, and they're going to come out AOI for all likelihood, first and second. That's incredible. Who scripted really all of that? That's, I don't know. You can't make that up. <laughs> That's a pretty, pretty Hollywood kind of deal right there. I've been informed Lucas released one of his fish, so he's not going to be in the lead, but he's climbing up there. He did release one. Yeah, he's she only got back. four she now. She would have been a six. She's probably... I don't know. I don't even know. I'm not even going to say. I haven't weighed a fish yet. I'm going to try not to weigh him. All I know is they're biting today. They're probably going to be biting for everyone. But that's why we need 25, 26. I've been steady 23 every day. I've lost a pound and a half in dead fish. I should be right there for this thing, but it's all good. It's all good. We can make it up today. That fish was putting bass track at a four, and a four and a half. I'm fired up right now, everyone. I'm telling you. So just to take that into account. 17. If you saw that one, heavier. you'd be fired yeah. up yeah. too. Maybe like a pound. Come on, man. We need to get <laughs> four and a half. Sponsor of the Bass Track Accuracy Award. Give them like a thousand dollars if they nail their weight <laughs> for Bass Track, so we can follow this accurately. And I knew, dude, when I laid into that. One. Gotcha. All right. Take a look at what Justin Lucas has one. caught since the start of day number four, Championship Sunday. Yeah, you're hooked good now. Gotcha. Sweet. First sweet, one was a sweet, nice sweet. Day. That's a fatty. It'll work for now. He's got it figured out. He says, look, I've been right around 23 pounds each and every, and believe, believe me, 23 pounds is an, is an achievement in the world of smallmouth. But he knows it's you know, going to be up to him to catch 24, maybe 25 today. I, I'm, I fully believe in that. You never know what kind of day it is. I mean, it could be a lot tougher day. When conditions change like this, it's especially a little more unpredictable, I would say. Not bad. Wow, look at that. Not man. bad. Pack him up today, man. Oh, you almost came in the boat right there. One thing gotcha. Justin told me last night, that Three coming into this tournament, probably. he tried in practice and during the Holy event. Crap. Look at that jump. Tried to fish deeper than everyone else. Tried to separate himself, not be pressured. Consciously fish deeper than, than everyone else. Maybe not as many fish, but, but good quality yeah. and not having to share his fish with some guys that were fishing in the same area. Baby. He's fishing yeah. different contour. The 
strategizing him and Bertrand. Uh, a little bit of a different plane, too, than some of these. I mean, you know, no compunction whatsoever about throwing a two-pounder back, right. throwing a three-pounder back. Uh, you know, which other guys uh, has been described today as bad mojo yep. to do that. They, they, they're calculating. Yeah. They're, they're, they've got the numbers added up. That's a good point, and and they're you know they show some confidence. Yep, they, they absolutely. Show some self confidence. Coming back here real quick. All right. Current's so strong, man, when you drop on one, you get a, your line's moving backwards the whole time, so. It's, it's really tough to actually drop on one and put it in front of them. You gotta time it just right, and your cast and angle, everything just right. I don't like casting so much for him. I would rather drag, but just because I feel like you lose more casting, but some of these spots I have are so specific that you can't, if you drag it, you just go by too, too quickly. We talked about that a little bit this morning. Felt like we'd see these guys fishing shorter. Uh, Oh, I thought he was about to set the hook Shorter there. Shorter drifts. And I think. No. About to set the hook yeah. there. He's hooked up. What are you? What are you? Could be a good one. No. Not going to help. This spot's on fire today. Never even got a bite here yesterday. Notice that wind pushing with the current. Come here. It's definitely picking that current up. And the good thing about it, we saw Brandon Lester on uh, Friday lay off of his fish. We saw Justin Lucas lay off of his fish yesterday. There will be no laying off no, of the no. fish today. <laughs> no. We're going to see. When these places are on fire, they're going to stay right You're there on them. Your setup. Justin, if you could, you're live. Yeah, uh, max scent, flatworm, of course, and uh, using a uh, number one hook, eight pound trilene, 100% fluorocarbon. It's new X5 Berkeley six pound braid. It is the best braid I've ever used on a spinning rod. I said it yesterday. It's coming out this fall. I've had it on all my rods all week long. I've never had a single wind knot all week and it's held up awesome. Um, seven foot medium, Abu Garcia Premier rods, Fantasista Premier and then size 30 Revo spinning reels. That's all you need. That's all I have on the deck. Every rod and reel is pretty, they're all the same size and same size, uh, same length rod, same size reel, same line. It works. Everybody always gives me a hard time because they, you always say you got all the best stuff. Well, I do. I really think I do. Like, I'll give Aaron Martins a run for his money on him thinking he's got all the best of everything. I really think I do. And he, hey, that's a little jab at Aaron because he told me yesterday, I got you beat finally. He had 22 and a half, I had 23 and a half. So I love you, Aaron. But you didn't have an accent flatworm this week, so. Now the wind getting up about above 10 miles an hour there. And Flap for per minute. Yeah, flaps per on minute that, on that jersey. He's picking up. Come on, wind. I don't even care if you blow. Blow harder. Make Justin, it harder on the other guys down the lake. Justin, not uh, not afraid to lay out his his setup for us on the Omaha Taste of Bait there for sure. Ooh, I thought that was one. 
claiming some bragging rights at the same time and talking yeah. a little trash about Aaron yeah. while he's at it. We hey, talked a little you, bit earlier about you, having confidence. You, you get it. Hit it all in one, no, one little sequence. Oh, come on back. Drop. Oh man, I am in the I am in the zone right now. I am feeling this spot. We got a good spot right up there. We still have our best stuff back there. We haven't hit in a couple hours now. Mm mm mm. We've talked a lot about drifts. Dave Mercer did a good job yesterday breaking down the. Yep importance of being exact drifts and knowing the current and the wind and all that sort of thing. But these anglers that we're watching today on Rapid Five Live. there's fish Live, everywhere down there. They're fishing exact spot. He's got his trolling motor on spot lock. He's making a cast to exact spot. That that long drift stuff has ceased yeah, yeah. <laughs> for this final day uh, for the most part. The guys that, that are consistently catching the 20 pound, 20 plus Ooh. pound bags. They've been tightening it up since day one, I suppose, yeah. right? Yeah. Just, yeah to arrive at this point. You see those boat houses, they, they haven't moved. He's he's on spot lock on. making cast of probably a few boulders. Key spots here on this river ledge. That's the one thing that was awesome about spot lock on like those non-current lakes like a Mille Lacs, so you can stay on that. We three bites and we're gonna have 25 pounds. We here, get the right three. You want to drift most times, but it is good that you can click it so you can coal and you're not two miles down the river styling. and stuff. Justin Lucas, again leading Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Let's take you one year back in time. The worst part about this. Well, who was that? Well, another one of our top 12 today. That's going to be Brandon Polnick. Maybe we can offer you a little bit of bonus coverage. Getting out there with Brandon, and there he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still defending, still defending the title. You got, you got some more hours left, Brandon. You got some more fishing okay. left to go. Yeah, we've got uh, still got a lot of work to do. We've got a little more deficit to make up today than I'd like, but I've had a pretty good morning. I've just kind of been bouncing around, and I've been able to catch a few good ones. Uh, we've got a limit and actually just made a move to probably the windiest stuff we fished all day. Uh, so I hope you guys can hear me, but we're just pitching a Zoom Z drop around. I've got two rods on the front deck. That's what I've been doing all week. And uh, we're just moving around, covering a lot of different water. So Brandon, are you fishing down uh, over towards the lake like you typically do? or? What section of the yeah, river have you yeah, focused we, on? You no, know, we made about an hour and 10 minute run this morning uh, and then just kind of been sticking in the same general area for the most part. Um, you know, within, I'd say, about 10 or 15 miles section of the river. So can you tell the difference in the current today versus yesterday? It looks like the wind's coming off the lake. Uh, I haven't noticed more yet, uh, but it, I think the wind's supposed to pick up a little more throughout the day. Uh, so there's definitely a good amount of current. Uh, I just I haven't been able to tell if there's more or not. Uh, it, the crazy part is, is the last three days it's actually been blowing close to this every day, but it quits at about Alexandria Bay, and then it's all falling up on the upper part of the river. Brandon, what part of the day, or has it been different every day, what part of the day has been the most productive for you over the three days so far? It's, it's definitely been different. Um, the first day was like around 11, 12 o'clock. Uh, uh, and then the, the second day was kind of all throughout the day. I caught probably 40 fish that second day. And then yesterday... Uh, it was kind of a, somewhat of a morning bite, and then today's been kind of morning, but I really expect the afternoon today to be probably the best. Brandon, quickly, if you could sum it up in one sentence, what's it been like? I mean, we got two young guys on top of the, the leaderboard for Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. What has it meant to you to, to reign this year as, as, as the uh, Angler of the Year? 
Yeah, it, it's fun to come in as as angler of the year. You know, starting a season off with uh, that level of confidence, uh, and you, you just come in feeling like you're going to be able to catch them everywhere you go. And the hardest part is when you do win that is keeping that rolling throughout the off season. Uh, you know, it's a lot easier to keep it going when you're going tournament to tournament. Well, Brandon, thank you so much. Thanks for spending a little time with us. Uh, uh, be careful out there and have success for the rest of your day here for sure. All right, thanks. I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, thanks, Brandon. Like you say, Davey, it's, it's a huge deal. Man, it means so hey. much to a young... I mean, these are all... Th these guys are... They're quickly becoming the establishment now, but they're still the, they're still the young the young generation they out are. here. And, and to have that sort of a sort of an opportunity at that age is just tremendous. To win a Bassmaster tournament in the lead or a, well. you know, a tour, back then, whatever it might be, is a is an accomplishment. It's a dream of all these guys. But um, the the classic in AOI those those are life changers in my opinion. I've, I've said this to you guys before. I when I felt like I definitely had it wrapped up my first AOI, I was within sight of check-in an hour ahead of time just so I could swim to the check-in boat if I had to. <laughs> and I, I dry heaved for the last 30 minutes. Really? Yeah, oh, it's, it's I, that huge. It, it meant that much to me because oh, I, I knew it would mean that much to my family and the rest of my life. Well, like you say, a win is one thing. Maybe even a classic win is one thing. But that, to, as a totally developed angler having arrived, that's, that's the marker right there. It does. It does. When you're in first or second, get a little bit of pressure on you for sure. Being in third, especially now with what I got, I don't have any pressure. Now we're just, we're having fun. I probably have 19 pounds if I was to guess. Something like that. Maybe not that much, I don't know. I don't really care. We got two good ones and we need three more. That's all I know. We got four and a half hours to do it too. We've only been out here for three hours, three and a half. We got the best part of the day. Get off there. I think I finally hooked a goby. There it is. That is why this place is unbelievable. That and the zebra mussels. Give me my hook back. Run back up to that rock, hit that one more time, run up then hit there, then run back down there. second or two. Maybe the start of another one of those runs like Justin had yesterday, and it may well have been. That was a great one you caught right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I thought the same thing, Tommy. Here we go. Five giants and five drifts. And... We're still a little yeah. early, though, I think. It was yeah, about 9.30 yeah, when was, it started for him yesterday. Absolutely. It was getting near the middle of the day. He said he thinks he's got close to 19 to pounds already, and yeah. he didn't even really catch him yesterday until about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Don't start getting me lots this of, fired up. Lots of good things we to get fired up day. about. Woo! We still got all day. We sure do have a lot of fishing time left to go, a lot of time before we settle this one and hand out that trophy right there, before we settle the, the official points for Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. David Walker hanging on in the lead right there, but Justin Lucas streaking up the leaderboard. Right behind him, just a couple of ounces behind, Brandon Lester. The big, fired the big shot at the start of the day. So many stories, and we'll take a break and come right back. 
Live coverage of the Hook Bassmaster Elite at St. Lawrence River, presented by Black Velvet, will return after this short break. Bassmaster Sweepstakes equals your shot at terrific prizes. Why miss out when entering is so easy? Enter now for a chance to win a Toyota Tundra SR5 Double Cab. Grand prize also includes a genuine Toyota accessories package, plus additional accessories from Bully Dog, b and Trailer Hitches, Covercraft, Volant, and Yakima. Go to Bassmaster.com and enter right now. It's fast, it's easy, and think of the possibilities. Don't miss your chance. 239 days on the water. With an average tournament day of eight hours, that's 1,912 hours of fishing. Averaging 60 miles per hour, you cover 12,300 miles. That's 102,420 minutes with a rod in your hand. Averaging four casts per minute, that's just shy of 410,000 chances at a bite. But numbers are the foundation. The results are up to you. If you love bass fishing, then show your support by joining BASS today. Since 1968, BASS has been serving bass fishing enthusiasts with information and tournament coverage that make you a better angler. When you sign up today, you'll join over half a million outdoorsmen who love bass fishing. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Log on to Bassmaster.com to join bass today. Biggin, 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 biggin. Please tell me he's on there, still on there. Come on, Trollamo. Oh, power pulls up. Come on, stay there. Get in there. Stay pegged. Watch it, watch it coming, coming at you. Can you say, can I get some of that? Yeah! Give me some! Folks at home, folks at home. Yeah! Can you say, can I get some of that? Yeah! Yeah! Oh, God, I missed him. Missed him. Big and real big and big giant one, big giant one, big giant one, big giant one, big giant one. Stay hey Dang it, boys and girls, you give me some on that. Oh, I missed her. Flip back in there. Oh, it's seven. I fish for big fish. I pull out the big rod, the flipping stick, and I have at it. I love braid, I love one and a half ounce weights, and I love sticking big ones. I don't play the finesse game. I fish hard for big ones. Even the Z train knows I like fishing for big ones. I like having the flipping stick in my hand. I like having the frog rod in my hand. I don't like waving the fairy wand, spinning rod as we call it, around. That's just not me. I'm the big stick guy. I fish to catch big fish, and I feel like I'm gonna catch the limit fish to go with it. Biggin, 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 biggin. Stay pegged, oh my God. Stay pegged. Let me get my hands on you, girl. Get my, get my hands on you. Got her. Wes, this is the tan. Got Golly gee, sorry you're gonna have to beat that, but golly gee, give me some. He's eight. 
We got a power pole down. My goodness. <laughs> when you're culling fish like that, God, it's game. Whew, game on, boys. Game on. Let me make sure. Hold on. Okay. Yes. And yes. <laughs> 30 pounds, 15 ounces, Ishman Rose smokes them. It is the year of Ishama. Feels like a good one. It's going out in the deep water. Going out to deep water. Stay on. Stay on. Oh, monster, 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 big bass. Big bass. Big bass, please, baby, stay on. Stay on. Please, stay on. Stay on, baby. Stay on, stay on, girl. Come here. Look, she's got the copper all in her mouth. Come here, girl. Yes, yeah, yes. Digging. Oh yeah, on the popper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yes. Oh, yes, that's what I needed. I needed my big bass. Yeah! Yes, yes, yes. God, man, I was fighting. I was heading to deep water. I'm like, ain't that big? And I'm sitting there fighting a hole, and it's just like going out of the middle. I'm like, what the heck? Because it didn't only hit like a little two-pounder. Yes! Woo! Yeah! Yes! That's what I needed. I needed that big bite. Yes. Woo. Rojas needs 13-8 to walk away with the title here at the Trocar Battle on the Bio. 13-8. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen. 13-8. He has exactly what it takes. for your champion, Dean Rojas! Bass Live is being brought to you by Bully Dog. He is one of a kind. I mean, is that your house? That's, your that's my summer, summer place there, summer yeah. Place. yeah. It's a nice place to while away a few hours. It's, you know, it's, it's okay. The view's decent, not bad. St. Lawrence River, though, love the fishing here. I, I think we've taught everybody why this may be the best fishery going right now. If you're a smallmouth angler, this is the place you want to be, especially this month, this day, right now, all the way through October. St. Clair, Champlain, they're impressive smallmouth fisheries. Oh, fantastic. But... but. Holy cow, what we have witnessed here this week on the St. Lawrence River. It's, it's just phenomenal, and, you know, it's, we'll never forget this tournament, that is for sure. Justin Lucas won't, won't forget it. That's, uh, this is the place where he hang on, hangs on to the lead, Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Although Such mentioned it's mathematically possible he could relinquish that lead uh, at the end of the tournament. But uh, it's not pointing in that direction right now of him Highly finishing 12th doubtful. place. He's not going to finish in 12th place today. I'll make that bold prediction.
There's one. I don't know if it's going to be a good one or not. It's coming up. A good one. No, 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 dude. Wow, that's a nice one. Mm. Looks like a sack of potatoes coming out of the water there. That's huge. Come here. That's a good one, dude. Need that. Here we go. I think this was during the break, commercial break, moments ago for Lucas when we, before we came live. That's a good one, dude. Need this guy. Got him! Yes. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> That's a beast! Dude, it might be going down. All right, we got some coaling to do now. Oh man, one, two, three, four, five, right there. One, two, three, four, down to right here. This would be a heck of a call, of course, for Justin Lucas. This happened while we were away for our break just a few minutes ago. And then moments ago, show you another one. That might be another good one. Feels heavy, dude. I can't tell though, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, he'll help for sure. I think. No, maybe not. Come here. Got him. Got him. Woo! We gotta start weighing some fish, dude. I gotta know which one's my which one's my smallest and everything, you know? These are my big, big girls. Actually, you know what? We don't need to weigh them. Cause we got No, please weigh them. how fast it can go down. We talked about that and we see it happening. And you asked earlier about the time frame that they caught them each day. Will these guys be back in there? Well, he's back in that area. He's a little, little early. I would probably be knocking on the door a little earlier too, wanting the same thing to happen. And he's, he's catching them just a little ahead of schedule from yesterday.
Uh. There we go. Trying to left it hooked up. That's a good one. Feels decent, I can't tell. Coming up. Yeah, that's a good one. <clears throat> yeah, he's only got four keepers at this point. God, I thought it came off. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. That's a big one, dude. He's already got two giants among his four. Don't, don't do it. Oh, my goodness. With the two he's got this alive, well, he needs this word. one. What about that? Come here to me. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Four plus, gotta be. It's saying that fish is four and a half. Real close to it. We're gonna find out. At least four and a quarter. Four fifty one. Four and a half. On Four those. and a half. Ooh. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> that means yeah, he's got 16 and a quarter with three fish. Three fish, yes. <laughs> three mm. fish, 16 and a quarter. Bass Track has him two pounds, five ounces behind Justin Lucas, which we know he's a little light. Start yeah. a new side. This has been a great week, but this this is going to be a showdown this oh afternoon. Oh my gosh, you're just going to have to... <laughs> Justin, as masses as, as it's been, you got to step it up today. You, you really do. And Justin Lucas is catching big fish and numbers, but that's six and a quarter and five and a half that Brandon Lester called earlier this morning. Those are game changers. A three thirty and a two pounder. Guess what? It's only ten fifteen. <laughs> well, we still got work to do. Just when you think it can't get any more jaw dropping, it just goes there. So he's got uh, 16 and a quarter, 19 with the three pounder, 21 with a two pounder. So he's got 21 with a three and a two pounder. Which means that two four pounders puts him a three pound coal, you know, total. I don't think he's very big. Just fours, normal fours. Josh Bertrand hooked up. Oh, yeah. It's not bad. Oh, will need your help. Ah. I don't think he's going to help. Two and a half, three? Two. Yeah, that's a three. He's not gonna go anywhere for us. Well, that one goes back in the water for Josh Bertrand. Meanwhile, our own Dave Mercer out there with total mobility and showing us a lot of great stuff. You wound up in the right place at the right time again. I think those are the, that's our motto for today, right? Right place, right time, Dave. Uh, we, 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 I don't know whether we're getting lucky or we're timing it good, but every time we pull up on Justin Lucas, I mean, he did it yesterday. He hammered him and, uh, we were with him for that, you know, that giant he just caught moments ago, and he's pretty fired up right now. The unique thing is, is watching these guys. Nobody's excited about three pounders, you know. You get so used to tournaments because they know they won't do any good today. And and with what Brandon Lester's done so far, they better be catching big ones. Absolutely, and, and you know, it's just we were just talking here. You know, what we've seen so far, the first three days is impossible, but. Uh, Today you've got it. You've got to step it up. And how do you step it up from from stuff that's just off the off the charts to begin with? 
Well, one of the advantages I think the guys are going to have, too, we saw a lot of fish management yesterday. Uh, Smallmouth, you know, a lot of times, you know, they will group together in similar sized fish. I mean, everybody's had that situation where it's the opposite. You're catching two pounders and you get a big one. But they do a lot of times, you, you know, you've heard anglers say, you know, I think there's fours here, but there's no real big ones. But the nice thing is. You're not going to have that situation today where guys are going to have to lay off their fish because they're trying to manage them. I mean, they can burn through a bunch of three pounders trying to get that bigger bite. So, uh, and I'm sure we're going to see that throughout the day. So, so Dave is Justin in the exact same area that he was in yesterday when you were with him, and he, he caught those five really nice fish. Exact same area, but not the exact same spot. Um, uh, we're on the other side of the river that we were uh, yesterday when we were with him. He was on the Canadian side of the river. Today, on the U.S. side of the river, but but in the same area. I mean, all his spots are, you know, that we've seen him on the water. They're all within, you know, a half a mile of each other. Um, and, and you know, it, it's neat the way, you, you know, you, Davey, you've seen this and you've experienced this to see how different everybody is. You know, like on shore, we're all kind of joking and, hi, how's everyone doing? And Lucas is one of those guys, I'll be honest, when you pull up on him to cover him, when he's in contention, he's incredibly focused. You know, uh, you know, you get other guys, as soon as they see you, they're like, hey, what's up? And Lucas, you know, I, I'm so used to pulling up on him and you, you kind of just give him a nod and let him do his job. But... After he put that big one in the boat, he started screaming and hollering over to our boat, and uh, he's he's pretty jacked up uh, right now. So you can tell better from where you are, but from here it seems that Justin, uh, who you're there with now, and some of these other anglers, they seem to be casting or fishing the exact spots more so today than drifting. Uh, earlier in the week, they seem to be covering more water, but today, is is that the case? You can tell from where you are. It looks like it. I mean, we talked about it yesterday, shortening your drift and fine-tuning that drift. I think, you know, these guys have been out here for three days of competition. They know where they've got the bigger bites from, and, and you know, they're focusing on that because that's all that, that matters out here today. It's just, the, the, you know, they, it's not going to situation like I think we're going to see all these guys get opportunities today. I don't think it's going to be a situation where we're not going to see that big opportunity come the question is, can I boat that fish? Because, uh, you know, we got a lot more wind out here today, which is going to hurt you with boat control. And uh, one of the things that, that, you know, smallmouth are synonymous with is uh, just not putting them in the boat. And it doesn't matter how many of them you've caught. You know, Brandon Polnick, this tournament has been cursed with losing fish. One day he lost up to 15 fish that he thought would help him. Um, so it, it's just putting those fish in the boat, and it's a lot harder than you think, guys. Uh, you know, we talk about how these fish eat gobies all the time, and these big smallmouth, you look at a goby, you're like, well, they've probably got pretty soft mouths. I mean, there's not much to crunch on a goby, but the where they eat these gobies from is what makes their mouth so tough. I mean, the entire bottom of, of this lake pretty much is covered with zebra mussels. Uh, and they're basically like a bunch of little razor blades down there. And, and really pay attention for this, guys, because it's one of the coolest things. When you see guys boating their fish, look around the side of that fish, up the front of the side of the fish. You'll see actual little scrapes and stuff that run down the side of the fish. And that's from them you know, going to eat a goby and going down on their side and rubbing against those zebra mussels. So you got to imagine living in that environment, you got a very, very tough mouth. But it's cool. Look for, look for those scratches. I'm sure a lot of these fish have them. David, David Walker has won the goby tournament. I mean, going away, he's caught like <laughs> 10 times as many gobies as anyone else. I, I mean, I, that's, that's a sign. I mean, right, if you're, if you're out there and you're not catching any gobies, you got to start questioning your decision making, right? Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of times that um, you know gobies can be a telltale sign. You know, they, it, I can't count the number of times that anyone's fished the Great Lakes. You're out there and you feel that little ting, 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 ting. You know, it's a goby, and then it drops a ting, 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 and then boom, a big fish grabs it. So you want to be near the gobies. I mean, it's it's simple. No matter what you're fishing for, uh, you got to be near the bait, and that's that's the bait. And uh, you know, you got to be near those gobies. You know, the more closer you are to the gobies closer you are to the fish because the fish don't move too far from them. I want to change subject ju just quickly a little bit right here, Dave, and talk about Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. We've got Josh Bertrand and Justin Lucas atop the leaderboard right here. We had Brandon Polinick. He's still the reigning, uh, the reigning champ. These guys, you know, 
we think of them as the young, the, the young set, the, the, the upstarts and everything. But this, this is the age group that's moving in to become the establishment now, aren't they? I mean, I mean they, have, <laughs> they have sort of transitioned for us right before our eyes. If you look at that angler of the year leaderboard, you you can't argue that. I mean, just take the last two years angler of the year leaderboard and look at it. But this year, especially, I looked at it this morning, and I, you know, I'm kind of going through, and um, you know, you got I, I think Aaron's in seventh, Kevin's in twelfth, but you look at all those names around them. A lot of people under 30 years old are just new to the sport. Um, it, it is amazing. But the one thing that screams to me this week is angler of the year isn't one here you, you know you're we right. keep talking about how can josh make up those points on justin lucas and you look at his schedule and it just you know we're talking we get down we talk about eight and seven and six points and you think of how hard it is for josh to make up those points on lucas here today and i don't even believe mathematically he could even if he wins but it's so much easier. You win Angler of the Year on your bad finishes. As crazy as that sounds, think about it. Justin Lucas had had won this year. Uh, he's made five cuts. This is his fifth Sunday cut. Unbelievable. Four, the last four in a row he's made. He had one earlier in the year where he finished 13th, so it should have been six cuts, basically. But you look at it, he's got a 70 in there. And if you think about those 8 to 10 points, it is so much easier to make up those eight to ten points on that bad finish. That you know, in that 70th place finish, that could have been an 80th place finish. It might have been just one bite in that bad tournament. We all highlight the ones where they win and they get the maximum points, but really just making up those points earlier in the season, you know, that's what wins this angler of the year. It comes down to 10, 20 points at the end of the year. Well, Dave, thank you so much. Good analysis there from a guy who's been there for each and every day of this 2018 season. Been with the anglers out there. Dave Mercer, our MC for all of our Bassmaster Elite Series events and the Classic. And so uh, his insight, very valuable out there as we take a look forward. But right now, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. We've got a whale of a tournament going on right now and a heck of a day for Justin Lucas. Of course, the other man on top of those standings Dave was just talking about where he reminded us you do not win that award here that's, that's a good point you're not going to win it here on the St. Lawrence and this was just moments ago Josh Bertrand so I just lost Same size, three and I'd say three and three quarters. Oh, those Look are beautiful fish. That, Look He's color. cool looking, isn't he? he? Looks like a tiger, man. Look at that thing. I hate to let him go. Fights like a tiger, too. Looking for those little scars that Dave was talking about there. We're going to have to hold him more still than that, probably, to catch those. Plus, he had a lot of camouflage going there. Beautiful fish, big fish. Extraordinary small mouth on just an unbelievable place. Living the dream out here on the final day of the season, and we got a whole lot more to come. We'll take a break and be right back.
I grew up in a, in a really small town, Donald, South Carolina, born and raised there. I mean, there's nothing there. It just used to be a gas station, a little restaurant. You had to make your own fun. So the outdoors is where you turn to do that. So we rabbit hunted some days when we wasn't fishing. Uh, I had coon dogs. We coon hunted six nights a week, even after football practice and basketball practice. So I was a big outdoorsman. Any, anything outdoors, that's what I wanted to do. And I mean, the, the only job I've ever had, I worked on a farm. I couldn't see myself sitting in an office or doing anything else inside. I had to be outside. It was just, I loved outdoors. But I caught my first bass when I was four. And man, it just it lit a fire in me that's never been put out. All I ever wanted to do was fish, fish, and fish all my life. And that's the thing about what we do as far as in the fishing world. You're playing the game against the outdoors. And that's, to me, that's what it's all about. But music is a, is a big part of my life. There's something in music to me that just, when you're having a bad day, when the situations aren't going your way, there's something there that can fix that in music. And, and that's what I, that's how I tie to it. I'm Casey Ashley, and I depend on Firestone Tires. The Hook Bassmaster Elite at St. Lawrence River, presented by Black Velvet, is brought to you by Skeeter Boats. Yamaha, Power Pole, Hummingbird, Nitro Boats, and by Abu Garcia. is just such a phenomenal fishery. It's one of the greatest places we get to go. What an awesome fishery. I just can't, you know, say enough about this place, guys. It's, it's really, really good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> New York could easily be a second home to me. Come on, let me get you. generations, anglers from across the globe have put their trust in Abu Garcia because out here on the water, we know our science is your religion. Fish like a fanatic with the latest generation of Revo, featuring up to 24 pounds of max drag, designed for leverage and power, built on corrosion resistance and comfort. World-class adventure awaits with Revo, Abu Garcia for life. What's your biggest strength? You got jig skipping skills? Can you tie a double uni? Product planning? Oh my goodness. I ain't got a resume, but I do have this. You're hired! See more office antics at teamgtfishing.com.
239 days on the water. With an average tournament day of eight hours, that's 1,912 hours of fishing. Averaging 60 miles per hour, you covered 12,300 miles. That's 102,420 minutes with a rod in your hand. Averaging four casts per minute, that's just shy of 410,000 chances at a bite. But numbers are the foundation. The results are up to you. Fishing just got easier, and it didn't cost you a thing. Free feature upgrades from Lowrance. Fish Reveal delivers the best of chirp sonar and downscan imaging, all on one screen, and it's going to help you find more fish. High visibility color sonar take high contrast imaging to a whole new level. It delivers the absolute best views of structure. Fish like to hide there, but their hiding days are over. These features are ready to roll when you are. Just upgrade your HDS Carbon software. There's a reason I escape to the water for over 200 days a year. It's not only my passion and my job, it's my life. The work and the miles that I put in traveling across this country have prepared me for this sport. Because after thousands of casts, eventually I will find the water. Toyota, let's go places. Bass Live is being brought to you by Bully Dog. Today and all week here on Bassmaster Live. Yeah, it's a big tournament. It's a big time tournament. Important tournament, but it's also like getting to ride along on one of the greatest fishing trips of a lifetime. It's just a phenomenal experience here. On the St. Lawrence River, we're coming down to the wire, though. This is Championship Sunday. Take a look at how close this race is right now. Brandon Lester, our current leader. He's getting up close to 92 pounds already, also busting 90 pounds. Josh Bertrand sitting in second place and just ounces behind is Justin Lucas, third place. Just incredible, incredible championship Sunday. This tournament has been, been so fun to watch and to see these anglers catch these big smallmouth consistently over 20-pound bags. And, and they're going to do it today. I'm saying it's going to take the... 25-pound bag to, to decide the winner. I'm today. with you on that, absolutely. Brandon Lester, one of the guys trying to get there. He said that's what it's going to take, and this was while we were away, we were away from Brandon Lester. There he is. Get rid of that two-pounder. Oh, I'm so glad he's weighing these for us. Yeah. <laughs> he said he's got a two pounder in the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Two and a half. Uh, half a pound's half a pound. Just joining us, Brandon Lester started off our show with his uh, first big keeper catch of the day at six pounds and a, and a third and a quarter. Go back in there and grow up. Yeah, I'll take it. Similar to what you were, we were talking with Dave Mercer about, not winning the AOI today, it's the whole season. And uh, you don't necessarily win the tournament in the final hour of the final day, but boy, the first hour for Brandon Lester set him up well to be able to 
have a chance to win this tournament with a six and a quarter and a five and a half. I mean, as, as far as a mood elevator goes, that's one that la that's a pill that lasts a long time, right there. <laughs> They're down there. You just got to put it right in front of their face. That was be the one. I did too. I thought it was a lot bigger than what it was. I thought it was a. Oh yeah. I mean, I thought it was at least a three pounder. But... So Brandon Lester, like he said, half a pound's a half a half pound. A pound definitely. Could be an ounce or two that decides the final outcome today. When we hit three o'clock Eastern time and. Crank up the way in. We'll have that for you right here on Bassmaster.com. We're going to take our customary midday break here in about 20 minutes. We got three more full hours of Bassmaster Live to take you up to weigh in time. A lake where it can happen anytime, anywhere. So, Ronnie, Brandon Lester and, and Justin Lucas were only about a half pound apart this morning. Both of them down yeah. about two and two and a half pounds. It was Lucas was down by two pounds, two ounces, and uh, Lester was just five ounces behind two him, so back, two yeah. seven back. Oh, yeah, okay. but they were yeah they're only five ounces apart or so. So yeah. I, I agreed a hundred percent when I heard Brandon Lester say this morning, twenty five pounds was his target weight, and he didn't say I will win, but he said gives me a little a legitimate chance. shot, a, a legitimate shot, a chance. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree with what he said a hundred percent, but he or Justin Lucas, either one, could catch that today, and I would think they would have a great feeling that they they've got this thing in the bag that they want it. But I, I really think both of them might get there at that point and one of them not win. That would that would be heartbreaking. Mm. That would be heartbreaking. Yeah. If well, Lucas you, big, got his biggest bag of the week at 24-something and loses by a uh, dead fish penalty. I mean, or, they're headed uh, that way. Yeah. We've got a lot of fish. Yeah. It's 943, 1043 <laughs> there, but they've got over four hours Four left. hours yeah. of fishing, and, I mean, they're headed towards 25 pounds, and they both might get there and one of them not win. And, and let's one, not forget about Josh Bertrand. No, and, no, no. And David <laughs> Walker. Might third. David Walker could totally. Yes, yes. Uh, You know, he's been consistent the last two days. The he had that giant. Really. He had the one giant bag. None of these other guys have had that giant, giant bag. Okay. So he already had that money in the bank. Another 22 or 23 would keep him right there neck and neck. It, I th yeah, are you saying we're going to have to do four recaps? That's why I don't like these slugfests. <laughs> That's why I don't like these slugfests. I'm trying. Yeah. You don't like it. <laughs> you catch this. 25 and not win. I'm just kidding. Totally just kidding. We've already got two people unofficially broken. Yeah, a little bit. Broken Kevin's 90 pounds here from last year. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And Lucas is low on Bass Track, so he's already broken too. So we'll just say three already have broken that 90 mark. Okay, half watch, a pound. Watching weigh in yesterday, I heard Kevin say this is an historic tournament. This yeah. is oh, the yeah. like, greatest small. I think I mean, he, he called he it the greatest smallmouth history, uh, smallmouth tournament in the history of man. I think yeah, that was the quote. Of man. Yeah, exactly. After he what won with 90 pounds here last year, yeah. it was a pretty impressive tournament. But it's unbelievable. It really is. Now, not we don't have time to start the full blown debate right now. We sure do that this afternoon. What would be those who would object to that? What would be their point, Ronnie? What what what, what would they? Which tournaments? And I suspect I know which ones they are. They would hold up as being as good or maybe better if you look at it a certain way. So I was talking about it with Steve Wright, and we were looking at what viewers said. Gosh darn it! Mm. Lester missed one. But with Steve Wright, we were talking about Malax, and I was kind of comparing some numbers, and I'll read what I sent to him. There was obviously a three-day event at Mille Lacs for AOI. Only 50 guys fished it. Just prefacing it with that. I think he's little. Hold that thought. He's actually bigger than the littlest one in there, but which is sad. It's just a mini cannonball when it splashed. But, hey, good news. Maybe we found a little stretch. Got some biters on it. 
I'm actually going to get rid of one with that. Can you believe that? I think. Um, it's just all the same little nothings. That's terrible. I think I'll get rid of that one. Just because he's been in there a while. Same little old fish. Nothing. Slow stretch for David Walker and two pounders. He's got plenty. He can even just refresh his two pounders if he <laughs> likes. Have you ever seen this? Is the worst. There. He's been consistent this week, and let's not forget the first day he had a 6'6, six, 6'4, six, 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 something like six, that. 6'7. Six, 6'7. Seven. Six, seven. So, big he caught one of those and, would change everything yeah. for him today. And then he caught a six on day two in front of us. Remember that giant right. that he caught to start his day? Or it was his first big call or something like that, yeah. So basically, Tommy, to get smallmouth comparison, Malax, both 2017 and 16, had different facets you can compare. 2017 most recent, Keith Combs won three days, 72.5. That's exactly the weight David Walker had leading after three days here. So that, that weight was the same. Fighter obviously won in 2016 with 76.5. So his three-day total was four pounds heavier than, than the three-day. And leading. three days yes. he was on track for 100 pounds yes. is what the argument was. And then, um, But second place that year, Fighter won with that big weight was only 69 pounds. So it was much lower than the top five necessarily here this week. 23-pound average. And then um, James Elam finished second last year, 70 pounds, 11 ounces, which have, would have put him in third or fourth this week after three days. But the, here's the number. 25 guys had 60 pounds for three days, a 20-pound average. 25 guys at Mille Lacs the second year. The first year it was only 24. This week, 31 guys had 60 pounds or more. So... And I'm not saying Mille Lacs couldn't handle it, but put 107 guys for three days of practice, yeah, two point. days of the tournament. Yeah. You're, it, it's a much smaller fishery than the St. Lawrence, even if it's a giant yeah, one in, in Minnesota. Scale here is bigger. Yes. So do. Yeah, we're trying to get shed up a two and a half and a three and a quarter. Yep. Yeah, we got a two and a half and we got a three and a quarter, and they both need to go. Replace both of them with four pluses. Or bigger. Be a bag. Yeah. <clears throat> Can you do this anywhere in Tennessee? You know, Tennessee is, is sort of known for smallmouth fishing. Everybody's heard of Dale Hollow and all that, but the Tennessee River, obviously, you know, Pickwick Lake, Wilson Lake. Of course, those are in Alabama, but they're close to my house. I grew up fishing Wheeler, Wilson, Pickwick, all, all those, really. I mean, they're within a couple of hours of my house. Um, but it's totally different back home, though. We don't, we don't really fish this way. I mean, the way they relate to the current is the same, but as far as the super clear water and the drop shotting and all that, it's totally different. Walker retying. Rick Morris down there at the bottom right. Still only two keepers, yet the story on him, only five all day. Only five yesterday. all day. Said he only had three with an hour and a half to go yesterday. So he's he's right along schedule. Yeah. He may be a little ahead of schedule. Uh, and then not because he lost a lot of fish. So watching weigh in yesterday with Dave Mercer. Heard a lot of guys that didn't have the weights they wanted because they lost some good fish. And Rick Morris said, no, it wasn't that. I'd, I'm not losing fish. The way I'm fishing, you don't lose as many, and I agree that Carolina rig with the mm -hmm. no weight there around the hook is, is the landing percentage is real high. But just fishing for bigger fish, using diff a different technique, and I still think that was a lizard he had on earlier. I, <laughs> we didn't get a close look at it. Maybe we will a little later. Huh? Yeah, I asked if that was a lizard. <laughs> well, we've got three in the boat. 
One of them's a big one, five pounder. The other two, they're gonna have to go. I had two other really big fish on them, but they both came off. I didn't get to see them, but I could tell how big they are. There's a lull in the bite for me right now. Same thing that happens every day. And then usually after 12, it'll pick back up. So I'm plenty confident I'm gonna get a couple more big bites. And, you know, I should break 20 pounds. Obviously I want 25, so I got one five pounder. I need four more fives. So I'm just gonna stick with it and stick in the area, stay in the rock. And what happens, happens. And Lester hooked up there, doesn't look like a big one though. Nope. Rick Morris corrected us there. He's got three, three in the box right now. Yeah. Fast Track has got him with two. He's ahead of schedule. He, he is. is. He is. Confident of getting 20 pounds. It's worked out for him the previous three days. That's patience there. He said he was around people all week to catching a lot more fish than him, a lot of two and three pounders. And he said he knew those were not ones that even mattered. That, Waste, that, wasting your time for the most part catching two and three pounders. You got to be an old hand at the game to oh, sit there and geez. watch somebody do that while you're catching them one every two hours. Yeah. Well, what, like the same thing? Yeah. All right, well, it's almost 11 o'clock and I've only got three in the boat. We have to leave here about quarter after two to get back if the wind doesn't pick up anymore. I've got one big five pounder. The other two aren't very big. Lost a couple big ones. I feel pretty feel confident that I'm still going to get a couple more big bites. Still feel confident I'm going to break 20 pounds. But obviously I'd like to have four more five pounders. So just going to keep fishing really hard for the next two and a half to three hours. I think that's about all we got left three hours, but that's plenty of time to hit 25 pounds. So just staying in these little rock piles, fishing really thorough, try to trigger a couple big bites and try to keep them on next time. Oh, Rick was asked to do a take two right there. He was. He but we heard it all the first time, but, but it improved his outlook. He was good talking 20 <laughs> pounds the first time. And if anything, the hair looked better the second time <laughs> than it did the first time. So it was worth it. He mentioned both times though, and in, in talking with him last night, he. Did a lot of graphing like a lot of guys here during practice and finding little rock piles and he's making cast to them. That's why he's using a seven and a half foot spinning rod. He's making more cast than a lot of these other guys that we've been watching that are drifting and dropping down below him. Justin Lucas talked a little bit about casting some today more than the other days. But he's been making some long casts and using this longer spinning rod for that. I did a fun story on him a few years back. He was fun fishing with his dad down in Florida and an osprey dive bombed his swim bait and grabbed it. And he said his, uh, he was reeling it in and it was flying in the air and he put his coat over it and his dad wouldn't touch it. He took a couple pictures though, but the, the osprey got real calm and he, and he said the hook was just in its, in its leg, not real bad, he got it out. The talons were in his mesh of his coat though. That was the hardest part getting out. Then he released it. He said it flew off, kind of shook away like what the heck was that and took off and was fine. Wow. And he got his bait back. Wow. What a story. It's like a well, it was Paul Bunyan story or something <laughs> right there. Oh, there's pictures of him holding this Osprey in his arm with his jacket around it. I like when Suge tells stories. He's a, uh, he's a master storyteller. Oh, yeah, Obviously, right. so is Rick Morris. That was the story of the weirdest things you've ever caught. I had a big long feature on that. Was that the favorite, favorite uh, item? The from favorite that one? bird item. People have caught, you know, seagulls and, and ducks and all kinds of crazy things. <laughs> I haven't caught. I, it is a bird, but I caught a goose. I made a cast, and they decided to fly right when my line was flying over them. Braided line hooked around one of their feet or wings. I could not click my bail open quick enough, and that thing, you know how Bray doesn't break easy, but it was like a shotgun inside the rod when it finally broke, because yeah. I couldn't undo it from the goose. So, it was a goose flying around, around with undo it from 65. The goose. <laughs> he didn't want to leave a bird with, you know, line tangling up from it. The other stories was a 
crazy one was a guy hooked a, a beaver and up on the upper Mississippi, a coyote grabbed a guy's frog out of the grass and they had to reel it into the, it kind of whimpered as it grabbed onto the, the motor cowling back. They pulled it out of its lip and, and they eased the boat back to the shore and it got off and it got on land, shook itself off, looked at him and went back in the woods. I'm the taking notes of these stories. Mean, the beaver was mad to get uh, hooked. <laughs> well, it was I can imagine. my guy's boat and scared the heck out of him. Let's keep rolling. Have you caught a bird, Such, fishing? It's a famous Gary Shandling one. He's like, Dad, Dad, you got a bird up there. And, the, and, the, and he's reeled it in. But son, it's a good one. Lester's hooked up. And that sends the longest lull we've had all week yes. on Fastmaster Live. Another little guy. Quit. Tommy, you know, for the Rapple of Five Live we have on here today, the four pounders have been common for him. Calling a lot of four pounders. Sure. If Brandon Lesser catches a four pounder to replace that two and a half, that's that'll be, be huge. Tremendous. It'll put him at twenty-four. Just one bite, and, and like I said, it's not it's kind of hard to say this. Not asking for a lot, wanting a four pounder, but as many four pounders as we have seen this week, yeah, it's not something that we shouldn't expect. Well, could this be the fateful day for Brandon Lester of Tennessee? Looking for his first victory with the Bassmaster Elite Series. Boy, if good starts or anything, yeah, it could be a fateful day for Brandon Lester. Look at this, his second fish he catches today. Oh, in the rain before the sun's even up. Oh, come here. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Now that's the way to start God, your Sunday morning off. <laughs> Dude, I'm talking about an absolute freaking stud. Look at that thing. These giants here on the St. Lawrence are just so unique looking. Look at his expression here. Right. Here. <laughs> that's fine. That. that was the Todd Faircloth wide eyed look from St. Clair. That's a $100,000 look. Sure, that's going across his mind. Six and a quarter pounds for that one. What a start to what a way to get your limit going on Championship Sunday. There's his tournament on top. 24 pounds followed it up. Best one of day number two with 25.13. And a little bit of a drop off in production on day number three, but he broke that cycle pretty quick when we got started the yep. day. And, and I mentioned that it's in a four day event, there will be a day normally that you have to just survive. Maybe you, the current has changed, the light conditions, the water conditions, what it might be. And day three was that for Brandon Lester. He changed up totally left his area. He was fishing around Jesse Wiggins, and Jesse Wiggins struggled yesterday. He stayed with that area. So smart move on Bre Brandon Lester's part to go fish some other stuff that he had confidence in, and it might, might be the key to him winning, being able to survive day three. Although I'd say the key to his winning, if he's able to do that, is that six pound, four ounce that he started oh with this morning. Oh my gosh, what a key. And he followed it up with a five eight. That's, uh, yes. that's not uh, inconsequential either. That's, that's a big part of his story too. So is it gonna be? Brandon Lester's day. It is way, way too early yeah. to call this one. But I tell you what, you don't want to miss anything. In fact, 15 minutes from now, as we take our hour break, 15 minutes after we start the break, Ron Suits back with our Facebook Live. They did a pregame this morning before we came on, and they will be doing an update here even during the course of our break. So uh, we're going to try to keep you posted on everything. We've got three more hours of Bassmaster Live which will commence right here in exactly one hour. Thanks for joining us this Sunday, and we got plenty more on the way.
The Hook Bassmaster Elite at St. Lawrence River, presented by Black Velvet, being brought to you live by Bully Dog. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live. We got three hours looking at us right here, and we are looking at it very intently because we have been so entertained over the course of the past two days and this morning as well by this final event of the regular season on the St. Saint Lawrence River, Waddington, New York. This Hook Bassmaster Elite presented by Black Velvet. Here's a look at this tremendous fishery that is just above and beyond all expectations this week. Davey Hyde, the St. Lawrence River has kicked out the smallmouth in a big way. Look at that race at the top of the leaderboard. Those top four anglers are just into it, and I mean, it is far, far from over. Exceeding expectations, you're exactly right, Tommy. And we had great expectations coming in here. Kevin we Van did. Dam winning last year with 90 pounds. Our fourth elite series tournament here, but many, many years of history here on the St. Lawrence River through Bass's career. Ah, but holy cow, did this place impress this week. It, it has been absolutely incredible. And we have three more hours of of fishing and it will be three of the best i guarantee you because unlike the other days the the better fishermen the guys that were top of the leaderboard justin lucas yesterday the day before that brandon lester they backed off of their fish in the afternoon and not going to do that today it's hammered down all day long and it's uh this is it's the last day of school for the regular yes. season but nobody's cutting class today unless they were made <laughs> to cut class after the big cut yesterday 12 anglers left in it on this final day so many sub stories working right now and what we have seen this morning including brandon and Lester kicking it off with, oh my. with a six plus to get his day, but to get his effort back on track after catching only 19 pounds. Only 19. Only 19 pounds. It's, ama it's amazing how the goalposts move around yeah. when you, when you the, get to these things. The thing is so important. You mentioned him catching that six four to start the morning and then caught a five five after that. Justin Lucas is having a great day. We certainly expect Josh Bertrand and David Walker to continue what they've been doing all week. But for him to start the day with a 6'4 and a 5.5 pounder, those are game changers. He might not catch as many fish as some of these anglers, but the two, like Ronnie Moore mentioned earlier, the two that are hardest to catch, those 5.5, and 6.25, and he had in his live well early this morning. Absolutely. Davey Height right here. I'm Tommy Sanders. Welcome back to the Toyota Bassmaster Studios for the three hours of Bassmaster Live we have on the way to wrap up the regular season. Also in the house, we got Such and Ronnie, Mike Sukon, and Ronnie Moore. And, and guys, it's just beyond everything. Thing we could have hoped for on this day in terms of stories, in terms of drama, in terms of tight competition and great fish catching. It's basically like we set a record, broke all the other records, and now we're just seeing how far we can set that record. You know, we had a bunch of 20 pound bags. 48 was the record for four days of competition here. We had 52 on day one, another 30 something, and then another 20 something. We're just going to push it up today. Maybe half the top 12 or even more will get it. Four I'm already over 20 pounds. And the leader leaders have been going back and forth, and we're going to see who's going to get that 25, 26 pound bag to win. Absolutely. Sometimes we have a tournament where you just want to survive till the end, be the last man standing. No, you you got to keep pushing the boundaries out all the way through the end of this one, and that's the ideal situation. It's the ideal situation. Uh, we heard announced yesterday we're going to be back here for several more years. Everyone's excited about that. I wish we had nine of these per year. I mean, oh this is God. an incredible venue. The crowds are in Waddington are are like no other. The fishing is phenomenal. We've had good coverage of the of the anglers. It's just the perfect place for a bass tournament. Like you said, a history-making event. Let's catch you up with the history that we have had today, this morning on the Toyota Midday Report. And we started out with our Rapala top Five Live, our five top anglers at the finish of uh, competition on day number three, including Rick Morris back in the Bassmaster Elite Series this week. And Rick Morris, who, Davey, is catching five fish a day. I mean, that's amazing. It's amazing. Talking to Rick last night, he said, I only had five bites yesterday, and I only had three bites with an hour and a half left to go. I got those two other bites. Fortunately for Rick, a lot of those fish have been four and a half to five and a half pounds. We talked to him just before the midday break. He only had three fish, but he was still very confident that he was going to have 20 pounds by the time it was uh, 3 o'clock time to check them in. Rick Moore, super, super consistent, solid all the way through this tournament with 22-4 on day number one. 22-4 on day number You don't get much more solid than that. And 23-3 to up his game a little bit and gain the top 12 and the top five, as a matter of fact, 
after three days of fishing. Here's a guy, David Walker, who has been either first and second until today for the for the length of this tournament. He's fell back a little bit this morning, like you said, first or second all week long, but I still expect good things from David Walker this afternoon. He, he came in yesterday with a little more. I think he had a flurry very late in the day. He had uh, came in and had more weight than we thought he did yesterday. Would not surprise me to see that again today. Been very consistent all week. And I just have to say, I've enjoyed listening to David Walker laugh because when he catches <laughs> these five and six pounders, he just laughs and, and hooking, he hooks up on them quite often and yeah. just been a joy to, to be in the boat with David Walker this week. Yeah, yeah David, only one point at this thing did he say, wow, I haven't caught a fish in a while, it's starting to feel like a tournament. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he did say that. He did say that because the first few days for him, it was just a slugfest. He would just catch him, catch him, catch him. An appropriate final event of the regular season for Josh Bertrand, doing well here as he has done just about everywhere throughout the course of this season. Just a magnificent season for an angler who seems to get better and better with each passing year. And now he's in at the race for Toyota uh, Bassmaster Angler of the Year. I couldn't agree with you any more, Tommy Sanders. He is a, a great angler. You could see he was one of those guys that just had the it. Uh, when I was fishing the Elite Series and he came on on the scene, you could tell very focused, very determined, bright young man, and he has certainly come in his own the last few years. This year especially, we've had him on, on Bass Live several times, and he's so thorough in, in his fishing and in evaluating situations, when to move, when to change techniques, that sort of thing, just doing a great job. And, and this tournament here is far from over. Josh Bertrand could certainly win this thing. He's got more areas that he's been able to catch fish in each and every day uh, and that could pay off on the final day you would hope so that having those extra areas to fish and catch fish would would pay off for him on the final day the final afternoon when some other people have really been bearing down on those fish for four straight days keen strategy keen strategist there and a, a great student of the game sort of become a teacher of the game this year for a lot of us because we followed him so much on Bassmaster Life you could say the same thing about this young man right here Justin Lucas he's a Year in and year out, for the most part, he's always there, standing at the, near the top of all the standings at the end of the season, and he stands atop unofficially right now. Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year, and today, well, he showed, he showed us some great stuff yesterday, and he appears to be doing it again today. Oh, he's been doing great. He said, I came into this tournament, based my practice and fishing in the tournament, trying to fish a little deeper than everyone else. There were people, a lot of these fishermen were fishing between 23 and about 30 feet deep. Justin Lucas has been focusing 40 to 45, even 47 feet deep. Fishing out a little deeper, not catching quite as many fish as some of the other guys, but you see here, quality fish for Justin Lucas. And just very similar to Josh Bertrand, here's a guy, the first his first year out on the League Series, I saw him, I recognized determination, focus, uh, somebody, a young, intelligent person that I knew was going to be one of the stars of the sport, and he has certainly been that. Absolutely, has, has been a monster in this tournament. Check it out, 23-12 on day one, 23 Three pounds on day two, 23-7 on day number three, and he knows he knows the drill today. Catch 25. He's well on his way. Yeah, he well backed off of his fish yesterday and had had that weight, and today uh, he knows that 25 is is the number that could give him a great chance to win. The thing that's interesting, yesterday when we were talking to him while he was fishing, and last night when I talked to him on the phone, I feel like there's a seven pounder in the area where I'm catching these four and a half to five and a half pound fish. I truly feel like there's a seven pounder there to be caught, and that would be the game changer. All right, Bass Track has Justin Lucas right now, 21 pounds and six ounces. We all think that's quite possibly a good bit low, too. I, I think uh, Bass Track is a little low with all of these these top few guys, which equals out. I mean, it's all relative, so yeah. I think Brandon Lester might have a little more than that. I think Justin Lucas might have a little more than that also. Justin Lucas has been uh, in the right place at the right time on multiple occasions in the last few days. I'll take a look now at something. While we were away, some of the fish catches from while we were on our break at midday. He's just not stopping. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> he's feeling, he's smelling a victory. Oh, absolutely. He really is. You can tell it's Championship Sunday. He said it's, it may be going down right here and right now, but boy, looked like it was uh, going to be catch up time for Brandon Lester to start this day and catch up as what he did with a single fish. In a hurry. These are the game changers. All of these Rapala 5 Live had a chance we knew coming in, even though it was a little tougher for the guys that were two and three pounds behind. 
But that is a game changer right there. That put him right up there with the leaders. And you can tell Brandon Lesser knows that. When he caught that fish this morning, he knew he was right in the, right in the mix of things. Showers in the area to get started on this day. And uh, they've pretty much cleared out now, but uh, could be back again this afternoon. But uh, that was very early, as you can see. And six to it. Giant bass. Brandon Lester. And then right after that, oh look at this God. fish. <laughs> Just another beautiful small mouth. Not 6'2, but a five pounder. Five and a half, I think it was. Actually. Five and a half, five eight for that one right there for Brandon Lester. And Come here, mate. Yes. He used to fill out his limit, but he's still got a couple of smaller ones in there and plenty of room to to add to that weight he's got right now. Yep. On day two, he caught his fish in this area. He backed off of them a little bit, thinking that he would have a great day there yesterday. Things were much slower in this area. Different current change uh, made things much slower. He had to go to plan B yesterday. He was able to hang in there, and today it's happening again in the same area. Look at these guys in a raffle of five live, how tight the competition is right there. 91 pounds, 14 ounces for Brandon Lester. Just a few ounces behind is Justin Lucas, and not far behind that is uh, less than a pound behind. There we have Josh Bertrand, a little more than a pound behind, I should say. David Walker certainly has not been run off and left either. Rick Morris having a little bit of a slow day, but Rick Morris again only catching five keepers during the course of the day. so. Uh, he may not even reach the half po halfway point yet. He, he did not he, seem worried when we were talking with him just before the midday break. He felt confident, hey, I'm going to catch five, and I think I'll have 20 pounds, hopefully 25. All those scores are current, according to Bass Track right there. We want to show you something right now. This was just moments ago with Justin Lucas. Come here. Oh, dude. Oh, man. Come here. That's definitely going to help. Oh, my gosh. Woo. Got you! Yes. Now that's our small one, and that's got to be pushing forward, dude. Got to be. I'd say that's a four pounder. Four pounder. He's got a 314, according to Bass Track, in the live well right now, so. I think that one's a little over four. Two, three, Could four. be as much as a half pound upgrade, yeah, you think, David? Right yes. We knew he had. We knew he had a good area yesterday. He he backed off of them after he made those five drifts that we'll never forget. Five five drifts in a row. He he caught four and a half to five and a quarter pound fish. And, uh, he's back on that same area. And he's not going not going to leave it today until about. 250. <laughs> Hummingbird lay of the lake. If you're just joining up with us here, this place has been absolutely on fire. We, we hear Justin many times today, my spots are on fire. The whole lake has been on fire this week and such an experience for all the, the greatest anglers in the world and a pleasure to watch him operate on these 100 miles of the St. Lawrence River from Messina, New York on upstream to the mouth of Lake Ontario. And a lot of current. Uh, weather today, a, a few changes, but nothing that's just super dramatic. We do have a bit more wind today, and we see how our Rapala of Five Live are distributed all up and down this waterway. About 100 miles of fishable water you see there along the St. Lawrence River, and they are using almost every bit of it. It's, it's amazing how spread out they are. It's only 12 fishermen on the river today. They've got lots of room, obviously. But it just shows what a great fishery this is, a 100-mile stretch of the river in any section of it. You have a chance to catch a 25-pound stringer of smallmouth bass. Fourth time the Bassmaster Elite Series has been to Waddington and the St. Lawrence River. 
and we've had a great tournament each and every time. Great crowds each and every time. A very uh, bass savvy culture up here in northern New York State, and also the folks just across the river in Canada. Well attended, the best attended. Year in and year out of of, uh, of all our events. It, I Sabine's that. a close second, but uh, Sabine's a close second. But I heard the anglers yesterday, and they have high expectations for what it's in New York. The crowds and the festivities they have at the weigh-ins. I heard so many anglers yesterday that had been there all the other times before, really complimenting how great the crowds were. So they were so certainly impressive yesterday. Amaz amazing for a town of about 900. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's it, the incredible thing. You drive there, I've done it multiple times, and you say, where do these people come from? Exactly. <laughs> What's bad is if you don't get there by noon, there's a mile or two of cars on each side of the road parked that you've got to park behind and walk all the way to the Solution, way. Solution, build the Bassmaster Causeway. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, over the land, coming. above everything else, and you can just take an exit right down into the way. Tommy, why are you working here if you have these ideas like that? I mean, you should be far better places. I wonder how much the, it has The governor to... isn't paying attention to me <laughs> listening right now. Well, they have to raise the taxes in a town of 900 to be able to Causeway? <laughs> <laughs> a good bit, unfortunately. That's that's a downside. We don't want to dwell on that. Yeah, that's not thinking about yeah. paying for it. <laughs> Great idea, though. Hey, if we're going to be there for the next four years. Yeah, Ronnie, don't you uh, encourage us. Tommy to move on here. We, we see what you're trying to do. <laughs> Why yeah. does everybody do that? What's Me it? and you were nice. That everybody's thinking I'm trying to make you, like, leave to go be the governor. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Gosh. Didn't poison your drink the other yeah, that's right. tournament. Yeah. I have I have had my shot and maybe Governor Cuomo has too. We'll just have to see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think you might be right. Move on to bigger and better things. Hard to slow down. It's like I keep using the The governor made his appearance here multiple times before to promote the fishing in New York State. We sure appreciate all those great efforts and the, the recognition of what a great hunting and fishing state the state of New York is. I have to admit, like a, other, a lot of other people growing up in other states, New York, if you've never been there and experienced the hunting and fishing, you wouldn't necessarily think that of being one of the great destinations, but it absolutely is. Just last week, I drove to Plattsburgh, New York, a long way from where I live in South Carolina, because it's the best fishing, in my opinion, that, that area of the country in the month of August. It's just phenomenal. Going to be a move here for Brandon Luke. Uh, for, uh, Brandon Lester, for sure. A little different looking place here for him than I've seen. Oh, no, maybe this is a, we'll see. You said yesterday one of these guys might have something that they've held back on to try to make it today and use it. Yeah, this is a different spot that I'm pretty sure than we've seen him fish. All four of these fishermen know that they've got a shot to win this thing, but you can sense the body language with Justin Lucas and Brandon Lester. Justin really thinks he's right there, and he is. But Brandon Lester desperately needs to get rid of at least one of those two small fish he's got in, in there. And if Lester got rid of most of his small ones, I know he didn't have a big bag, but 19 and change isn't, isn't terrible. He had a couple good ones yesterday, but he did that just fishing bridges and stuff that wasn't firing. Right. You know, he definitely will mm -hmm. last it out for just two more bites today. I say that the body language, uh, aye, aye. but. Josh Bertrand is such a cool customer. I mean, he, oh. he could be right on the You know the wheels are turning upstairs. Yeah. No matter what his body language is, you know the wheels are turning upstairs. I'll never forget when that fish was stripping drag. He said, it's a nice one, but that's excessive. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> I wish I could have been that cool on the job. Oh, man. Lucas is saying his weight. Yeah. Lucas just yelled to the other boat. They said, what do you have? And he said, I haven't weighed any I of them. I got some but freaking I think pigs in there. It just depends how much they weigh. Yeah.
Hey, and it's worth mentioning that the cameraman, as much as we love him, the guy with Lucas was with Ish, and I'm just Ish thinking was I need really low on Mississippi River. I'm still waiting on my seven pounder that I want, but I think one more good bite, man, and we might, we'll at least have a chance. I feel like right now, eh, we probably don't have a chance, but I got one four, four pounder in there I need to get rid of for something big. Oh, okay. All right. I at least don't think I'll be finishing any lower than third. I will say that. If I do, that person deserves it. And we're about to run back to where I've caught a couple big ones today because we haven't hit it in a couple. Cormoranty, gobies? That's the question. I will bet yeah, they do. slowed down a little. Not getting many bites right now, but I went back to the area where I caught those two great big ones this morning, and I'm just trying a couple of drifts that I hadn't fished all week, just trying to, trying to find one that maybe hadn't seen a bait. Is mainly what I'm doing. I know there's a lot of big fish just right in this little general area. Basically, just about every big one I've weighed in this week's come from right in here. I'm gonna stick right in here for a little while. And I'm gonna go back and fish the place where I caught that four and a half a couple hours ago for sure. And I've got about three bridge columns that I'll probably fish where I caught a four and a half yesterday. Um, and I feel like I'm two bites away, you know. So we'll see how it goes. Number one and number two here. I don't know which one's one, which one's two, but, but <laughs> interesting, they both have the same assessment of the situation. I'm two bites away from it. Yep. getting it done. I just noticed David Walker jogging up to the trolling motor. You can see all these guys know that it's, it's getting down to the wire and they're one or two bites away. Had to be exhausted after fishing all week, you know, starting practice on Monday morning. But Bobby Lane put it well. You look forward to getting up at four o'clock in the morning here the way this oh, fishing absolutely. is. Absolutely. Far worse places to wake up and go fish. Oh yes. yeah. What's more tiring, grinding out seven pounds in, in ninety-eight degrees yeah. or uh or catching about twenty-six pounds of smallmouth out here, seventy-five degrees. Each of them difficult in their own yeah, each of them takes a go, lot of energy. I, I would go with uh, catching 30 smallmouth. Both are equally helpless. When you're catching 17, 18 pounds, and you're catching them, catching them, and you're like, none of these are helping, and I'm just setting the hook for nothing. I'm about to be 88th place, you know. What was, like, I don't know, I'm guessing 70th place weight-wise? Because it's going to be sad. After two days? Yes. Oh, 70th after two days was... 35-3. Yeah, that's so 17 and 17 a half a day. Pounds, 17 pounds, 17 and a half a day, and just, oh, how so frustrating that would be. So Jonathan Van Dam was the first one to miss the cut, 38-5. So that's 19 pounds and two ounces a day, roughly. See ya. Bye. Yeah, that's sad. <laughs> At how much energy is exerted. I remember the story we did with, uh, oh, Ken Hoover. And he studied like Peter T. and uh, Aaron Martin, burned 5,800 calories a day on Lake Gunnersville throwing a spinnerbait. So being out on the water and fishing, it's, it's a good amount of calories. Absolutely. Almost 6,000 calories in one day. That's basically what a sled dog burns running the Iditarod. Well, yeah, that's a lot. A racer in one day of it. Yeah. Tommy, one day. In my 22 years out there fishing Bassmaster Trail, I felt like a sled dog many days. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And not the front one either, <laughs> not right? Not the front one either. 
<laughs> Luckily, you I had never a few changes. days where I might have been in the front, but most <laughs> days I definitely not in the front. <laughs> That's that's why these guys can sit there and eat a big old plate of lobster. You've seen that this week. I did see that. I did see that. It's like a storm trying to brew up. The winds pick back up and I see those clouds. So it looks a little, uh, a little bit of a disturbance down there. Looking down the top 12, Suits, Ronnie, Mike McClellan, and Keith Combs, they they both needed high finishes here. Keith to, Combs to got that. himself in the top 50 AOI he's points. He's, he's, he's 46, and he knocked out Lester to 51st. McClellan, though, is 54th right now, and he'd have to gain three spots from eight to pass Drew Benton in 53rd and get right, right behind Marty side. Robinson I'll just, I'll just, in the AOI points, which, which is fine, but if it does bump to... 53rd for Benton, it'll bump to 54th to McClellan. So even if he doesn't, that's the best person to be in front of him is Benton because okay. right, they won't, he won't take a spot in that bracket, the classic bracket order. Guessing it's going to go down a couple spots beyond 51 or 2. Classic bracket different this year if you weren't with us yesterday. Talked about how it's been expanded. Three spots in the classic available through the bracket competition. Have instead of eight, 16. We'll be qualified to fish that tournament, which starts as a yep. 16 angler tournament and goes into bracketed competition for three spots. One and with McClellan, he rose from 70th before this event started in AOI points to get in possibility of making the bracket. And like you were saying, he may not fish AOI championship, but he may get invited to the bracket, which kind of be odd coming there. It would be. It'd be a Cinderella story for sure, though. Three chance in 16 to make the classic, though. That's, yeah. that's about the best odds you're going to find at any level. Yeah. And there are a couple people that have a chance as well. Jared Littner, he's 34th in AOI. He's also in the top of the open standings, so he could punch a ticket via the open championship, which could help himself if he falls at Chattooga or double qualify him if he, if he secures mm -hmm. it next month. But then also in the centrals, Brock Mosley, who's not in the classic cut, is at 13th in points. They still have a regular season event at Logan Martin. If he gets in the top 10, he'll go to the Open Championship, have a shot there as well. So we'll definitely write a blog out and then in the next week or so explaining exactly the names and what you should be looking for. Yeah, Lesser can get right in the classic. Hooked up right now. See that fish jump. I saw the splash right as it went in the water, but just looking at his body language, I think it's a good one. I don't think he helps. He's got a 212 in the boat, so. fish spot. I expect him to be big. Dang. Two and three quarter. Bertrand back to the drawing board. Knows he's around a big fish spot. He might stick around for a, a few more casts. A drift or two. Great tight competition. The final day of the regular season 2018. Still got plenty of Bassmaster Live left for you and me and everyone else out there who enjoys catching good smallmouth. But Justin Lucas 
just bolstered his lead in a big way, trying to move away from the rest of the crowd. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come right back. The Hook Bassmaster Elite at St. Lawrence River, presented by Black Velvet, is brought to you by Toyota, Triton Boats, Mercury, Minn Kota, Berkeley, and by Hook. is just such a phenomenal fishery. It's one of the greatest places we get to go. What an awesome fishery. I just can't, you know, say enough about this place, guys. It's, it's really, really good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> New York could easily be a second home to me. Come on, let me get you. Yeah, you ready? Weekend. Actually, Mine was unbelievable. Really? It's gotta be Ski. It barely fit on two pages and it was so big. <laughs> hey Ski, I think you left this on the copier, man. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> ski. See more office antics at teamgtfishing.com. There's a reason I escaped to the water for over 200 days a year. It's not only my passion and my job, it's my life. The work and the miles that I put in traveling across this country have prepared me for this sport. Because after thousands of casts, eventually I will find the water. Toyota, let's go places. And that's all we need. We need that quarter that we want to keep everything. Yeah? Stop working right now! Look outside. Is this spreadsheet weather? No, it's not. This is fishing weather. So stop clicking, get out there, and catch a bass. Stop what you're doing and start fishing Rapala Ripstop. Fishing just got easier, and it didn't cost you a thing. Free feature upgrades from Lowrance. Fish Reveal delivers the best of chirp sonar and downscan imaging, all on one screen, and it's going to help you find more fish. High visibility color sonar take high contrast imaging to a whole new level. It delivers the absolute best views of structure. Fish like to hide there, but their hiding days are over. These features are ready to roll when you are. Just upgrade your HDS Carbon software. Take fishing to a bold new place. Berkeley Powerbait Max Set. These baits feature a revolutionary new material that releases a supercharged scent field. They attract more fish and trigger more strikes than even original Powerbait. And all remain soft and flexible out of the package, so they're ready to fish. Ten forage inspired natural matte colors come alive in the water. Berkeley Powerbait Max Set. Fish bite and won't let go.
With an average tournament day of eight hours, that's 1,912 hours of fishing. Averaging 60 miles per hour, you covered 12,300 miles. That's 102,420 minutes with a rod in your hand. Averaging four casts per minute, that's just shy of 410,000 chances at a bite. But numbers are the foundation. The results are up to you. Bassmaster Angler of the Year! Bass Live is being brought to you by Bully Dog. There's one. Uh, we got the catching going on full speed here, yeah, and there will be no right. feet off the accelerator today. No saving fish, no managing fish. You just got to manage to get as many into the live well pounds wise as you possibly can in your five fish limit. Some great, great competition right now. Look at the top four, all over 90 pounds at this point. 93.3 of Justin Lucas. That's the leading weight right now, but. So much fishing time left, and we see how fast things can turn around out here. How fast you can really replace a couple of small fish with a couple of giants. We got a couple of the anglers, Tommy. Uh, Justin Lucas won, but his smallest fish is, oh, I'm guessing a little over four pounds. But Brandon Lester, David Walker, even Josh Bertrand, they have a couple fish in there. One in particular with all three of those guys, if they can replace with a five and a half or six pounder, it's going to change everything. Bertrand and Brandon Lester both have a two and a half in the boat, so that's that's huge. Wind getting a little more persistent as we go through the day. And more sun popping out. Seems to be. Well, you just mentioned it, and uh, while we were away, David Walker did replace the 2 1 he had in his, his uh, fast track level with a 3 14. Oh, good. It's up to 18 and three quarters or so. Climbed to third place. Just pushed ahead of Josh Bertrand. It's gonna be hard to fish the further down you get there in that open water. Yeah, it's just gonna be rough like this, you know? It's not bad for the fishing, it's just controlling the boat. TH Marine Weather Watch board right there to take a look at the temperature. 75, not as warm as it, as it was predicted to be today, although it's still some room to, to warm up there. It is cloudy as predicted. Not as much rain, I think, as we were expecting. It was supposed to end in the. Got one. We saw the storms going nope. by early, like I said. Lucas hooked up. Wind was supposed to be up above 10 miles an hour. That says 10 miles an hour. I think, it, I think it's a little bit more. I think so. When you're on the water, especially if you're around the Great Lakes, you multiply times two <laughs> the predicted wind forecast. It seems to always be. It's like an old Buick running downhill. There's nothing stopping it out here. <laughs> I saw Justin Lucas there just a few seconds ago about to set the hook. It's a little, you notice these other fishermen, they're using those nose hooks, most of them. Uh, the smaller, almost like a circle hook, or a very round bend, short shank hook. And he's using a, a different style hook, and he's, he lets, he hesitates a little bit before he sets the hook on these fish. Brandon Lesser hooked up. Big and dude. Oh my. Stay down. Stay on, baby. I ain't gonna lie, I'm nervous as a cat right now. <laughs> I'm normally a pretty calm guy. He's got a guy, two and a half in the live well, right? I'm pretty nervous right now. Two and a half exactly. Stay on, baby. 
to stay on. Fat sucker. He knows Come here, girl. He needs to get rid of that two and a half. Come here. Yes. That'll get rid of a two and a half. Not as big as I thought, but I'm gonna say three and three quarter, maybe. Yeah. That's a great estimate there. Three and three quarter. Belly. 330. How big I had that one? 330. Three and a quarter. It's a little over three and a quarter. More than like what we have. Yeah. That puts him just. Still a three quarter of a pound coal. Yes. Significant. I think we all knew, including Brandon Lester, he had to get rid of that two and a half pounds. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. And and the the quicker you get rid of the smaller fish, the less chance they're going to die on you, and you're keeping fresher fish in the live well every time you cull. They're you know ones that haven't been in the live well that long. Sure, they're out. a little bit. Probably could give that spot another try, wouldn't you say? Yep. And unofficially, that's got him within a quarter pound of Justin Lucas when we get the updates, right? Yeah. Yeah, roughly. Probably like a weird number, like seven <laughs> ounces or. Told you, I saw one down there. David Walker's hooked up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What do we got? Not that big. Not big. Dang it. Oh, just another one of those. Not going to keep that one. Needs a three pounder in order to upgrade Wider right there. And David masses. Walker doesn't really. Well, it's not going to do it. Look how dark that fish is. That's such a beautiful fish. You saw Josh Bertrand holding that fish up early. Tiger stripes. And then you'll see some that are almost black, it depends on what, what they're around on the bottom and the depth that they're living and that sort of thing, but they're beautiful fish. Yeah, you see a squad of them swimming under the boat in clear water, it's impressive. Mm -hmm. they, they, they look like a motorcycle gang down there for sure. <laughs> they do. Over two hours left on the greatest smallmouth tournament ever. It's going to go yeah. real fast for all these guys. I mean super fast. It's going to whiz by, probably for us too. Hate to see this one end. Okay. What's going on, guys? We, uh, are fighting this wind right now. It's uh, it's really really kicked up here in the last hour or two. Um, 
We're still getting bit, just a little bit tougher to fish. I'm probably gonna have to upsize my weight. I've been fishing a 3 8 the whole time. I might have to go to half here. But um, I've basically been drop shot, and my best bait today has been a uh, 3 inch gold minnow. Just a, uh, a real small bait. What's nice about that thing is it's so streamlined, it's real easy to get the bait down on the bottom and it, it cuts through the uh, water so well you can keep good contact with it while you're fishing. I've got it uh, emerald shiner color is where I'm throwing. I've got it on a number one drop shot hook, a 3 8 ounce weight and uh, rod and reel. I'm using the MG Extreme Abu Garcia reel, a uh, seven foot medium Abu Fantasista Premier rod, eight pound Nanofil green color and an eight pound trilene fluorocarbon leader um, that's been the setup all week you know and i've caught some fish on the flatworm i've caught some fish on a little stick worm on a jig head but um, when it's gotten tough this has been the best bait especially in the afternoons and now it's time for us to hit another spot hate to leave you guys so quickly, but we've only got an hour here, and we need another big one. Josh Bertrand with our Yamaha Taste the Bait as the, the waves get a little saltier out there. Yeah, <laughs> well, there not go. technic, not physically salty, saltier, but in a toughness sense. Now, do you up these set of three eights? If it, it gets rough like that, is there a temptation to up that weight a little bit so you got a little more feel? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think it's a, it's big to change your weights while you're uh, drop shot fishing. Sometimes not only just the contact with the bottom, but the speed of fall and that sort of thing. So there's several different factors. And, and I'm sure Josh has already got a rod rig with a half ounce on there. But okay. typically the rule of thumb is the lighter you can you can use, the better off you are. But, but not always. Sometimes that faster fall. And then sometimes, like I said, you just have to upsize to keep your bait with the current and the, and the wind conditions that you have here. Thought maybe the old Carolina rig was going to make his huge comeback if Rick Morris would catch about 28 pounds a day, but it's just not keeping up with these drop shots today. It's not going to be throwback <laughs> Thursday today. <laughs> no, no. Hey, we got one out there in the top top five this morning. That's not bad. Giving it a shot. Not bad. The other thing we have going is David Walker, who's been first or second all week, he's a straight fluorocarbon where most of the guys use a braid and then to a fluorocarbon leader. So wind, current, waves, is that going to push fluorocarbon more or is it going to push braid more? The larger diameter is going to push more, which is it's going to be your fluorocarbon. Okay. Give and take, uh, I just think you can hear arguments. Uh, you know, I, I listened to David Walker talk about the reasons that he used the fluorocarbon, straight fluorocarbon. It made a lot of sense. And then I also know the advantages of using braid. Brandon Lester's hooked up. Oh my gosh, I'm talking about a freaking giant. Wow. Gosh, stay on, baby. That is that a is big one. one. Please wow. stay on there. Dude, that's another six pounder. Oh my gosh, gosh look at that fish. Don't do that. Sorry. Don't do that. <laughs> oh my. Oh! No. Probably a hundred grand right there. Gosh dang it. How long it was. So green. Nothing you can do, dude. It just popped out. First one I've lost all week. Makes me want to puke. Gosh, Almighty, are you kidding me? 
Ugh. Oh well, if that one was there, there's another. I apologize, huh? <laughs> I apologize for the way I acted right I here. You lost it for a second. <laughs> you lost that fish, David. I saw it happening, though. I just knew I was afraid yeah. what was about to happen. I just saw it, and that's what. I... <laughs> Dang, gun that man. Golly. Like I said yesterday online. No way in the world you're going to land 100% of these big smallmouth. They're just so mean. I could tell when that one bit it, she bit it kind of funny. I could tell I didn't give a good, didn't have a good hook in her. It was just right in the tip of her lip. It wasn't down in her like lip and punctured through the hard part. It was right in the tip in that loose skin. Part of it, dude. Still got plenty of time. Good news is we found a drift that's got some fish on it. It's all good. Well, you got to give him credit for having a great attitude. I mean, that's commendable. I hate to do it, but such an important moment. We got to take one more look at this. Turning point. Everything looks good. Back oh off my his gosh. I'm talking about a freaking giant. Gosh, stay on, baby. Please stay on there. Dude, that's another six pounder. Please come here. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh my God. Mm. That's probably a hundred grand right there. Gosh, gosh dang it. You know what I... We, I talked about it a little bit yesterday. Sometimes these fish come up to jump and they get close to the boat and they, they're still green. There's well, nothing, there's do, nothing that he did wrong, but that fish still had a lot of First fight left in it. And it's up close to the boat. And you get your eyes on the fish that you know this is a winning fish. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's, God, it's heartbreaking. You, he handled it well. He handled it better than I did here in studio, if y'all can't tell. We can see Davey playing it from here. He's in my line of sight, and he's playing that fish trying to get it. Neither one of you him. said a bad word. I, I'll, I'll give you that. And he it said the, the hook set was no good. I mean, the, the, the hook spot was no yeah. good. So. Bad set of circumstances. To his credit, he's lost a fish all week. You heard yeah. him say that. Yeah. Just, Damn. There was quite a few people who banged the, whatever table they're sitting at because I just got three or four texts saying, wow, that just broke my heart. Dude, oh, holy cow. Oh, my gosh. Well, sure. No matter who you're pulling for or not pulling for, I mean, we're, we're you, not you supposed that. to do that. I'm really not. I mean, I, any, four, any one of these four and, and any one of the 12, I mean, I'm, but you hate to see a guy who's been doing so well all week and has not lost a fish and... We, when we saw that fish, I mean, that's the winning fish. That's the winning yeah, fish. Yeah, you want to see the drama of that? That would have been a 26-pound bag. Oh, it's my. That's a, that's a three-and-a-half-pound call, yeah. three-pound yeah. call. This was over. Boom. Done. That, that was the winning fish. Ain't no fishing by a buoy with five minutes left like he did yesterday. He'd be checked in much earlier. Mm. Hooked up again.
no way you can flush that out of your mind. Oh, Not immediately, right? All the, this silence right now. He just, that's hurt. That, that's he, when it really starts. Yeah. Mentally, this is a silence that's deafening. Mentally, he, he, he just it. said, like. And to never win an elite tournament yet. I mean, and they're so hard to win. They're so hard to be in position to win on a final day. And when you physically see the winning fish, and we all know that was the winning fish, he certainly did. And for it to get off the side of the boat, I mean, yeah. And then you hook up, and you're mentally not – you're not saying anything, but mentally he's like, oh, this one's hooked good, though. Like, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. it's a two-pounder. He swings in. Yeah, that two-pounder's lucky he didn't get picked. Yeah. I'm going to mention again, though, I appreciate the way he handled that. He could have – not acted very professionally. Sure. But sure. he 100% acted like a professional. He took up again. This one's fighting a little more. Like that. Big one. I think I got a good hook in that one. It's not as big as that last one, but it's a good one. Some guns mean, I tell you that. <clears throat> Here it comes. Don't you go under the boat. Golly, why are you doing that? Get back up here. There we go. That's a good one. Back around one time. Oh my gosh, come here. Yes, sir. Whew. Yes. Not as big as the one I just lost, but we got plenty of time. Oh, I was hoping he was going to wait for us. He needs a three and three quarter to catch Lucas. Ooh. I got two in there that say 330. I just got to make sure I tell you what. The balance beam don't lie. Just in case, I think he had two different colored fin clips in the one he just caught, in case we can't tell which one is which, if it was okay. a color or not. I don't even think he's checking that one. He said he's got two oh, in there that weigh 330. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. These, these are two separate figure fish. Figure out yeah. which one to ditch. And he's going to use the balance beam, because if they weigh, yeah, the yeah. scales call them the same. I think it's a smart move here to put them on the beam. A little, but he doesn't dig it. You know, like see the weight on that one he just brought in. Yeah. Come here. Hey, see, is that Kafka with him, Eric Kafka? Yes. He usually listens in pretty close. We can get Kafka to ask him what he, an uh, honest guess of that last one he caught. I'd say three and three quarter, maybe four pounder. Four pounder. Which would get him three quarters of a pound. Because both these fish weigh the same on a scale and in bass track. Three, four for both of these that he's, he's putting on the Nine beam. ounces back to Lucas. And the three and three quarter will give him a tie. Say what now? I'm gonna say four pounder. Yeah. Four pounder. Oh, they're close. Get a little bit there. So that puts him unofficially a couple ounces ahead of Lucas? Yes. Let's 
This is the one I just caught. We'll weigh it right Oh, he's going to weigh it. Man, showing us the love. Yeah. Catching his breath, getting his mind right. Oh, that helps. That, that one certainly helps. Four ten. Four point one zero. Oh, okay. <laughs> I knew he hadn't missed it that much. We didn't miss it. So four point one. Boy, his wife is, watching at home. Yeah. Like, Holy crap, he's just, <laughs> it's a pound and a half. So it was like four four one, four, but four, yeah. Four, one. A four even is accurate as well. It's still a three quarter pound coal. in a good place. He just caught a good one. Got yeah. lots of time. Hey, things are looking yeah. up a little hey, bit. Did, I'm, I'm telling you, there's a lot to be said. And if he wins this tournament with that fish and he catches another one, there are a lot of people that would have, when they lost that fish he lost a few minutes ago, it, it would have all been over. We don't they would have broke yeah. a rod. There, they would have cut a few. I mean, the ones we need. He did there. a great job. I'm telling you right now. But this helps. It's more. every drift. When I come through there, I mean, it's automatic every time. And one thing he said immediately honest, after losing. I ain't been nervous all week, but my blood pressure probably through the roof right now. And what a battle at the top of the leaderboard. Brandon Lester and Justin Lucas. <sighs> Goodness, it doesn't get any better than this. You can take a look at how they got here through the first three days and the matchups on weight today, and of course, the big uh, shot across the bow fired by Brandon Lester. First fish of the day, 6 4, but then back and forth and back and forth. I That's... mean, just big ins. Look at the top weights and then every fish, the other than that 3 4. Goodness. That's. Hey, we wouldn't expect any best for the greatest smallmouth tournament, yeah, tournament I mean, ever. Yeah, I mean, it's got a lot to live up to here. And what's not reflected there is that six pounder. That just got off. Oh, that was that's a huge part of the story as well. But Brandon Lester trying to make that one go away, minimize that. I think I see some pretty good optimism in his voice. Make that go away. Get back at him. Oh my goodness! An instant before he got his hands on it. I'm gonna have to go to break so I can get a towel and clean up the tea that I spilled everywhere when I when he lost that fish. We're gonna have to examine this tabletop a little later just to make sure that it's uh, safe enough for safety standards and everything like that. <laughs> Once you get hurt here, man, some good stuff here today. The final day of the season, man, just living up to all we'd hoped for and more. And there's more to come after this. Live coverage of the Hook Bassmaster Elite at St. Lawrence River, presented by Black Velvet, will return after this short break. 239 days on the water. With an average tournament day of eight hours, that's 1,912 hours of fishing. Averaging 60 miles per hour, you cover 12,300 miles. That's 102,420 minutes with a rod in your hand. Averaging four casts per minute, that's just shy of 410,000 chances at a bite. But numbers are the foundation. The results are up to you. Bassmaster Angler of the Year! Yeah! Woo! The competition yes. is fierce and the prizes are huge. The only thing missing is you. Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. Sign up for free and face fans from across the nation. Grand prize winner wins a Triton Yamaha package including a Triton 189 TRX. MSRP of $37,293. The classic and each individual elite event winner will win $2,500 Bass Pro Shops gift cards plus a $500 bonus card for winners who are BASS members. Sign up and pick your team today at BassmasterFantasy.com. 239 days on the water. With an average tournament day of eight hours, that's 1,912 hours of fishing. Averaging 60 miles per hour, you cover 12,300 miles. That's 102,420 minutes with a rod in your hand. Averaging four casts per minute, that's just shy of 410,000 chances at a bite. But numbers are the foundation. The results are up to you. Bassmaster Sweepstakes equals your shot at terrific prizes. Why miss out when entering is so easy? Enter now for a chance to win a Toyota Tundra SR5 Double Cab. 
grand prize also includes a genuine Toyota accessories package. Plus additional accessories from Bully Dog, b and Trailer Hitches, Covercraft, Volant, and Yakima. Go to Bassmaster.com and enter right now. It's fast. It's easy. And think of the possibilities. Don't miss your chance. There's one. One more big one. Decisions, man! Decisions, man! Decisions! Woo! God, it's all about decisions on this tidal water. Tidal water. Whew. Three and a half pound largemouth. Little itsy bitsy jig with that trigger crawl in the back. Forget about it. Woo! Look at that thing! What? Thing. Oh my God. Big one. Come right off, too. Two pound, two and a half pounder. Yeah. Two and a half. Big moment right there. Big moment right there for me. That was a big moment. Three days, three days I've hit this place. Finally, finally, one showed up. Oh my God. Big one. River Bass, Havoc Pit Boss, VMC Tungsten Weight, VMC Hook. You know what that equals? It's $100,000! Woo! Done. Wanna have some fun? Wanna have some fun with it? Jersey Shore got the world pumping with their fists. The man that they had the world yapping in this.
Oklahoma for the second stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Elite at Grand Lake of the Cherokees. And six seconds is back. And this week, we're playing the rhyme game. James Helam representing Oklahoma in a big way this week. One of your forefathers here in Oklahoma, of course, Tommy Biffle. So we're asking anglers to give us as many words as they can that rhyme with Biffle in six seconds. Go. Riffle. That's where he likes to fish, up in the riffles. Um, that, I think that's it. I, that's all I can think of. You know, it's 4.30 in the morning. I, I can't just rattle stuff off like that, so. Sniffle. Biffle. <laughs> uh, triffle. Whiffle. Sniffle. Kiffle. Um, Sherry, help me out. She didn't hear the question. Whiffle, tiffle, niffle, nipple. Criffle, tiffle, smiffle. Miffle, tiffle. <laughs> Biffle, um, sniffle, whiffle. Whiffle. Tickle, sniffle, trickle, flickle, fickle, mickle. Strong. Yeah. Hey, off the top of the head. Early in the morning. Six seconds. Give me as many words as you can that rhyme with biffle. Tommy. Uh, Hollerhead. Crazy. Speedy. Crazy. Strong. Go get them, talk. Uh... Jiffle. I have no idea. Biffle. Biffle bug. That was terrible. Biffle, smiffle, sniffle, giffle, tiffle, triffle, ziffle, miffle, tiffle, fiffle, snoop, zizzle, nipple. Does that rhyme with biffle? Nipple. Biffles, nipples. Hey, Tommy, how are you? Good, you? Good. Just working this morning. What are you doing? Just fixing to go to work. I do a little segment called Six Seconds. Have you seen it? I was afraid you was going to do that crap. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people are. But you, you have no idea how exciting it is for us to talk to the one Tommy Biffle. Because this morning we were asking people to pay tribute to you. Give us as many words as you can that rhyme with Biffle in six seconds. Go. Biffle, Riffle, Niffle, Niffle, and Riffle, Riffle, Riffle. Is that six seconds? You nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> Bass Live is being brought to you by Bully Dog. Oh my gosh, I'm talking about a freaking giant. Gosh, stay on, baby. Please, man. Dude, that's another six pounder. Please, come here. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh my God. That's probably a hundred grand right there. is a giant smallmouth and even when you lose one that size it's still large it looms large in our standings right now you can take a look at brandon lester who came back you saw right there and caught a good keeper got a slight upgrade out of that he's he's a man in the lead but we're not ginning up drama when we say that could easily have been the winning oh, fish I, I mean you i think you're convinced it i'm was. convinced it was the winning fish uh, he's unofficially uh, retaking the lead uh but that's that's too close to call there, three ounces, but to have that chance in the final few hours of the final day, um, gosh, it's heartbreaking. I, I'm gonna compliment him again. He handled it well. He went back to fishing and he was quiet. I'm sure he was rolling that around in his mind, you know, losing that fish and what it may, may cost him, but he did a good job recovering and then he caught that four pounder. 
So uh, we'll see how this plays out. But the greatest small mouth tournament I've ever witnessed, and, and we wouldn't expect any less than for it to end in dramatic fashion. Just another part of it. Yeah, you have to be pretty strong in your constitution to put up with something like that. So yeah, hats off. That's off to Brandon right there, and like he says, there's there's more more down there. We might do it again. We need one more big one. Stuck with a close to four pounder, I guess. Haven't weighed a single fish today, so I don't know. Getting a little a little nervous now. We might have a chance. We might not. I don't know. I'm gonna run back and fish hard for another hour and 20 minutes. Two more additions to the 20-pound club, Polinick and Keith Combs. Brandon Polinick, Keith Combs, both just made calls in the last five minutes, put them above 20 pounds. How many of the 12 have 20? With those two, it would be, it says five. Josh Bertrand might have 20. You know, he hadn't caught any giants, but he might have a couple fours for sure. So that would be uh, five or six. If it's six, what is the total for the tournament then? What would that be? I think it was... 107 starting today. So six yeah. more is uh, carry the yacht. 123? 113. 13. Don't carry the yacht. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> Leave it home. That's mind boggling. 113. Limits over 20 pounds. 20 pounds or more. Great small mouth tournament in the history of man. Yes, of man. Kevin, there's four guys who have surpassed your total last year. As if there were small mouth tournaments before man, right? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. We're not privy or to that. Or before history. <laughs> before history. There you go. Recorded history. That's it. That's it. Basically just throwing a Carolina rig, three quarter ounce weight, 20 pound gamma braid, the 10 or 12 pound leader, I've used both, a two or three aught round bend hook, and an RPM 7.8 Lake Erie Special, it's medium heavy, so it's long enough to cast, it's got enough backbone to set the hook. Pretty much power fishing a rig for smallies. Unusual. First one of those we've seen this week. Yeah. Although, I, I must admit, a Carolina rig is a good... Oh, Brandon Lester's hooked up right good in the area where he had that six-pounder on. I think. It's awful fast. That's yeah, little. Uh, I don't think... That Not one won't help him. Uh, back to Rick Morris with that Carolina rig. I mean, there have been a lot of... A lot of tournaments won on the Carolina Rig. And when so many people drop shot, it's a very effective way to fish around other people and, and show those fish some, uh, something a little different. My question is why not a bait caster though? Like I know he's got a seven eight spinning rod, but what's the benefit? I've never seen someone Carolina Rig with three quarter ounce weight on a spinning I, rod. I agree, and I asked him about that last year. And every time I would try to squeeze, last night, Every time I try to squeeze him a little bit, he'd say, you know, we're coming back here three or four more times. We're coming back. <laughs> I was like, okay. But anyway, he, he and then he would loosen up and, and tell me. Uh, he's making long casts. On the calmer days, he's uh, he's not just dragging. He's making, he, he uh, he's located these little small rock piles and that sort of thing. He's drifting, but he's making cast to these rock piles. He thinks the having the boat farther away from him has helped him catch some of those bigger fish. So you can obviously cast farther with a seven to eight spinning rod with 20 pound braid on it than you could with a bait caster. And you wouldn't do a seven, eight bait caster for a Carolina rig or something. So you would, yeah, you would lose some tip probably, yeah, especially see, in the waves. He's yeah. flinging that thing. Yeah. But he's, he's graft and he's, he's throwing to targets that he has marked on his, yeah. you know, on his waypoints there on his units. And I've certainly seen the time with a drop shot that you can't get bites with a little 
short pitches or right under the boat. You've got to make cast. I've never had to use a 7-8. Right, we'll do another drift and we'll take care of that fish, too. Let's do it. Let's get a look at that lizard. Yeah. He hasn't talked about it. We have to it. confirm that. Yes. I want that confirmed. We well, need a lizard confirmation. <laughs> this is an official request from, from the desk that is still holding together. <laughs> Thankfully. And does it have tea all over it? Weathered, right battle-tested desk. What a just <laughs> unsung hero of Bass Live. Hey, I, I should get at least one one segment power pole replay of the day in the studio. Yeah, I know. I, God, I wish it was rolling. rolling. <laughs> oh, shows how much I just love our sport. Well, it's just been a blast to ride along with these guys during this tournament here. And I mean, you feel like you're there. You <laughs> yes, you really, really do. But I'd still like to be there. Yep. But it, Tommy, you've been there. I have too. Ronnie, I mean, when you've physically been there and the good coverage we've had and this being such a great tournament, it, it, it does feel like we're there. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't know. Dave Mercer said, I mean, I'm not, I don't even know if I'm competent enough to catch a, a one that big, you know, so. Whether I don't know Kevin if I've Van ever Dan been Dan there or not. Or Ronnie Moore. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was referencing something different. <laughs> oh, it wasn't fishing ability? What was it? No, that was you last year. You got me good last year. Oh, I or think earlier you got this you year. better than I did saying whether you're Kevin Van Dam or Ronnie Moore. I mean, I never think of you of that lowest end of the fishing spectrum. I've never thought of that. Kyle, maybe, but not me. He said you, he'd take you any day of the week if you let him fish in the front of the boat a little bit. <laughs> well, I think we've... We have offered some genuine entertainment this week, for yes. sure, out there. And, and we, we invite you to join in, be a be bigger part of it. Hashtag Bass Live. Join the conversation with us right now. We've been getting good stuff from people uh, from just about every day. Hi, hey, Wes hey. Miller, our cameraman Wes Miller, has been on a project down in Alabama. One of the rare tournaments where he is not out there on the water running camera. And he's watching us on his way home, watching live. Wes is following along. You can't, you, you can take the boy off the water, but he... His mind is out there. Boy, who, who, who's Good he letting win. drive? He's usually the driver. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't let other people drive because they don't go fast enough. Exactly. <laughs> so I was getting at. He what? probably loves seeing the lack of long runs this week, and not everyone's running <laughs> down there because he always is here for the events when they make the longest run. <laughs> There's some other folks watching, watching the pros beat up St. Lawrence, an amazing fishery. I I need to add to this to my bucket list. I think you're in, a, you're in the majority <laughs> with that sentiment right there, yes. caged crow. Start planning your trip for next year. Go watch the elites. Good stuff. August fifteenth, right eighteenth. Fantasy draft day. Oh, that's looming for so many of us. Final day, last day of school for the Bassmaster Elite regular season. Perfect Sunday. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. I don't like to wish any bad luck on anybody, but I hope this wind is making it tough on our competition. <laughs> Here's some food. Ah, the food. We've been waiting for that. Beef jerky, some homemade beef jerky in the smoker there. For Championship Sunday. It'll be ready by weigh-in. All right. <clears throat> right place, right time. It's all about the right place, right time. <laughs> Let's try again. Another thing that's uh, huge on social media today, not that I'm the, the expert that, whether you're me or Ronnie Moore, <laughs> I have heard about National Dog Day. In fact, I just heard in my ear that it is National Dog Day. That's huge on social media. And uh, Toyota Dog, is that the name of the, uh, hash, hashtag Toyota Dog is a thing as well. People taking pictures of their dog uh, with their Toyota in the shot as well. We got a Mr. Matt Lee right there. Good looking German Shepherd right there, well dressed. I gave him Good a like on group. that post right there. You know, see that? Absolutely. <laughs> Brandon Polinick and the whole crew. Same uh, bandana. Mike McClellan. Got a pair of them. Man, everybody's everybody's got the appropriate attire and everything like that. The Swindles. What's that dog's name? Does anybody know that dog? Bama. Bama. That's Bama. That's Is that right. Jack Russell? They used to have a big. Great name, wasn't it? Yes. Who's Ish's Myrick, dog? Got Ish's dog. I don't know the name of Ish's dog. Weimariner. Ryder. Ryder was Ish's dog. There's Sin Fukai. 
Casey Ashley, you should know the name of that dog. Casey and Kenzie. Oh, I'm trying to think. I should know because I've stayed with him and the little dog. These, these <laughs> cute little rats. <laughs> the Chapmans. Can't remember. Out on the road with the pooches out there. Good stuff. The Iconellis as well. Not Man. quite sure if those are actual dogs. Are those actual dogs? Have Zoom in. Go to the matter. website the and determine for yourself. Those are the only ones that won't bark, so you don't have to worry about Ike saying something he should <laughs> say. <laughs> they, they don't sleep. They, they don't uh, eat while you sleep. They don't do other stuff. They don't bark when you're trying to fish a Bassmaster Classic. I mean, I'm just saying. There, there's that, too. It's rocky. Up. It's up and down, the history with dogs and the Iconellis, but they're getting in on the Toyota dog. Hashtag Toyota dog. So write that down. Post your own picture. What your you dog, didn't know, Tommy. Your truck. Love to see that. You're always trending on social media, Tommy. Oh, Even boy. if you don't know about it, you're always trending. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> I'm trending on, you know, the Sunday paper, maybe in my neighborhood. <laughs> you have a neighborhood Sunday paper? Yeah. I haven't been to that part of Little Rock. Sure, yeah. We're just too scared of social media, right? <laughs> Stick with print. Weekly news newsletter. Yeah, newsletter. That's right. Mimeograph newsletter. That's what we do. <laughs> Mimeograph. Personal ads out. He converses with somebody once a week. <laughs> Is that you in the classifieds? Yeah. Sure. We read the oh, yeah. for free. <laughs> yeah. An update from the water. Keith Combs just call, caught another four plus. He's up to 21 pounds, making a charge from lower in the pack, but still gonna. He would need a giant bag. Rick Morris is hooked up. Here we go. We've got three right now, so far as we know. We'll score another one with the Carolina rig today. Looks like this is a nice one. Yes. This must be a nice one because he's using a little heavier line than the other guys. 20 pound test gamma floor carbon, he said. And, yeah. I mean, 20 pound test braid and uh, 10 pound test gamma floor carbon. He's been off Bash Track for a while, only has two on Bash Track, but he's got four for roughly 13 four. the last time we checked in with him. He does have one big one, so this would be his limit fish, we, we believe. Pick everyone with a limit today. He gets it in. Way ahead of schedule. Oh yeah. From yesterday. Yeah. It's like had three with an hour and a half to go yesterday, he said, so. Caught those final two. Only had five bites and had oh, no. twenty one pounds. I'm mistaken. He already has a limit. Okay. And we'll be culling here. We lost his camera for a while with I see. you know, rain and cell service and whatnot. This is a battle here now. This is Probably this way. Not that one, not that one, and not that one. Nice cull right there. Maybe three pounds, four pounds even. Yeah, I think so. That yeah. I, yeah. Three pounds, three and a half maybe even. That fish you just released 
maybe two pounds, and that's a solid five. Was it that a lizard? I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> Green pumpkin? I guess where he's fishing, and hopefully he won't. I can just tell, and everybody can tell that knows anything about, knows a lot about the river. Where do you think Rick Morris is fishing in the area of what town? Morristown. Morristown. Oh, Morristown, yeah. of course. Where else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where else? Ricksville. <laughs> That's his Rick's plan Mark. B. That's his backup plan. I'm fishing from here to the other end of Morristown. That's Y'all right. can't have any of <laughs> Nice. I mean, how do you <laughs> narrow down what, a fishery like this? Up. So if he got three and a half out of that, what's he? What's he? Man, his. <sighs> we don't. We don't really know what is. We limit. missed some fish on him. Yeah, okay. So All right. Just, just know he has five. Just shy of obviously. twenty. Shy of twenty. Said he could catch twenty today, and he's got we'll time to make it happen. Since basically everyone else has twenty, we'll just say he's just shy of twenty. Since we don't really know. He but he started does, four and a half back of the lead. He definitely had. That was his second good one on the right side of his boat. He had three small ones. Yeah. So he's got two fives. And now he threw back one of those small ones. So he's definitely got two or three that are. He's at twenty. Cold. He's got two solid fives. That's. 10, maybe yep. even 11, and then those other three are they're close to three pounders. I mean, he's three, so, yeah, 18, 20 or 19, 10, 19 11, to 20, yeah. 20, so. And his margin from fifth to first to de uh, starting today was significantly more. Like Lester and, and Lucas were only two to two and a half. He was another two back of Lester, so he was four and a half back. He would need uh, closer to 30 if Lester keeps it up and Lucas keeps it up. He's been above 22 every day, so there's no reason to expect he won't be today. Got the USO uh, logo on the jersey. What does USO stand for, Such? We know what it is. We know they provide entertainment for the troops and other essential sort of services and comforts uh, to service people. What does it stand for? You know, Davey? I'm not like you, Tommy. I hate to say it, but I, I know what they do. Yeah. But I do not know what those three initials are. United we'll Service in Organizations. We'll make one more deal here, and then we might do something different. Brandon Lester getting. Reset for another try there, obviously in a place where he has a lot of confidence. What a day it has been for the angler from Tennessee, Brandon Lester. Heading out today after a little bit of a drop, 19 pounds on day number three to fall just a little bit back in the standings. Made it all back and more with his first keeper of the day. Yes. God, what a small mouth. Dude, I'm talking about an absolute freaking stud. Look at that thing. That's exactly right. What a smallmouth. If you're a Brandon Lester fan or just a smallmouth fan, you didn't need a cup of coffee this morning. That was the first thing you saw. You were up and going when you saw that. Follow that up with a five plus. We got another good one on not too long ago. As big. Great look at it there. That was a six pound. Could have been game over. So this is just a little after that. Mentally, this fish was huge. Yes. An upgrade of about 12 ounces with that one, which unofficially gives him a slight lead. Can't say enough, got to give him credit for recovering and being able to go back fishing and catch that fish that helped him. Might, might win the tournament for him. Well, he knew the importance of that fish right there and he knew what a moment that was. But Brandon Lester hanging on by ounces right now against Justin Lucas. We've still got more than an hour's fishing time for these anglers out here today. That means a lot can happen. We've seen it all go down very, very fast. Big, big fish coming in. We may have more. Live coverage of the Hook Bassmaster Elite at St. Lawrence River, presented by Black Velvet, will return after this short break. There's a reason I escaped the water for over 200 days a year. 
It's not only my passion and my job, it's my life. The work and the miles that I put in traveling across this country have prepared me for this sport. Because after thousands of casts, eventually, I will find a way. Toyota, let's go places. New Berkeley Fireline Ultra 8. It's rounder, smoother, and four times more abrasion resistant than original Fireline. That means you catch more fish. Ultra 8 features eight braided strength, heated to molecularly bind individual fibers. It lays well on the spool and is prior to going through your guide. Expect 10% longer casts and superb knot strength. New Fireline Ultra 8, and you thought Fireline couldn't get any better. What's your biggest strength? You got jig skipping skills. Can you tie a double uni? Product planning. Oh my goodness. I ain't got a resume, but I do have this. You're hired. See more office antics at teamgtfishing.com. is just such a phenomenal fishery. It's one of the greatest places we get to go. What an awesome fishery. I just can't, you know, say enough about this place, guys. It's, it's really, really good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> New York could easily be a second home to me. Come on, let me get you. Fishing just got easier, and it didn't cost you a thing. Free feature upgrades from Lowrance. Fish Reveal delivers the best of chirp sonar and downscan imaging, all on one screen, and it's going to help you find more fish. High visibility color sonar take high contrast imaging to a whole new level. It delivers the absolute best views of structure. Fish like to hide there, but their hiding days are over. These features are ready to roll when you are. Just upgrade your HDS Carbon software. tournament day of eight hours that's 1912 hours of fishing averaging 60 miles per hour you covered 12,300 miles that's 102,420 minutes with a rod in your hand averaging four casts per minute that's just shy of 410,000 chances at a bite but numbers are the foundation the results are up to you Bass Live is being brought to you by Bully Dog. Depending on where you are, if you're among the 12, you've got, well, maybe an hour's worth of fishing time left to go. Maybe a little more than that if you're close to Waddington, our great host city. We've got, well, 
got to ask track in a virtual tie for first place. Between Brandon Lester of Tennessee looking for his first Bassmaster Elite Series victory. And Justin Lucas looking for his third. Justin Lucas currently also our leader. Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year points unofficially. That figure as well, but all will be sorted out and settled out today. It just seems like in this next hour, a whole lot can happen, Dave. You just, I have no idea. I'm not going to predict. You're, you're exactly right, Tommy. I mean, we've legitimately got four guys there, and the four we expected uh, to be in there, Brandon Lester, Justin Lucas, David Walker, Josh Bertrand, that are one six-pounder away from winning the tournament. And David Walker has caught two this week. Uh, Brandon Lester has one in the live well and had one touch his hand right beside the boat. So it's not like some dream miracle that we're talking no, about. No, Something no, that we're... very possibly could happen in this last hour of fishing, a little over an hour of fishing. Extremely possible. Definitely got a barn burner of a final day, and that's just right in line with what we've seen so far. The small mouth catching has been a barn burner. Our hummingbird lay of, this, lay of the lake on this incredible fishery, this wonderful waterway, I'll call it, the St. Lawrence River. Taking the water from the Great Lakes out to the Atlantic Ocean and providing along the way a lot of food, a lot of shelter, perfect conditions for smallmouth bass to grow to the height of their potential. And we don't even know what that is yet. They may be bigger next year when we go back here. That's a great point. point. What is the height of their potential? Well, it's an experiment that's going on right now, but gobies weren't always here, but then they appeared, and man, that was like a buttered popcorn stand on every corner for these these small mouth and they just get bigger and bigger and as we have this tournament the latest we have ever had it well that contributes to the food consumption as well as they get uh, fed up for the winter time get out a little deeper that's why we've seen almost exclusively drop shot fishing throughout the course of this tournament although we just saw rick morris catch a good one on a carolina rig allegedly a lizard <laughs> okay on that carolina rig. <laughs> And he's hooked up again. Hold on. There, there we go. go. Get a close up. Well, that will help. Have a look. Have a look. Well, I don't think so. Well, not that one. Not that one. Maybe this one. And I'm going to say, probably not. This is how I do it. Nope. I think I'm right at 20 pounds, so should have had 25, but still got a few more minutes. That's all I can say. They're biting right now, and I need every second there is. So I got two over five, a couple close to four, and one smaller one, but not real small. So it could be 21, but it's not enough. Twenty to twenty-one would put him in fifth to seventh, depending on what it is. He's he'd be right around the eighty-seven to eighty-eight pound mark. Great way to finish some. the season for him. I mean, make a top twelve. How's that commercial go? More, top more, five more. potential. More is better. I want more. <laughs> Remember that commercial? We like more. He's talking like he's packing up for the day in just a little bit, but like they fish till three, and it's. 144 so he's got to he he must be giving himself over like an hour to run again i thought i told you where i thought he was yeah. fishing around was just showed him on the hummingbird lay of the lake he's exactly. i don't understand far, why he would he, unless he's just got another stop close by and he's saying how much longer he's got right mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. in his primary well you can tell the time's winding down because justin lucas just packed up to make another run to a spot or another drift josh bertrand's doing the same thing so these guys are well, knowing we're gonna be able to stay a little longer now Josh is down on down away. So he yeah, he might be an hour yeah. away with the wind. That's 30 minutes. Even the current slowed down. And they'll be going with the waves on the way back, which is harder to drive. People wouldn't assume that. Five real quick. 
I caught two in the last 30 minutes yesterday. And one was five. They bite in the afternoon. I was just fortunate they bit them early. I mean, I had my opportunity to really, I believe I could have had 26 pounds. I saw two of them that jumped, they were both over five. The other ones I didn't, but they were big. They're gonna haunt me for a long time. Might feel a little better if he knows that Brandon Lester lost another six, no matter how this works. Did a good job of palming that bait when he was re-rigging there, David. He did. He, he's like one of these guys who can pull a half dollar out from behind your ear. <laughs> he just doesn't want you to know. He thinks I'm a... Yeah, uh, because we started fishing, I think the same year, we obviously competed against one of them for a long time, and he knows I'm watching. Zip happening here in the final hour of fishing, kind of the way we started the day. Yeah, you can see it's there's a little build up happening. It sure out is. There. It sure is. Brandon's not in it yet. Neither's Justin. But it's in the neighborhood. We've had two or three anglers today not wish wish poor thoughts on their competitors, but have mentioned, I hope the wind's blowing a little harder in their area. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you can tell it's championship Sunday. Oh, yeah. Everybody loves everybody on Thursday and Friday. <laughs> Come Sunday, it's dog eat dog. You're on your own. Be a little bouncy on the way back because I'm gonna push it a little bit. And every pound's a little more money. <laughs> oh, nice! Ah. I know that knot. It was a matter of time. At least it didn't happen on a fish, right? Taste the bait. I thought yeah. he was. I thought he was tying his uh, 
braid to a swivel, but he's he's got a longer fluoro leader on there mm -hmm. than I thought. What's your favorite braid to fluoro knot for spinning rock? You know, I have, you can talk to 12 different pros and probably get 10 different answers. And I have come to conclude it really depends on which knot you personally can tie best. And and I have less trouble with a d good old fashioned double uni than any. Now I know the FG knot's supposed to Albright, the, you know, there's, I love the I Alberta. Alberta. Alberta's great. Brett Height swears by it, and, and but we have our ways of tying knots, and some people just tie one knot better than they can another knot. And I, I fished last week, you know, it's it's Champlain, and had a couple friends fishing with me, other than Kevin, a few days before Kevin got there. But I never, never broke up double uni. Caught 40, 50 fish a day. So a lot of it depends on how you tie a specific knot. Kevin and Greg Hackney still tie Palomar with fluorocarbon and you will get a oh, yeah. hundred pros that'll tell you, you can't tie that. You, but really? Yeah. Greg Hackney and Kevin don't know how to tie, you know, it, it just depends on. Same with the snail yeah. Palomar debate for braid and flipping or whatnot, yeah. So, all knots might, should be the same, but I think we all, you know, time different whether you're right handed, whether you're left handed, where you can wrap well or not. You know, it's a lot of different things. It then just gets into, well, I've made more money in my career than you. Maybe my knot's better. And right. then my knot's better than you. Accolades. Well, 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 you know, I've only caught like seven million. You got 20 you know, minutes left. You know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and when David Walker told me he was fishing straight fluorocarbon, I'm like, wow, that is so cool. You think it's. He's like, I really just can't tie those, you know, those braid to four row knots and it's too much trouble, too much time. So I just use four car. I was like, come on, you can make up something better than that. I'm blown away. <laughs> I'm blown away with the amount of pros that don't know how to fizz a fish or hadn't learned or hadn't needed to. But this week, a lot have no said it on live. Just the small sample size of five a day have said that they learned to fizz this week mm -hmm. of all the events we've done. We've just experienced what might be the longest lull between back bass track fishes, 17 minutes. Wow. That's a mad scam. Yes, right. guys are That's terrible. A tragedy. <laughs> I retract all the compliments we said about this place. Yeah. Well, they may have caught one, they just didn't report it. Just didn't come across bass track. So another kind of scam. That's the one wild card. Justin Lucas weighing his fish or not weighing his fish. That's the one thing we don't know. We know that Lester's right around that 23 and a half because he's weighed them all and he's hooked up. Small one. the rain. I think Bertram is the farthest one towards the lake southwest and that rain should be coming from that direction so it's, it's there where he's at now it'll be The other guys, just a little bit more than likely. And the we see at the background, Brandon Lester, a little further away from Walker.
good spot here. 50th anniversary of bass, right, Suits? This year, you know it. Working on some content for that. I even talked to Davey about the uh, kind of the evolution of the jerseys as your main sponsor platform to show off your stuff. Remember me asking you questions a while ago? <laughs> yes, yes. So run into, ran into Rick Klon at ICAST and asked him about that and gave me some insight of over the years. It's so neat to be able to pick the brain of a, of a fishing legend like that. Sure. And yourself. <laughs> wow. That was worse shade oh, all week. Minute. He just threw major shade at you. Said, oh, baby. I had to speak with uh, Guy Aker as well to get Jersey information and, and you know, what the changes that have come through. Guy and Rick can tell you about the jumpsuit days. Oh, yeah, they go back he, that far. Well, he's the first guy who, well, no, they said Roger Moore. You, I, we could never find it. I could never see a picture of Roger Moore, but he was the first guy who kind of, Clun said he, and uh, Dave Precht even said that he kind of looked like uh, Evil Knievel. The stuff he wore and it was flashy, and that's what the sponsors wanted to see. But and then the name started getting on shirts and, you know, hats. Besides just the Bass logo was the only thing they were wearing at first with the jumpsuits. And there was 20, 30 guys wore the jumpsuits. Oh, my granddad had one with a bass patch on it. Did, did he yeah, really? Yeah, he did. He did. You never wore that. You know, what guy? I wore one one time. I remember for, that. You and just, Jerry yeah, wore one. Yeah. Oh, All for yeah. a thing. Okay. Yeah, just a, Aker okay. was the guy who said, "Let's classes join up." I'm gonna go with black pants and a white shirt, and everybody, you know, looked at him. I think that's how he got his nickname, the Senator. We used to call him the Southern Gentleman. People, th he said, people thought I just got out of church. And I can remember right about the black pants every day. Yeah. Those black pants, belt, black shoes. Oh, he had Wrangler make them, and uh, sponsor was written down the side of them. He says he's got a closet of all his old fishing clothes. I'd like to see it. He's got who, one who guy? red jacket with all the patches. Yeah, Guy. Uh, I was going to say, I guarantee you Guy Eckers still got some of that stuff that in his closet. The, That's his favorite. The Bagley's Skeet Reese. Jumpsuits. And... Skeet Reese saw it. He had a red jacket with all these old patches all over it. And, and uh, Guy's, his, his wife uh, got healthy and now he's back fishing trying to get back to the elites, which he says is very difficult. And uh, then Skeet said, if you make the classic and you got to wear that jacket, he said, you know I'll wear it. <laughs> I'd like to see that. This place was big in the 50-year history of bass. Yes. Same yes, sir. Oh, Thousand my Islands, gosh. More referred to as the Thousand Islands back in the day, but always been a primo destination for Bassmaster competition. One of the first winners down there, Tommy. This is only tournament victory ever, 1979. Let me guess. Yeah, is he go. from Arkansas? Yes, sir. You know. Wood. you know. You yeah. know. Roland had won before that. He had a, he had almost uh, 60 pounds over three days back in 1978. Large mouth. Oh, yeah. Probably seven fish limit, too. Mm. Same with Jim Rod Rod Rogers the year before. He had 56. Jimmy Houston has won here, besides the classic of Bo Dowden winning. You know, Ken Cook, Mickey Bruce, Rick Kluns won here. Rick Morris is hooked up. Rick is in no hurry. He is, in no hurry. he is not going to horse one in. He, we, we have to take a break here, and he may still be fighting this fish when we get back. <laughs> I, I, fully, so. I fully expect him to do it. Oh, Rick man. Morris, I don't know if that one will help him or not, but uh, we'll have the verdict for you when we come back after this. We play the win. Make it
39 days on the water. With an average tournament day of eight hours, that's 1,912 hours of fishing. Averaging 60 miles per hour, you covered 12,300 miles. That's 102,420 minutes with a rod in your hand. Averaging four casts per minute, that's just shy of 410,000 chances at a bite. But numbers are the foundation. The results are up to you. If you love bass fishing, then show your support by joining BASS today. Since 1968, BASS has been serving bass fishing enthusiasts with information and tournament coverage that make you a better angler. When you sign up today, you'll join over half a million outdoorsmen who love bass fishing. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Log on to Bassmaster.com to join bass today. Let's get ready to win. This is it. Your name gets stamped on that trophy. This is the tournament that you work all year to be at. You throw all your chips in the basket here and you go for the win here. It's a winner take all event. The Bassmaster Classic is, is definitely the pinnacle of our sport. Looking for 914. Go, baby. Yeah. Come here. Just come here. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Ah! There we go. Play star. Oh, yeah. Big one. Okay, need to be fixed up. There we go. Get in there. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Come here. There we go. There we go. Yes.
We got him. Ooh. <laughs> and Kenny East becomes the only man alive with 25! <laughs> That's how you start day four. There he is. Yeah. How about that? Gosh. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Yeah. Boom. Yes. Yeah. Got you, baby. Yeah. We found it. Him. Yes! Seven pounds, five ounces! Happy has done it! Yes! Live is being brought to you by Bully Dog. Big, big day. They're all days are big. Bassmaster Elite Series during the regular season. Of course, uh, regular season ends today. Our next event coming up September 20th through 23rd at Chatoub Lake on the border there between Georgia and North Carolina. It's going to be the Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year Championship where we will decide who is uh, the recipient of that very prestigious award, the best performance, most consistent performance throughout the course of an entire season. It's a, it's a career maker, I would say. It is, it is, and these two guys that are right in the thick of things at this tournament, they were right in the thick of things at the last event in Hawaii. I think it'll be a battle between these two, and rightfully so, it's gonna come right down to the last minute. Dave Mercer, Dave Mercer mentioned that a few years ago, Aaron Martins basically had it won before that final event. Last year was interesting with Jason Christie and Brandon Polnick, but Brandon had a substantial lead. This is going to be one of the greatest battles for the Angler of the Year at the AOI Championship of all time. A little bit unusual, but not unheard of, that neither one of these two fellows who uh, go into the top spots have not uh, had a win through the course of the season, but that may change at the end of the day. We just don't know. Josh Bertrand's the only pro to not miss a cut all year. The That's only one, thing, one. If you look at if you look at his finishes, the only one not to well, miss you're a check. Right. Absolutely. Good point. It was him and Brent Chapman are at one point, and then Chapman struggled at Oahe, I believe, finished 53rd or something like that. So those two are definitely in contention for it. 
and Chatoug does fit their styles. Now, when we left, Rick Morris was, uh, had brought one in, and we didn't seem to think that that was going to be. Right. It was going to be. Uh, didn't look like one that would help him. No, didn't. But while we were away, we got it out there again. I think he's extending his stay down there below Morristown. <laughs> or above Morristown, I guess yeah. I should say more correctly. Come on, be six pounds. He's spot on. He said they're going to bite better in the afternoon, and it has definitely picked up for him this afternoon. Yeah. He even told the cameraman he's going to push it, so he better be strapped and packed. He's acting big. Within the next 48 minutes. Down to less than an hour on this historic event. Oh man, oh man. Proud I had a chance to see it all. We've seen Brandon Lester, Justin Lucas, David Walker, Josh Bertrand all land a lot of fish this week. And they've taken it easy, but Having well, the well, camera on Rick Morris today, everywhere. boy, he is taking his time Absolutely. with these fish. He is not going to get in a hurry. And... But when you're only getting five, six bites a day like <laughs> yesterday, you better take it easy with them and put them in the boat. You can't have one coming off. It's a big one. You better stay on there. I might just go crazy and lose it. I have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Man, she just won't give. Hurt my arm. Hope it's not a walleye. Coming back <laughs> to the boat again. Oh, she's going for the motor. That's a big one. Might be that seven pounder that Justin Lucas has been talking about. Pretty darn good. I think it helps. It was hooked kind of funny. Yeah, that helps. How about this? Someone would that hate one. that. Not that one. Maybe this one. Hmm. Yeah, that's definitely bigger. Put him in a headlock. I'm gonna say yes. How about that? I'm gonna make sure it is. That's a big one. Careful. Somebody's gonna take a peek over the side here, I'm thinking. Yeah. Oh, we locked up. Oh, oh, oh come no, on. no, what a time to lock up. <laughs> we wouldn't. Well, we lost that one. We'll try to get an update on that. Back with Brandon Lester right now. Saw 
this at the end of the day from Brandon yesterday. Not well, mid afternoon, we'll say. He yeah. And he caught a four and a half pounder around one of these pilings right here. What look if? At, look at that current ripping around there. Mm. 105 miles, millions and millions of boulders and rocks. And if the winning fish is caught off a bridge piling with 30 minutes left, whoa. <laughs> that would have some anglers stewing. Some bites right here. We may get rained on, but I brought my rain suit. David Walker there, quietly in third place. He's still. One one six pounder. Absolutely, just two point four by uh, two pounds four ounces back. Six pounder would do it. He's caught two already this week. Only one angler in our top twelve has notched a win this season. That'd be Mark Daniels Jr. After that, the weigh-in's all right. There's not a lot more rain coming or nothing. It don't look like it. If you want to recognize all our winners during the course of this 2018 season, we start out with Takahiro Amori down in Alabama. Kevin Van Dam at Grand Lake. Drew Benton, Lake Travis, first time ever on Lake Travis. Greg Hackney. Picking up a win at the rescheduled Sabine River event. Wes Strader, first time winner on the Elite Series. Kentucky, Kentucky Lake. Kentucky Lake, yeah. Boy, that was a great turn, the finish of that turn. Him and Skeet Reed. Skeet being one fish away. Oh, gosh. That was a good one. Ish Monroe, up from Mississippi, across Wisconsin. Mark Daniels Jr., who's in the top 12 today. Mark Daniels went at Lake Oahe in South Dakota. That was fish. God bless. Him. Yes, we're down <laughs> to the last, less than an hour of the final, final event of the season. I know I said it yesterday, but Lake Martin, he got a that. hero <laughs> winning seems so long ago. Look him up. shots at it. Doubled oh. up. <laughs> Walker and Brandon Lester. Two boxes. I love up. his attitude. Not real fond of the size. Oh, my, did you see that jump? But I think this one Brandon's got will help him. It's got a three and a quarter. Oh, and oh, Justin Lewis is triple, triple hookup. She's fixing a peel drag. Oh, dude, that'll help. That'll definitely help. That big. Might help a little. I'm pretty sure that'll get rid of the four. Wow. Come on, I need you. I need you. I'm pretty sure I need you. Quit all that. Just come here. First and second yeah, place. Yeah. <laughs> Hand of fish hope, catches dude. live here. This is oh, incredible. My goodness. This is incredible. Oh, man. He just has a four to get rid of. He thinks that'll do it. Easy, quick way. Put him on the beam. Like. Was it that one? Nope. 321. Yeah, that's that was Brandon Lester. Mm. Do it back. Right here. Just under that 3.3. Time is running out for these guys. I'm about to burn up in this rain suit. Don't want to take the time to take it off. Blue's heavier. <laughs> 
Josh Bertrand has been out of range, I and his bass track just updated with two small fish and then a five and a half pounder to put him yeah. up to 21 pounds. Yeah, He's right there. Within four Ooh, ounces of Lester. No problem down here. That's the one I got earlier. I mean, how big is that one, dude? Huh? Four and a four and a quarter? It's that. Maybe just four? I don't know. So I think after all yeah, that, that's the smallest neither one, one of those I, by far right? helped. No upgrade? I know Brandon's did not help him, but I'm pretty sure Justin's didn't either. And you're right, Suits. So let's not forget about Josh Bertrand. It's crazy. No, man. sir. Fishing is so heavy. Three guys within four ounces unofficially at the I top. Look how far Brandon Lester is from that bridge. <laughs> this, he hooked up that fish on that bridge in between the fight and him. Oh, look my how gosh. Far he gives you a little taste of Look at that. That's kind of like uh, what we saw at the Niagara River during yes. the bracketed competition, <laughs> guys being a, look at that. one mile later. <laughs> They're ready to go again. Oh, we have got a big, big wait coming up here. Don't miss this, three o'clock. It's just around the corner. It's gonna be an event, one not to miss. Last weigh-in of the year for the regular season. Look at the size of that venue. Look at the folks already queuing up. We're not even... Rick Moore just popped in. Yet. And there's a, there's a, a big area there that we're not seeing with the, uh, you know, the crafts and right. exhibits and right that sort of thing. below where the camera is. Yeah. yeah, and those people aren't around the stage yet because they, you know, enjoying all that stuff that's going on. So one of the big I'm, reasons they're there is to see this guy right here. I mean, they're waiting to see Dave Mercer. That's one of the big draws here, and always has been at Waddington. Dave Mercer, they are they are ready to go right now. If you started the way in now, they'd be happy. Oh, they, they honestly wish we would. I mean, you look at the people behind me. Uh, uh, I mean, it's a sea of people. That's the difference between Waddington and every other Elite Series stop. I mean, these people come early. They come every single day. I mean, this is something they mark on their calendars. And as we found out yesterday, uh, it is definitely something that is going to be a tradition here in Waddington, New York, for the next three years anyways. Dave, we got a weigh-in coming up with the top three anglers according to Bass Track. Well, within just a few ounces. I mean, it, it's a virtual tie. I mean, are, are you? <laughs> I, I want to know what you've got in mind for this one. How are you gonna? How are you gonna drag this one out? How are you gonna tease it out, as they say? I, I don't have a, I got nothing to do. There's nothing to tease out. I mean, I, I'm excited to see who it really is. I mean, I'm still. Uh, uh, you know, if Davey Hyde, if you saw Davey's reaction to that Lester fish loss, uh, you should have seen me. I mean, my, my truck literally swerved, and, and I was screaming all by myself. I mean, that's that was agonizing, and you can't help cheer for a guy like that, obviously. If he can overcome that, uh, you know, that's an incredible achievement. Looks like Bass is going to be coming back to Waddington. Is that right, Dave? We haven't talked about that yet on the show. That's right. The next three years we'll be here, and uh, the people in Waddington are pretty jacked about it. Uh, you know, the mayor signed uh, the deal right on the stage. We had a deal signing yesterday at Wayan, and uh, the commitment has been made. We'll be back here, and uh, so interesting. When you look at everything that's happened in Waddington over the years, and to know we're coming here for the next three years, the way it's fishing now, you know, we go places like this where you have a special week, and you don't think, you know, you're like, I wonder when we're going to come back. Well, at least we know we're coming here for the next three years. Absolutely. Dave, I'll change the subject just a little bit here. You've been on stage for each and every one of the fishing days for the Bassmaster Elite Series this season. What did you look back? Name me three moments, three days, three events what, that they're really going to stand at that you're going to remember a decade from now. Oh, I, really I mean... Hold on, we'll be now. Watch Justin Lucas here. 
Got about 10 minutes left. No, gosh. Dang, they're on this spot, I'll tell you that. No help. That won't be any help. I guess, Dave, that's kind of like asking you to pick a favorite child. <laughs> so maybe, maybe that's a hard question to answer. You know, the weird thing is, Tommy, I'm a lot better at picking events I mean, from previous years. When we're in the middle of a season, it it literally, you know, it all blends together. But, I mean, i got to mention, obviously, Jordan Lee's second classic win. I mean, I know it's not an Elite Series event, but it, it's something I think we'll all remember uh, a decade from now. And, and I believe what we're going to see here this afternoon is something I will remember because th this has, you know, I know we've used the term before, a heavyweight fight or whatever, but this has truly been a heavyweight battle. And as you've seen, how quick your tides can change here on this river. It's smallmouth fishing. I mean, literally, you could be in fifth place and on your last stop, light it up for 10 minutes and literally win this tournament. That's just how quick it can happen. Well, Dave, you called uh, one element of, uh, of the whole picture here, uh, the hard mouths of these smallmouth bass and how they can uh, possibly make a hook set a little less, less than stable. And uh, we certainly saw a, a hook set that was not ideal play big time in, the, in this final day of competition. Yeah, and that's the that's the heartbreaker. You know, when we talked this morning, we knew guys are going to get their opportunities. It's all about who puts them in the boat here today. That is the the most important element. I mean, there's just way too many giant smallmouth on this river for you not to get your opportunities if you're in this position. But capitalizing on those opportunities, I mean, I agree with Davey 100 percent. That truly was the tournament winning fish. I mean, you you literally could have texted game set match if he put that fish in the boat. And uh, one of the most heartbreaking oh losses gosh. that, that we've seen in recent history. Gosh, stay on, baby. We're getting another look at that. Uh, that was earlier today. That critical that moment there. Long. Yeah, this is, uh, we'll just watch it one more time. Painful though it may be. Please come here. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, oh my God. It's a giant. Oh. That's probably a hundred grand right there. Gosh, dang it. Hats off to Brandon Lester for not breaking things. Not breaking Unlike things, me. number one. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, my goodness. Well, it wasn't long until he was back in action and, ca and caught one for an upgrade. Not too long after that, but boy, it's just something. Talk about stuff you'd like to forget. I'm sure Brandon would like to not remember that particular moment uh, a decade from now, but something tells me he probably will. And something tells me it's our job to remind him of it all the time, I guess. I mean, maybe we're evil, but uh, it, you know, that happens. And I hate the luck word in fishing, but there is luck. That fish just grabs that bait, right? I mean, no angler on earth can control that. And you're going to lose fish out here. But uh, this tournament is not over for Brandon Lester. I mean, it really is a, an amazing event. And uh, it looks to me like the, the wind's laying down a tiny bit out there, but maybe not. I don't know, boat control, like we talked this morning, that's going to be a big issue for some of these guys and having those areas that you can fish effectively. We've seen them come down to the final cast. We've seen it come down to the final minutes in some of these tournaments. And uh, you figure an average probably among the 12 anglers we have out there is they've got an average of, of maybe 10 to 15 minutes left of fishing time, you know, if you... If you figured them all together so uh but that's plenty of time for something hap to happen as we've all said all week long it's just knocks your socks off how quickly things can turn around out here how quickly a couple of big fish can come along be boated and change the whole complexion dave do you remember tommy asked you about you know thinking some highlights this season but beyond this season do you remember a tournament tournament where the top three uh, Honestly, I mean, we got a pretty good feel on it Bass Track today because a few of the guys weighing their fish and, and getting a real good look at a lot of Justin Lucas's. 
Do you remember one recently that any one of those top three could could win? I mean, it's it's honestly within just a few ounces, not just between the top two, but the top three. I'm trying to think of one that's been this close, and, and I can't really think of one off the top of my head, Davey. But, you know, and the other thing to keep in mind is, yeah, we been tracking the fish pretty good but you know how hard it is to judge these fish you know like a half somebody could be off a half pound and it's a whole different game yeah yeah i don't remember one either that do you tommy i mean this no is no i people. do not this is well and you have to think even though brandon lester's weighed all his fish some of these scales after you add up every single fish it could be off two ounces per fish and that's a that's a half pound for a, a bags you know or weighs different than the bass scales a little bit so even if we have an a accurate estimate, he could have more just by a few ounces per fish. And yeah, then Lucas say that that his underestimates is a, a tad. Doesn't get any closer than this. Uh, big, big moments coming up. Everybody waiting for Dave Mercer in the weigh-in. We'll have that for you right here on Bassmaster.com, three o'clock Eastern Time. Thank you, Dave Mercer. That Thanks, good Dave. stuff right there. Been great all week having Dave on the water at the venue. Very, very close. Bertrand's not upgraded. Up. Yeah, we're not upgraded. We've got a Josh Bertrand really He's close behind Jesse Lucas right there. It's just too close to call at this point. A statistical tie. You might even say at this point we're going to have to wait until the weigh-in unless we see something big happen. And there's still the possibility of that. We'll be back after this. I, uh, I remember catching... My very first bass with my brother when I was 10 years old. I caught like a three pound bass. From that moment on, you know, I just fell in love with it. I would wake up before school, get on my bike, go fishing for an hour, and then go get on the school bus and go to school. I was probably the only guy at school that, that smelled like fish because I had caught some that morning, you know. Fishing's always been my dream. I know how fortunate I am to be doing this. And, and thankful that I'm doing this. Day four of my fourth Bassmaster Elite Series tournament, I've got a five pound lead. I do not want this moment to slip away. I hooked this fish and it was a giant. Look at that hook. And he got hung up in some grass over there. And I reached in this grass and I grabbed that fish and I finally put my hands on it. Yes! This fish probably won me this whole tournament. Big him. <laughs> my biggest tournament of my life. It happened. And Dustin Pennell is a Bassmaster Elite Series champion. You know, the first fish I caught when I was 10 years old in that fish, that was probably the most two important bass I've ever caught. Eight-year-old kid walked over there and picked his hat up, asking for my autograph. And I looked and I saw my name on there. I had already signed his hat last year. When I see stuff like that happen, it really makes me realize that hey, I am doing this, and uh, it's a dream come true for me. The Hook Bassmaster Elite at St. Lawrence River, presented by Black Velvet, is brought to you by Skeeter Boats. Yamaha, Power Pole, Hummingbird, Nitro Boats, and by Abu Garcia. is just such a phenomenal fishery. It's one of the greatest places we get to go. What an awesome fishery. I just can't, you know, say enough about this place, guys. It's, it's really, really good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> New York could easily be a second home to me. Come on, let me get you.
Actually, Mine was unbelievable. Really? It's gotta be Skeet. It barely fit on two pages and it was so big. <laughs> hey, Skeet, I think you left this on the copier, man. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Skeet. See more office antics at teamgtfishing.com. Is this spreadsheet weather? No, it's not. This is fishing weather. So stop clicking, get out there, and catch a bass. Stop what you're doing and start fishing Rapala Ripstop. 239 days on the water. With an average tournament day of eight hours, that's 1,912 hours of fishing. Averaging 60 miles per hour, you covered 12,300 miles. That's 102,420 minutes with a rod in your hand. Averaging four casts per minute, that's just shy of 410,000 chances at a bite. But numbers are the foundation. The results are up to you. Fishing just got easier, and it didn't cost you a thing. Free feature upgrades from Lowrance. Fish Reveal delivers the best of chirp sonar and downscan imaging, all on one screen, and it's going to help you find more fish. High visibility color sonar take high contrast imaging to a whole new level. It delivers the absolute best views of structure. Fish like to hide there, but their hiding days are over. These features are ready to roll when you are. Just upgrade your HDS Carbon software. For generations, anglers from across the globe have put their trust in Abu Garcia because out here on the water, we know our science is your religion. Fish like a fanatic with the latest generation of Revo, featuring up to 24 pounds of max drag, designed for leverage and power, built on corrosion resistance and comfort. World class adventure awaits with Revo. Abu Garcia for life. There's a reason I escaped to the water for over 200 days a year. It's not only my passion and my job, it's my life. The work and the miles that I put in traveling across this country have prepared me for this sport. Because after thousands of casts, eventually I will find the water. Toyota, let's go places. Bass Live is being brought to you by Bully Dog. Time running out for these anglers. Bassmaster Elite Series final event of the season. It'll be that man right there, Justin Lucas. Will he take the trophy here? Well, not if that Brandon six pounder Lester has anything to do with it. <laughs> Brandon Lester <laughs> said something about that early this morning. Very first thing, six plus from Brandon Lester. Right out of the box this morning. That's what's at stake right there. That blue trophy, which means a lot. So hard to beat the 106 other anglers who happen to be the best in the world. And you can see how tight it is right there. Four ounces separating three anglers according to Bass Track. Man, oh man, way too close to call at this point right now and very little time left to fish for those who are in fact still fishing because many are on their way back. 12 anglers have made it to this final day and Such, since you've deprived me of my uh, trivia fix today, I'm gonna hit you with a little trivia. How about I give you some trivia here? We got uh, Brandon Polinick, former winner here in the top 12. Kevin Van Dam had a, had, a, had a good tournament. He's another former. But we got another former winner who's not Kevin Van Dam, who's not Edwin Evers, who has had a great tournament here. Finished top 25. Former winner. And you've mentioned him already today. Former winner at St. Lawrence? Yes. I've mentioned him today. Does Davey Hyde has won here? No, I, I know, oh, I know, know, I know. know. Oh. <laughs> I'm a little kid in the back of the room. Three 
Go ahead and answer. One, Davey. Rick Hunt. Rick Hunt. Oh, great turn on for Rick Hunt. You mentioned that earlier today. Yeah, you we mentioned there? that he had won here yeah. before, but we didn't I mention. Got, I got some unofficial tribute for okay. Davey. Davey, you're one of how many anglers who have won more than one Bassmaster Angler of the Year title? I think that number is about six. Twelve. You are one of 12 anglers. Well, there have been 48 better awarded. Not six, as six. important as you think you are. <laughs> <laughs> you Boy, bit. time flies, doesn't it? In those AOIs. Is it 12? 11. 12. Well, one. Let's take a look at the day for our 11. leader in Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year points right now, Justin Lucas, right. as we look back on his day right here. But there have been 22 Sweet. different AOIs over the 48 awarded. We're going to have 23 this year. Nobody's going to pass Justin Lucas or Josh Petrant. Oh, 23 over a 50 year period. 23 different ones. 49th is this year. 49th. Holy crap. Come here. Great day yesterday. Great run. Great tournament. Got her, baby! Yeah. I'll show her to you. Yeah! Over three days of Bass Live, I think we could show four plus pounders oh, being lifted in boats for the next for an hour, 20 minutes that we have left. Hey, our four pound rate is very high. Maybe this the plus week. five are. Four, four, yeah, five, five are. should be pretty Oh, don't play. start getting those ideas going. <laughs> oh, come on. You got to change with the times, That's Ronnie. Right. Need something <laughs> you in the roll with the punches. Let's say, bam! Got to have something to do in the off season, man. <laughs> Justin Lucas, 2312 on day one, 23 no, on day two, and 237. He's got to be pushing forward, dude. Got to be. Said he's got to have 25 today in order to have a chance to shut oh, this thing down. But let's take a look at the, what we were confronted with when we opened up Bassmaster Live this morning. Come here, girl. Brandon Lester. Please come here. I need you bad. Falling a touch off the pace, not far. Oh, come here. Needed to catch up. Oh, my gosh. That was what yes. the doctor ordered. Look at that beast. God, what a small man. Dude, I'm talking about an absolute freaking stud. Look at that thing. God. Dude, I, I gotta know what that thing is. You got a small mouth like that? Okay, that's it. Look at that all week. Six, two, six. Freaking. Six point two six. Great way to get Championship Sunday going, and he didn't stop there. Oh my gosh. Yes. Woo. I mean, a beast. Five and a half pounder. Come here, man. Yes. Another nice fish. It's okay. Come here, girl. Come here. Yes. Brandon Lester trying to knock out his first Bass Master Elite Series win. Oh my goodness. The leader deck of day two. That and was, that happened. That was a heartbreak. This was just a little bit after that. He did a good job recovering. Yes, fish. sir. Well, Certainly helped him. Don't know if it's going to be quite enough. What a battle, Justin Lucas. Brandon Lester, and don't forget Josh Bertrand right up there as far as our fast track figures are showing us right now. We have no idea what's going to go down at the weigh-in today. That is for sure, and it will be one not to miss. 3 p.m. Eastern Time immediately when we wrap it up here on Bassmaster Live. We will get underway with Dave Mercer in Waddington, New York. They are gathered there already, already on the edge of their seats. And Mercer's got to be looking forward to this way in. He's, oh my with God. the crowd he's got there and this thing being a, within ounces of those top three anglers there, Lester, Lucas, and Bertrand. To make up for a lot of those weigh-ins where kind of everyone knows the, knows the result yep. before they even turn into the parking lot. Yep. Uh, this is a different beast right here. And this whole tournament has been a different beast. All the records for smallmouth catching the Bassmaster tournaments have been set on day one of this tournament, basically. 
We keep adding on. How about number of 20 pound bags through the course of the tournament? 113, we figure, at 100. last count. Maybe more than that now. Yes, maybe 114, yeah. Definitely, it was 113 an hour or so ago. Seuss, anybody else move up in the 20 pound mark? No, no, let's take a look. If we count Rick Morris, probably. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Seven with two guys that are 18 to 19 pounds, they could end up being a pound heavy and be 20. So we could as many or as little as six, as many as eight or nine. Brandon Lester. Boy, a limited amount of time to get something done right here. You think he's fishing that buoy that he caught a couple I, little ones? I would think so. I would think so. That's been his last stop. The last two days, I think. Yeah, it's in the danger zone. I know we got someone we've not had an opportunity to talk to today. Definitely want to want to get him uh, in the loop here before we have to have to bow out for Bassmaster Live, the regular season. That's our man Z, the Z Train, Mark Zona. You've been following this, Z. <laughs> I know that brain's been spinning. What 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 do you take? What do you make of all of this? Tom, I'll be dead honest with you. Uh, not to let's talk about me for a second. Maybe it's better I wasn't in studio for this because I, I, I really haven't been able to handle even watching what I've seen throughout the last three days with you guys. It's been, I mean, this morning, watching Brandon Lester, he caught a legitimate orangutan yep. to start the day off. Fair to say? Fair to yeah. say. More than fair. I mean, he caught a child. It was literally <laughs> that big. And, and, and really, you know what? To, to, I, I, I know this is kind of a big picture statement. The Great Lakes right now are like that. And Davey, you and I talked about this. They are like that from that section of the river all the way to Lake Superior to where you're like, how long can it sustain being this incredible and the last three days? And really, if you looked at any of the, the major national tournaments uh, the, this summer, it, it leaves you speechless how good the bass fishing is. It does. It really does. I, I've got to ask you this, Z. You've got a good eye for these smallmouth. You've caught a lot of these big ones. Looking at the, the bass track, we know it's close. Your gut, who's got the the most weight, Lester, Lucas, or Bertrand? Well, the only problem is Bertrand kind of went off the grid a little bit yes. here and there. Yes. My kids, my kids asked me last night. They're like, "Who do you think? Who do you think will win this?" I said, it, it, "It literally impossible, impossible to say because they're all going to maul them. You know, nobody's. You know, your your bad day out there now with with your leaders is a is a twenty two pound. I hate to say that." But you're shooting par right now as a 22-pound day. I'm going to throw out, I believe Justin Lucas wins this tournament. That's, that's what my gut tells me right now. Yep. Okay, it's going to be close, that's for sure. One other thing you need to weigh in on, Mark Zona, we've talked about it. We batted it around today just a little bit. Is this the greatest smallmouth tournament of all time? <sighs> Till the next time we come back, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I'll tell you one thing. And I always say, you are the great scripter of stories. You always have been. Mm -hmm. Fair to say, Suge, Ron, Davey, Tommy, you are a wordsmith. Wordsmith, You yeah. cannot write a better novel. I'm not going to lie. I'm very happy and excited to be getting back in the saddle for the Angler of the Year tournament because it is shaping up to be incredible, almost as incredible uh, as what we're going to see on that weigh-in stage. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got great, great prospects, that's for sure. We Z, just got I, a taste. Z, I got one, one other question for you. You, you were dead on. You, you predicted before this tournament started, 95 pounds. We're at 93 and change, maybe even 94, so you're dead on. Did you have any idea there would be 114 bags weighed in over 20 pounds? You know, you can't. That is, you can't. Pre you can't predict. The only thing I'll tell you. The only thing I'll tell you is, and Davey, you do the exact same thing. We we before these tournaments begin, we call certain anglers, and I, I know we both call Van Dam every now and then just to get a gauge of what the heck's going on. He had a tone 
the end of the day on Tuesday that I, I, he was speechless. He's like, I, I don't know that I'm on enough, but I can tell you this will be one of the most incredible events uh, the Bass Masters ha- has ever seen uh, with smallmouth bass. And you know what's funny is I remember being in awe when Seth Fighter won up in Mill X. We all were. We were mm. in awe when he won on Mill X. Um, Gosh, man, uh, it, you, you guys have talked about it. The uh, the good old days are right now. And the other thing that's been a pleasure to watch, not only in this tournament, but you can go to Oahe, you can go to any deep water graphing electronics tournament is just how incredible these younger anglers are at this. Don't get me wrong, man. The Aaron Martins, the Edwin Evers, they are phenomenal at, at using their graphs. But this younger crop of anglers, um, it leaves you speechless how good they are with them. It is. It's, it's, it's just phenomenal. And the advances and the, the skill of these guys. I mean, I, I think the average guy is trying to land these fish yeah. compared to what we've watched these yeah. guys. It would, it would just be a joke compared to their, their, their such skill level is so great. And Z, thank you so much for, for making a little time for us. And we can't wait to see you in about three weeks. We've got a big event coming up. And uh, hey, before you go, Let's talk about the two guys at the top of that race right now, Lucas and Bertrand. Who do you think's got the game for Chateau Lake, Chateau Reservoir? Tommy, do you take Todd Gurley? Do you take Le'Veon Bell first? <laughs> Mitch Trubisky, baby, all the way. Mitch Trubisky. You see, you see, you see what I'm saying? But, but here, here, here's the one thing that I can tell you going into that Angler of the Year tournament. We got to talk about it. Uh, the, the first day of our Bassmaster Live coverage, that event – Here's the beautiful thing. That event is going to be in both of those guys' wheelhouse. Yep. And, and not to count out anybody else behind them. No, no, but no. It will, it will absolutely come down to, to one of those, to, to one or two, no doubt. Z, thank you so much. See you soon, man. You guys are the best. I'll see you in about Thanks, three Z. weeks. Our buddy Mark Zona will be here for the coverage of that uh, Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year event. He'll be in studio for uh, that one, and studio. I'll be on site. Be on site? You'll like that place. Oh, I hope so. It's, it's pretty up there. Very pretty. Good time of year to be there, late late September. For sure. Especially with, with, when it was hot, hot, hot the last few months. We I were don't worried. know, man. I, with it cooling off, it'll be like schooling stuff, earlier, too. Like I said earlier, I'm normally a pretty calm, collected character, but I'm pretty tore up right now. I ain't going to lie about it. I, uh, it's been a good day, dude. I mean, the first keeper I put in the box this morning weighed six and a quarter, second one five and a half. And I got 23 and change, I think. Lost a great big one that might cost me winning this tournament. But, you know, it, it is what it is. That's the first one I've lost all week and the first one that, that hadn't been my fault. I had one other one get me down in a rock and break me off, but that was my fault. I should have never get it, let it get back down to the bottom. It's been a good day, dude, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I hadn't fished this hard in a long time. I can honestly say at the end of the day, I left it all out here, so it is what it is, man. Let's roll. <clears throat> yeah, let's roll. Brandon Lester there fishing just within sight. Please come here. Don't do that. Six Don't pounder that. that might have lost his control. Oh he said it right there. Well, at that moment, it was hard for him to think of anything but the fish that got away and cost him the tournament. But we don't know that. Hey, it's so close. Hey, if they were fishing for $1,000, that would be disappointing, but $100,000 on the line. Let's not forget what first place is, and he had his hands literally on that fish. There was one fish I couldn't get rid of. Really, the dead fish this week are going to cost me probably winning. Um, it's a good lesson. Still had an incredible week, incredible tournament. Going heads up with a good friend of mine. Trailer. And... Uh, Man, I'm, I'm looking forward to the weigh-in. I don't even want to know the, I don't want to look at Bass Track. I don't want to look at anything. When it happens, I just want it to be raw emotion, either super happy for him that he won or stoked that I won. So we'll see what happens. 
final thoughts from Justin Lucas. You know you're a pro when you just kind of point at the bank and say trailer. Yeah, and it appears. <laughs> See, that's that's the way you used to work it, wasn't it? No, uh, I was going to say, I guess I never was a pro. I didn't get to do that. <laughs> No, those uh, all the all the folks there on site, they they work together to help these guys as much as they can with the big crowds and everything. It certainly is nice for the folks for Bass to be there behind the scenes doing everything they can to make these guys' days easier. Lucas said, "My friend, probably meaning Josh Bertrand, sure, but these guys will weigh in in succession. Lester will weigh in fourth." or fourth from last, uh, Lucas third, and then Bertrand second, I didn't do it. in order. I didn't do it because uh, I was catching awesome. big That's ones, sure. and I, I knew I didn't need to put a scale on the size fish I was catching, so uh, it's going to be really close. I, I don't even yeah. know what to think. Obviously, if Josh wins, I'm going to be really, really happy for him. He, he is uh, very, very deserving of a win. I don't know. I'll be bummed that I didn't do my best, uh, but I'll be very happy. This place has gotten phenomenal, man. I know three little girls, three women in Tennessee who are anxious to hear, yeah. hear you talk and say hi. Yeah, I'm sure they've been watching me all day long, man. I, no matter how it shakes out, I'm, I got a 16-hour drive home. I'm going to get it started tonight, knock out a few hours, and I will be home tomorrow. Much as I love this place, I'm ready to go home to Tennessee, see my wife and my two girls. Last question, what would it mean for Brandon Lester to lift his first blue trophy? In Dude, America? you <laughs> I can't even talk about that right now. <laughs> Jinx it. I'm telling you right now, man. I mean, this is all I've ever wanted to do. I'm sure, you know, you've heard a lot of these guys say it, but from the time I was seven, eight, nine years old, this is all I ever wanted, so it would definitely mean the world to me, that's for sure. I, I don't know if I got enough. I mean, I think I, caught, I think I caught enough to give me a chance. I hadn't looked at Bass Track. I don't know. It's probably not accurate anyway. It's, it's somewhat accurate, but it's very unofficial. Let's put it that way. But it would mean a heck of a lot. Words can't describe how much it would mean to me. Big moment for Brandon Lester. Justin Lucas has been there before, a winner before. Uh, an incredible learning experience today, if nothing else, for Brandon Lester. I mean, being in that spot he's not been in before, you, you got to get a feel for the pressure and how tight it really gets on that final day. Mark Zona mentioned how good this group of anglers are in this age group. Win, lose, or draw. Both of these fishermen, all three of these fishermen, became better fishermen today than they were yesterday. Josh Bertrand, Justin Lucas, Brandon Lester, the guys who uh, really seem to be locked into Look a very, that. very close final situation here. And we're going to settle that all with Dave Mercer in the weigh-in coming up at 3 o'clock. What a fantastic week it has been. I got you too, baby. I'll take your word for it, Davey. The greatest smallmouth tournament of all time. The weigh-in starts at 3 p.m. Eastern time right here on Bassmaster.com. It will be a spectacle. This is one that you have to watch. I'm going to watch it. And I, no doubt. You know, I've seen every fish caught that we, that we can see here on Bass Live, yeah. and That's I don't, I truly don't know. Yes. Uh, Mark Zona mentioned Josh Bertrand. Yes. He made that move when we didn't have him yes. coverage of him, but we certainly know Brandon Lester and Justin Lucas are too close to call. It's a phenomenal experience, and of course, the last tournament of the season, the regular season, is always a big deal. And so many things up. to settle on this day, and. We're going to have the final hey, reckoning coming up very, very soon here. Yeah, right there. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations to every angler who fished the Bassmaster Elite Series 2018. Kudos to you for qualifying in the first place and hanging in there through a season with its ups and downs, postponements, cancellations. They've had it all. It has been a year, 2018, and we're going to wrap it up at 3 Eastern time. Coming up next right here on Bassmaster.com.